just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of The Nosebleeds, brought to you by Menulog. All new bloke members to sign up to Menulog get $15 off when you spend $30 or more. Head to offers.menulogger.com.au slash bloke to claim this. You know what? We'll get straight into it. Our hungriest player this week, it's Appy Coruscant. That's our hungriest player this week because he went against his old club, got the job done. So if you're listening to this, use code Coruscant, and that is K O R. We didn't think that one through, did we, boys? Full, <laughs> yeah, full name, Appasai. <laughs> uh, <laughs> K-O-R-O-I-S-A-U You get $10 off when you spend $30 or more T's and C's apply You can't use this code with the first promo But uh, as I said, we're here with nose, please. We've got the, the crowd here It's absolutely fantastic Been excited all week for this uh, Myself, Guru, Timmy, Maddie, Tom, Eddie Will all be at the Caxton this coming week at 1 p.m. on Saturday. That is right, 1 p.m. on Saturday. We'll be there for a meet and greet. All the crew, uh, the Hello Sport Boys, SC Playbook, Gurino, Maddie will be there 1 p.m. So make sure to come down. It's a celebration, guys. It's the best time of the year to come say hey. Uh, and also, just quickly, just quietly as well, Mother's Day. <laughs> Mother's Day is just around the corner. And we did, we did some Father's Day stuff. And we're not going to leave out the mothers. So we are releasing, not uh, this Monday, but the following Monday. Hey, Maddie. Uh, so not this coming, not this. So this will be Magic Round. So the Monday after Magic Round. So seven days from when you're watching this at 6 p.m., we'll be releasing Super Mum, Best Mum, Boss Mum, uh, all this kind of, all the... Oh, boss mum there. Anyway, best mum as well, boss mum, super mum, and footy mum as well, plus hats that say that is. So, we've taken the guesswork out for you of like, oh, I don't, what do I get from my mum? I don't know what to get for the miso. <laughs> it's right there, bloke.shop. Boom, get it. It'll arrive at your door. One to two business days after ordering. That's Monday. Uh, so, th not tonight, <laughs> but next week, 6 p.m. Boys, what a weekend of rugby league. Unreal, mate. I've been off for a few weeks. Quite a few weeks. Quite a crowd to return to. A few too. months. Well, Jesus Christ. How long was a honeymoon? Stuff. Holy yeah, had shit. Had a good time. Had a good time. Oh, my God. It, honestly, it felt like forever Guru was gone. Took the mickey a little bit. Come on. I'm surprised the roof's still standing here just quietly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the great Timothy. Yeah, good to be along, Kempi. It's a uh, couple of weeks of carrying the show with Guru gone, but me, me, li <laughs> me little mate's back and I don't need to, I can just relax a little bit and not have to speak every two minutes. It's nice. Yep, yeah, and that fuckwit over there. <laughs> Matty, fuck the rabbitos, you're a dog. Um, and uh, what a weekend of footy. Uh, look, what, what a weekend of upsets. I mean, it was, well, I mean, my tipping was good, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know about your tipping. Um, did I make the tip of the century? Yeah, yeah, I think I did, but we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Uh, but thank you to everyone that came, We really that, has, that is here. We really appreciate it. Uh, what we're basically going to do is we're going to go through the games. We'll do accountability first where we do our tips, and then we'll go through the games, uh, and basically each game we'll talk about the biggest points and then get obviously your questions about your sides and what you think the biggest uh, questions are, you know, uh, in regards to your season uh, going forward. But let's get into the accountability. Uh, sport brought to you by Sportsbet. Thanks to everyone uh, that called up Sportsbet Hotline. The three winners have been contacted. We are now just sorting through some admin, but once we get that sorted, we'll be able to share their tragic rugby league stories. But let's get into it. Sharkies defeat the Cowboys. We all went Sharkies. <laughs> Eels, there he is, there he is. <laughs> eels defeat the Knights. I went Eels. Guru went Knights. Timmy went Eels. Maddie went Eels. You went, so on the night that you got to meet the love of your, well, the second love of your life, <laughs> Hopgood, you backed against him. No wonder he brushed you. I don't know if he's at number two. He oh, might be holding on to number oh, one still. Wow, mm. unbelievable. No loyalty, Guru. That's the problem, mate. Jeez, that hurts. Oh, wow. <laughs> Rabbitohs defeat the Broncos. Everyone went Seas. I went Broncos. But technically, that, that was a bias pick by me. I actually did pick Seas. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's a bias. No, no, no. That's a bias pick. That's a bias pick. So I, I get that one as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Raiders, Dolphins. I went Raiders. Guru went Raiders. Timmy, we all went Raiders. Raiders get the job done 31 to 30. Um, I think, did you have, was tears streaming down your face with a famous victory or what? Yeah, you're lucky I'm here, Kempi. It's been an emotional couple of weeks <laughs> myself and a couple of Raiders fans in the crowd who, who were with me there. So I 
I think the, on the weekend, Jack cried, uh, Ricky cried, I cried. It was, it's been a tough couple of days. <laughs> uh, now the Titans defeat Manly. Everyone went Manly except for myself. I went Titans, stuck strong to the local team. The Titans get the job done. A mighty victory against the Titans. And here we go, boys. Here it is. I'm going to hang my hat on this for the rest of my life. <laughs> Guru went Panthers. Timmy went Panthers. Matty went Panthers. I think everyone in this room went Panthers. I went for glory, and I went Tigers, and I got it. Thank you. If that isn't one of the best. Come on, that's a good tip. Come on. Fuck. Fuck me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Roosters defeat the Warriors. We all went Roosters. Uh, Bulldogs defeat the Dragons. We all went Dragons. So this week, the beat wins. I think we're all even now across the board. Even? We didn't he get another one? Oh, okay, you're at the bottom, Guru. Am I not got two? Don't I think, think so. I thought he was at the top. Yeah, Actually, I no, you. I thought, no, was was I thought top. Guru was at Call the top. Call it even at two. Fair play. Wow. <laughs> I cannot believe I got done on the tipping this week by you tipping the Tigers over the Panthers. Mate, hey, some, some of us know our footy, some of us don't. That's oh. just the way it is. That's just the way it is, mate. I, that, was a cal- that wasn't a, just a crazy call. That was a calculated call. The Tigers are playing some real good footy that I could see would upset the Panthers. I, yeah, look, I just knew that, you know, Cleary, he can't handle the big, the big games against the Tigers. I, just, I knew that. I, ne- never doubted Luke Brooks at the Tigers. Never doubted Brooksy. Never doubted Brooksy. I knew Brooksy get the job done. Clearly can't handle the Brooks Brooks's power through the middle there. Come on, <laughs> Jesus. Um, but anyway, that is accountability. I get the chockies this week. I actually think we are all even though. So that's uh, we're equally shit pretty much. Yeah. Because seriously, if we actually did our tips. Like, wouldn't be pretty. We wouldn't be pretty. Wouldn't be pretty. Uh, also, jerseys, bloke jerseys, still available on bloke.shop, guys. A 2023 range. I think we've got about about 30% left of stock. So if you want a bloke jersey, head to bloke.shop. Grab them before they are gone. Uh, let's get into the games, though. Uh, Sharkies, they defeat the Cowboys. Easily the best game of the year for the Sharkies. Now, I don't know whether if some of you may have listened to Packer Up, boys. Some of you may not have, but... I don't know whether this was... Maybe it's a mixture of both. Was it the Sharkies really good? Was the Cowboys really bad? Or was it somewhere in the middle? I think the Sharkies, though, in regards to, like, attack and defence syncing up, it's definitely their best game of the year. What do you reckon, Guru? Without a doubt. Uh, the 44, we know they can score points. We all knew that. It's the, it's the six that impresses me. Um, I think the Sharks are a real chance this year. I genuinely mm. do. So, Cowboys, fuck, I don't know what's happened there. Oh my god! Like it's because the thing is, is you don't you don't forget to tackle, you don't forget to attack. It's purely a mental thing. And again, we've we've spoken about it ad nauseum now. So Cowboys fans must be sick of hearing it. But it's like, were they overtrained? Were they undertrained? Like we've got a Cowboys. Any Cowboys fans here? Want any chance? Or is it literally the only team is in here? They've gone into hiding. Oh, yeah. no, I got one there. Pass the mic to him. Here we go. Yeah, he's the first one. What do, you, what do you reckon's gone wrong, mate? Not really. I, like, I don't know if they're undertrained or underdone because the contact, like, it's non-existent. It's mm. like we're playing grab and everyone else is playing tackle. Like, it's just yeah. weird. Yeah, you're right. It, it, you're right. The contact is a big issue and it's such a specific thing. But when you look at all the stats from the games, they have minimal tackle breaks and then they have also a lot of tackle misses. And it's like, I can't see a world where Todd Payton would undertrain a squad. You know, we're talking about a guy that... The players were coming out of 2022 going, this is the hardest preseason I've ever had. Oh, sorry, 2021 into 22. Coming to 23, I highly doubt that he was like, you know what? We had a tough one last year. Let's just pull her back. What do you, what do you reckon is the Cowboys? Well, this is what we spoke about at the start of the year, that teams that, you know, jump from the bottom to the top all of a sudden. I think there was three teams we said. There was Cronulla, Parramatta and the Cowboys. And Cronulla, I think they're cruising along just fine. Parramatta, they're sort of in the middle of them, but for me, the Cowboys, it's like they've fallen off a cliff. Like, like I would argue that performance we saw the other night was worse than before last year. Mm. That was awful. They were never in that game, never a chance. And we sat here for three weeks going, oh, when Drinkwater gets back, though, mm. it might have got worse. It is honestly shocking. And what's when you compare it to the fact that they, in a final series, went down there in like a famous match where it was to the death... You know, win by a field goal, essentially. Was it a field goal that they won by? Yeah, Val Holmes. Yeah. Val Holmes. Then they go back down here. The next time they go back down there, they get absolutely towed by the team that they beat. And it's just like, how, how does... Like, what is the difference in training where one team comes back and 
takes a step up pretty much and the other team takes a thousand steps. What do you reckon it is, Timmy? Well, what my question was going to be, Kempi, around the, the coaching style with Todd Payton, you said how, you know, reportedly very intense, not reportedly, they have very intense pre-seasons, they go very hard, <clears throat> but it can only be sustainable uh, for a certain length of time. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about Michael Maguire at the Bunnies, the amount of success he had there, but eventually it gets to the point and the players just go, we can't do this anymore. And you can only stay at the top for so long, at that level of intensity for so long. <clears throat> I, I don't know, is, are the Cowboys of that now where they've come off the back of a massive year, both on the field, off the field? Is, you know, is it burnout off a massive season? Yeah. Well, the tough thing is, is that then you look at the Sharkies and similar situation. Fitzgibbon had a notoriously tough... I mean, I spoke to Andrew Fafita after his... Um, you know, he basically had, what, one year under Craig Fitzgibbon. Mm. And he said it was one of the toughest pre-seasons he'd ever done. And so... You just got to ask. I just wonder, like, if Fitzgibbon's preseason was tough and the Sharkies were out to, about able to back it up, then is like Peyton's preseason just so so tough, mm. or is it just a hangover from the fact that Townsend was brought into camp uh, for New South Wales, McLean was named, did and played, Tuolangi played, Holmes played, uh, who else? Reese Robson was brought into camp, Cotter played in Origin. Could it be a mixture of you know, maybe a, there's a few players who are a little bit content with their success last year, maybe? Yeah, I think I heard Gordon Tallis mention that the other day, that there's guys there that got Origin jerseys, they got Test jerseys, they got re-signed. Complacency could be a problem there. And it's like the only player that has come back this year and maybe even gone to another level is Val Holmes. Yeah. And he's the superstar that knows what it takes to be at the tippity top for many years. And I think he's been utilised terribly up there so far like, this season. With Madge at the Bunnies, they went prelim, prelim, won the comp, elimination final. Then they finished 12th, finished 12th with a, still a pretty good roster. Yeah. And that's when it was like, you know, it's time. Madge is going to move on. The boy, the, they can't cop this intensity anymore. Todd Payne's been there a year. Like this is what, second year at the club? So, yeah. Or so third year th at the third club. Year, third yeah. year at the club. You wouldn't think they'd be burning out that quick. Oh, sorry, and, two and, a half, and getting right. so close to a grand final, you'd be thinking that would be like just more fuel to the fire, wouldn't you? Yeah. So whether that's an excuse or not, I'm not sure. But they, I, I will, <sighs> Look, in their defence, they have, what, Nanai uh, out? Uh, sorry, Nanai was injured for a little bit, wasn't he? And then Luki... Bit he was, yeah. Suspended. Suspended. Suspended twice now. Luki injured Damalolo. now. Damalolo. Damalolo out. Yep. Um, Leilua's not there yet. <laughs> Leilua. Leilua, Neem. Griffin Neem. Neem. So you're looking at like five key forwards. Jordan McLean's been in and out a in and out bit. as well. So, out. sorry, Tama. yeah, Tama, Tama. Okay, so but this is a team that at the start of the year we were saying their depth is amazing. Yeah. They could lose X amount. It's next man up. They're mm. that sort of footy side. So it is disappointing to see them fall this way. We've seen a number of teams that have had worse injury runs than this and handled themselves much better than this over the last few years. I just, if I had to guess, and you, you know, when you're in it, it's the you obviously got so much more information than, than we do. If I had to guess, if I'm Peyton, I'm just going, boys, let's just, it sounds so simple. It sounds almost cliche and corny, but it's like, how do we bring fun back into footy? Because it just doesn't look like they're having fun. Like there's no intensity in anything they do. And I, I think the Cowboys just need to get to a point where it's like, don't worry about the scoreboard. Don't worry about stats, this, that, and the next thing. I just want to see 80 minutes of the highest intensity possible. And then we can work everything out mm. from there. Because at the moment, it is not even, as we've said, week after week, you look at their stats and the contact <clears> is no tackle break. Like, not no, but barely any tackle breaks and a lot of tackle misses. That's intensity. Their middles have been so poor. Mm. And like I said, they're not winning the middle at all. They look lacklustre. And I think Reese Robson's a great example of this. A bloke who was on the fringe of the... It was in the New South Wales extended squad last mm. year in and around camp. And he's had some moments this year, but he's fallen off the face of the earth a little bit. He's a hooker. <laughs> when your forwards aren't winning the middle and going forward and not <clears throat> providing these quick play the balls, hookers can't do anything. Mm. So I think that's a great reflection of where the Cowboys are at. I think, as you said, maybe bringing <clears throat> some more fun into it and whatnot, Magic Round next week, they play on Sunday. So that's like a 10-day turnaround. Mm. So if they don't get something next week, to have 10 days to prepare for that game in Magic Round. Yeah. It's I, I want to see if I'm Peyton. I'm not even. I'm not telling them up. I'm not doing any fitness. I'm not even doing a lot of contact during the week. I'm just trying to freshen them completely up. Just to get a just to get a win, like so that that eighty minutes of footy, we come out and we just rip and tear. But let's get on to the happier side of things. The Sharkies, they got Hot Boy Hines in the middle there at number seven. That is just absolutely ripping and tearing. I don't think when was the last time we had a bloke this loved by other blokes? 
Seriously. He is so like if you don't like Nico, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. Seriously, like what what more can this guy do? He plays good rugby league and he's unbelievably good bloke off the field, a role model for so many kids um, off the field as well. And he is absolutely and not only is he playing good rugby league, it's exciting highlight reel kind of stuff. Got a Sharkies fan at the front here. Mate, what what, do you, what are your thoughts of Sharkies and Nico? It's all it's all with Nico, isn't it? Like he's the guy that everything happens for him doesn't it like he made three errors on the weekend and no one's even talking about it because he's going that well like mm. if you asked me before the Cowboys game I was a little bit concerned that it, with him out we didn't go as well you know Trindle was in there he did great but um, yeah it, it was just the, such a complete performance by not just Nico but for the whole team like we just said six points conceded 44 scored I think we only missed like 13 tackles the whole game we yeah, it, we should be we should be up there in the premiership window this year. Like we we just been going so well. And um, honest question, yeah. when they signed Hines, did you think it was a good signing? Yeah, 100%. as yeah, a halfback, okay. as, as a as a seven. <clears throat> I thought if anyone could do it, he could. Mm. I just because from what he's been, how he's been talking like to the media, and just he he just is a kind of guy that looks like he wants to have the responsibility he wants to he wants to take the goal kicks he wants to like kick from the short side he just wants to like be in and around the ball he wants to like lead the team so mm. i mean being as a sharks play uh, fan it's very biased to me to say that but like i i always had sort of faith in him that he would deliver mm. um whether it was going to be with moylan or trindle i kind of hoped it was going to be moylan which is good because he's been going so well this year but um yeah, I, I always had always had faith in him they would deliver for sure. What do you reckon your team's biggest weakness is then this year? Because you've had yeah. issues left side, left side defence. Yeah. yeah, so <laughs> being the pessimistic Sharks fan that looks under them in a microscope, like it's that yeah left hand side with I think it's Moylan, Wilton, Talakai, and um, is it Ronaldo? Yeah, yeah. Mortalo. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, that, that's probably got to be our major weakness, I think. Like, it, as, as, much, as good as, like, for example, Talakai was, he was outstanding on the weekend, like, watching with the tries and try, but a part of me sort of is starting to feel like, is he going to be there long term, like, in the centres? I'd, mm. I'd be tempted to put him, like, in the back row, maybe start him off the bench for, like, an impact player, get mm. someone like um, Connor Tracy in the centres or, like, Cal Eero, who's coming through the grade, like, um, had a good lot of raps about him. Um, yeah, uh, I think also we tend to sort of, besides on the, against the Cowboys, we sort of float in and out of games. So I think we've like, we started okay or, or good. And then it's like sort of the back end of the first half, start of the second half, we just sort of go to shit and we just conceded a bunch of points and mm. we kind of can't, can't get back to the game. Didn't happen on the weekend, of course, but um, yeah, it'd probably be just that, I guess. And a little bit of ill-discipline as well with like errors and penalties and, mm. and whatnot, yeah. Well, whilst you're here, do any other Sharkies fans want to have a question? Yeah. Well, whilst you're handing that, what do you reckon, Guru? Yeah, just whilst we're moving down there, I was talking to a bloke on Friday night about Nico Hines. And he said to me, he goes, it's amazing what Nico's done, that he wasn't a halfback when he arrived. He went, he won a Dally M in his first year. He took them deep into the finals. Incredible. He goes, has anyone ever done that before? I sat there and I went, it's exactly what Jonathan Thurston did in 05 with the Cowboys. <laughs> went there from the bench at Canterbury, won a Dally M. Took them to the grand final that year. Went one step further than Nico, to be fair. And well, he, I mean, you could argue... Sorry to jump in. Yeah. You could argue Nico's is better because the Cowboys were in a prelim before Thurston got there. Exactly right. The Sharkies missed the finals in 2021. So, And he said, he said, fuck, if he can do half of what JT did up there, unreal. So you're in a very good spot. You got yourself a winner there. Yeah. Um, I just... Want to say? I think every bloke in this room thinks that Nico is the man that they want to be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just put that out there. Tim still wants to be Jack White. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love South Sydney. I want to be Alan Tung, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my question is for you guys: um, Do you think the Sharks' backline is still an underrated backline in the competition? Um, as a Sharks supporter, I feel like a lot of people would rate. Maybe Roosters, Melbourne, Rabbitohs above the Sharks back line. Um, I just think they're a bit underappreciated. I think I heard a stat over the weekend that Siv Talakai has the most try assists in the comp, like nine or ten. Me. 
Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just wanted to get your opinion of what you guys thought uh, of the Sharks' back line as a whole, um, including, obviously, the glorious number seven. I, th- I think they have the potential to be the best back line in the competition. And that's, that's uh, it's a huge statement. They just need to round out little parts of their game. So you've got Molotalo, who he can have a brain explosion every now and then. And this is glass half empty kind of chat. Then you've got Talakai, defensive read sometimes. Matty Moylan, when Hines isn't playing, seems to not be anywhere near the same player. They just seem to complement each other so well. Hines, if I'm being super critical, has the three or four errors in him sometimes, even though you know he, he, he ends up making up for it. Um, I actually think out of the whole back line, your two most underrated players now are Katoa and Kennedy. Um, I think Ramian also doesn't, like the, so it's the, your right edge that actually doesn't get as many raps as it probably should. Ramian is so consistent. Uh, Katoa as well, like the amount of times coming out of trouble, he's probably your best coming out of trouble player. Uh, and Kennedy, just because like he doesn't, he'll probably never be able to compare in regards to like Teddy or Dill Edwards when it comes to like ball running because it's just the, his, his body shape. But he's, he's silkiness with the ball. He doesn't need to because when you've got Katoa, Mulatalo, Ramian and Talakai, like these are all guys that can hit 200 metres a game easy. So I, although I don't have them as a top, you know, three back line yet, I do believe that if they round out parts of their game, they absolutely could be a top three back line in the comp. What do you reckon, Guru? Yeah, I do think they're underrated, mate. I think that, um, you know, you've got you've got a back five there that I know Sifa played. He came off the bench last year as a middle forward, but five guys that don't play origin there. And I know some of them are Kiwis and they can't and whatnot. But when you can't play origin, I think it, 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 it sort of puts a cap on how highly you can be wrapped until you win a comp. And then it changes the way that people look at you. So for me, <clears throat> Jesus, I think all five of them are very underrated for sure. Timmy, what do you yeah, reckon? Yeah, I'm such a believer in the Sharkies. I've tipped them a few weeks ago to win the comp, and I know it's probably a bit more out there than sort of a few of the more heavier fancied sides, but they're just they're ticking so many boxes for me. They've got the depth. I think 1-17, to 17, they're outstanding. And we're talking about the back line, putting it in super coach terms, people say, oh, should I buy Mulatalo or Katoa Ramian? <clears throat> I don't know because on any given day, any of those players could score, cut the tries, or set a few up. And that's a reflection of their attack being so balanced. They can score anywhere on the park. Like, you look at the Bunnies in recent years. They'll go that left wing. It'll be Alex Johnson in the corner. Paramount Eels, same thing. They'll play the left. Cut ball, Gutho to Sevo. Sevo scores in the corner. The Sharkies, anyone is a... Like, they're all threats. And they can play just as well on the left, right, as they can on the left. So, I think they're a massive shout to win the comm. And they haven't put a foot wrong this season for me. Like, I think they're great. And then whenever you've got injuries there, Connor Tracy comes in. Yeah. He might be the best player in the team as soon as he comes in. Braden Trindle comes in, he kills you. You've still got Iro as well. Iro's well. these yeah. sort of guys yeah. that, oh, like, I think he's going to be a proper yeah. superstar. Mm. How about Ken? Good sort too. Yeah. Very good sort. <laughs> How about the, the other day, I was having a coffee yeah, down on the beach in Cronulla, mate, and doing a bit of work. Mm. Hard work that I am. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, anyway, yeah, you really rip in. Yeah, I don't stop. Jesus, <laughs> on Sunday nights. Anyway. Uh, had to make two trades that week. Yeah. <laughs> Very tough. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard life. Anyway, I'd finished my coffee. He went to pay the counter and they go, oh, it's actually been covered by, by someone. And I'm like, seriously? I'm like, who? And so I just find the people in here and I go, where were they sitting? They go, oh, two tables behind you, like a like, uh, tall, athletic looking bloke. They said, yeah, yeah, that was him. It was Ronaldo Molitalo. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, and that, I asked her about it. She goes, yeah, he left and just goes, I'll pay for that table, that table, that table, and that table. Just picked a random bunch of tables and covered it all. I was like, what a legend. Devastated I didn't get the big brekkie to go with the coffee, but... (laughs) 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 What what a legend, though. Might have thought you needed it. Yeah. Yeah, Mate, what an, I mean, that is class, <laughs> that is a yeah. class act. And to do it without expecting anything in return, you know, like he didn't wait to be like, nah. hey, it was me that did it. He just, boom, did Nothing. it, bounce. Yeah, Mulatalo, even like when I've asked him for to come on the podcast or anything, he's like, yep, I'm there. Tell me where and when. Which is like so funny because he is a pest on the field, which I love. But I can understand why our fans don't like it because obviously it's against your team. But he is an absolute legend off the field. All right, we've got to talk about it. We'll try and keep this to six hours of talking about it because I think it's going to take this long. How many, and, and be honest, how many people here genuinely know what a hip drop is? 
<laughs> Got the couple. That guy's lying. And no, it's, it's all right if you do. You, like if you if you feel you do, because I'd love to talk about it. Andrew Abdo said it today on Sunday Footy Show. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, he's on there. I, I don't know whether I, I, I still am a bit unsure as to what it is. It, you, you said you felt sort of ish. I think we're all I think in that. It's that if boat. you sort of drop your legs and take weight off your legs as you swing around to the back of their legs, like the Nanai one looked pretty, like a consensus for a hip drop. But they're all different, and then mm. you hear, well, what's the difference between a penalty hip drop and a sin bin hip drop? There's mm. no real. Do you want to pass him the, the mic? Well, the, you had the Hopgood one where he comes from the side <laughs> and um, actually hits the side of his knees and then he got the suspension from that. Oh, the, got the sin bin for that. So, yeah. like, that's not the back of the legs. So is there any contact with any part of the lower legs where you've lost control, lost your feet, and then swung around? Yeah. Or is it actually the back of the legs? Or Oh, know? mate, I'm, I'm in the, I've, got, I've got no idea. I've, um, I'm not going to say which player it was. But the, the game Roosters versus Warriors today, I saw like a textbook six-week hip drop, like bad. But because the player that got done on didn't get injured, wasn't even a penalty. Didn't even get stopped. No, no, I'm not going to say who it is. I'm not going to say this. It wasn't. It wasn't Egan. It wasn't Egan. It wasn't Egan. I'm not going to say this. No, nah, no, it was, it was, <laughs> let's put it this way, it was on Adam Fenor Blake. So he, he, he just got up and played the ball and whatever. But the, the concern I have with the hip drop is, is that we don't really know, like as a player, it is, I think it's boiled down to essentially you can't, you just can't lose your legs. Like if you lose your legs whilst holding onto someone's hip, you could be done. Because it, we've, there's been penalties where a guy uh, hasn't even touched the legs and they've been done. What was it, uh, a couple of weeks ago against Manly, Olakawatu? Mm -hmm. He didn't actually touch the back of his legs. Um, but the reason why I wanted to ask was because what's ironic with the Nanai one, I think that's a clear hip drop. We can all agree, like, clear hip drop, yeah, yeah. come down hard, like, four to six weeks. I'm totally happy with that. Who thought the Sonny Luke one was a clear hip drop? Just out of interest. Is that, uh, hands up, you thought that was a clear hip drop? Just out of interest? Okay. See, that, that, that one, I felt like, I, I, actually, I'd, rather, I'd like to hear what you two think, but I thought in that moment, Sonny had two options. Get suspended and gets Tim Mid, or let go and miss a tackle. Mm. I just, I, I think that, like, it's one of those wings, that, like, if, okay, let's say uh, if someone hits my shoulder here and they're running past me, I'm only naturally going to swing yeah, around. If you lose the contact, you're going to end up Ugh. there. So I don't know. It's You're either going to have to let go. As I said, if the definition essentially is you'll lose your feet, then we're going to see this. And people are going to say, well, we'll think about the, the head high crack down and rah, rah. The difference with this is this like, this isn't a technique. This mm. is physics. Like this is, you, this is the way you swing around a body if you lose your feet. So we're going to get to a point where players are genuinely just going to have to hold on and not, not lose their feet and just run with the player. Well, there was a comment that one of the commentators <laughs> made really where he said, if you see studs, hip drop. Because both the feet what? left the ground for a short amount of time, didn't they, with Sonics? Yeah. Yeah, and it was like, so I backed the referees in that scenario where they've obviously been given a directive that if they, you know, the, they grabbed onto them, they lose the legs and they both lift the ground, that's where they go straight away, bang, hip drop, you're gone. So I don't knock the refs for that as a rugby league fan. It's fair dinkum, like a joke. Yeah. What, so I, embarrassing. It will be interesting, though, because we have this every year. There's something every year, whether it's not putting your foot on the play of the ball, whether it's not doing something where they go hard at it for six weeks and then three weeks later, no one remembers it ever. But I think this is going to be part of the game because it's a momentum thing a lot of the time. Yeah. So and it'll be interesting to see how long it does. But this, I think this is worse like, because we've spoken about it the last couple of weeks. I don't think there's a fix to it. I don't think you can train it out of players because you make a tackle, it happens. Mm. And it's deciding games. Not only is it deciding games, but blokes are getting four or five weeks for it, which impacts future games. I think it's a joke. Yeah, oh, it's Oof. going to be tough to get rid of because, as I said, <coughs> as we've all agreed to, and I think everyone agrees to, it's like a, it's a physics thing. Like, if you want to bring him down, you've got to lose your weight to try and bring him down. If you, like, you're never going to be able to take a player down by keeping your feet and just wrestling with him like that. And so you either got to reward legs tackles so people just chop people, which they haven't done. And that's what's frustrating with this is like, all right, NRL, let's, let's say we go to the NRL and say, we're all on board, we agree with you. That's a hip drop. Well, if you had these plans to, to crack down, why didn't you give clubs and players adequate time to adjust to it. It's the same thing that happened with that magic round head high um, situation. Was it a couple of years now? Yep. It's like 
they're all having a go at the players saying, oh, they've just got to learn a new technique. It's like, well, you sprung it on them in the middle of a season and said, oh, you can know. And also you made this, created this weird narrative as if before that magic round crackdown, you could just do swinging arms to the head. And it's like a head high has been a penalty mm. since forever. Um, so this hip drop stuff, it's, I think for the clear one with the Nanai, it was, I don't think it was intentional. I just think it was, he, lo- he wasn't thinking he was fatigued. With the clear ones with the Nanai, let's come down hard on them. But these ones where like, it's in the heat, like he just swings around his body. I just think it's going to be. And that's why I think if the NRL was fed income about this, they would have had referees at training sessions, November one, last year, preseason, day one, explaining what it is, how to avoid it. Do you feel like, I think, this is getting tinfoil hatty, real tinfoil hatty. <laughs> but like, we, what, is it every 24 months we do something like this as a game where we crack down on something? Is it like to create controversy around the game and like it works and and you know or to take attention off something else that's going on <coughs> cba deal yeah yeah there's a massive cba deal so let's do this hip drop thing like I, again it's, it's complete conspiracy theory tinfoil hat but it just seems like i just don't understand that like we're pretending that players have been la- players have been landing on the back of legs for ages like i don't we, you can find footage of it I mean, who was it? Um, he had his career ended with a guy accidentally landing on his leg. Oh, that would have been like fucking six years. And I know we've spoken about it a heap too, but like you're getting guys that are getting simbin because they lose contact and in momentum they end up on feet. How's that a professional foul? <laughs> How are you getting 10 in the bin? Oh, the 10 in the bin stuff gets like, outrageous. Uh, it's like if you're going to suspend them for X amount of weeks, fine but why are you sim binning them for they just for sure. sometimes we line up punishments to crimes that make no sense and we just ignore the context of well, it like, completely so sonny luke got a fine i think so pain yeah. has got suspended yeah <laughs> what the hell like it, yeah. it just doesn't make it anyway um sin bin stuff too is getting completely outrageous <laughs> like the the sin bin today where did anyone see the zach lomax and waddell situation yeah. like Sin bin for that? What the hell? Like, that happens anytime there's a one on one steal. There's a bit of a push and shove and a fuffle of what's going on. And going, yeah, 10 in the bin. Like, that could have cost the doggies the game. Like, it nearly did cost them the game. Because they, what, they scored a couple sets later, didn't they? Yeah. They scored yeah. Unbelievable. Um, say, same with the. I don't think it got 10 in the bin, but we'll get to it. But the Raiders one where Rapana jams in. And he passes the ball. Oh. He gets done for a late shot. It's like he's a winger jamming in. Like, what, what do you expect? Anyway, uh, let's get to the next game. <laughs> Eels versus the Knights. Eels, we've got a couple of Eels fans here. One there, one there. Um, got, got some a lot Knights of Eels fans. fans. Boom, boom, Any Knights boom, fans? Boom. Yeah, bomb. Down back there. Um, both Hello Sport fans, hey? Hey? <laughs> Boys, stay for how are you Hello Sports fans? They give it to you every week, you poor, you poor <laughs> bastards. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm friends with them and they put shit on Broncos fucking in their sleep. Um, anyway, the, the Eels defeat the Knights. Uh, one of their not Eels' best performances all year, for sure. They looked exactly what we hoped they were going to look like coming into this season. Um, you know, I think Mitchell Moses continues to grow into the player that we all know he is. But for me personally, you know, yeah, it was probably the Mitchell Moses show, but it was a gutto show for me. I thought he was just outstanding. Um, at the back there, Hopgood as well. Your man, Hopgood. I mean, <laughs> Bit of forty five at the tackles. desk. <laughs> Jesus, lucky this is good, honest wood, honest and true. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You always perform when Dad's watching, though, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he looked up in the crowd. A tear came down his eye. <laughs> Um, this is a great performance, and I thought Junior Paolo really stood up in the absence of RCG. Uh, and got the job done on the from a Knights perspective. Yeah, really poor performance. Like just a, like so disappointing after how gutsy they've been for a month now, and it just sets them back so far because you know they built this kind of gritty mentality <coughs> where you you almost go to the Knights. They're not a bogey team for people, but it's like oh you no longer go and face the Knights now and go oh yeah this well, we just put apply a bit of pressure and eventually they'll crack they build a reputation for like they're going to hang into the death and then they came out on the weekend and they were so below their standards that they'd set themselves it was crazy 
Unfortunately, Ponga just does not look confident in the front line. He does not look like he looks concerned about making contact, which is understandable. He's had so many head knocks. Uh, what would you make of this game, Garina? Yeah, we were obviously on the sideline for this one at the game. And, um, yeah, tough to watch Newcastle. I remember growing up, Newcastle was always, no matter where they were on the ladder, no matter what was going on, you drive up the highway and it would always be a really tough game. And it just, I felt like over the last five or six weeks, maybe we're getting back to that. They might not have the most skilled team or whatever, but they're <coughs> tough and they hang in the contest. And to see that performance on the weekend, like as I said, we were really close down there and there was just missed tackles left, right and centre. Like... <laughs> Clint Gutherson scored three tries. I was disappointed he didn't score six. Like, he could have scored a stack in that game. 43-12 could have been 63-12 and then some, like... Gills like, had score line favoured Newcastle, breaks. I thought. 13 yeah, line breaks or something? 16... Uh, so they had 61 tackle breaks and 13 line breaks. <laughs> yeah. It was like a training run throughout it. It was, it was embarrassing. We, we were like... Two metres away from Dom Young getting skinned by Mike Acevo on the wing. I don't think I've ever seen Mike Acevo skin anyone with speed. Yeah, he's just such a big boy. And Dom Young, of all people, who he's quick as. Then he chipped over the top of Dom Young just for shits and gigs. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Um, all right, we'll speak about the Knights. We'll get the pain out of the way first, Knights fans. Apologies. Apologies. Um, you know... This isn't a I told you so, this isn't a hindsight hero call. But, you know, anyone listening to this podcast from the get-go, we have said Kale and Ponga, we believe, should stay at fullback. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts, mate, or if you've got a, got a mic there. <laughs> Who's got the mic? Uh, there he is. Oh, you got one? He's All right. Nice, man. What, 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 what are your thoughts, mate? On oh, the, the I think mate? you hit the nail on the head, mate. I'd, especially since watching Tyson Gamble play at six and that uh, he's got that gritty kind of you know, tough mentality. He's not afraid to make tackles. And I, that's no, you know, I'm not talking shit about Caelan Ponga, obviously, because, you know, he's afraid of getting hit in the head again. Obviously, like, that's what I see when I watch him try to make a tackle. He missed 10 tackles on the weekend. That's twice as many as the next worst player who missed tackles. So I think if you're missing that many tackles against a team like that, then, I mean, 43's probably a pretty good reflection of... Um, and, to, and to Ponga's credit, like in the post-game presser, like he put his hand up, said, that was abysmal. I had like hand up. I need to be a lot better than that. He knows it. So ordinary, yeah. And it's, it's a shame after watching, you know, it's, it's a tough existence being a Knights fan sometimes, I'll admit. And after the last few weeks, I've been kind of getting that, you know, build up to what you were saying, Giri, before about to what it used to be. And then to mm. just def be deflated after that kind of performance is really tough. Um, yeah, so I don't really know. Is it, a, is it setting the spine? Because I feel like, you know, depth is a good thing, but we're almost, it's almost to our detriment having too much depth in that spine because I don't think Adam O'Brien knows who to pick week to week. Like, who does he pick at six and nine and off the bench? It's tough. And can you put Ponga back at one? Because Lach Lachlan Mill has probably been our best player all year, in my opinion. How do you take him out? How do you put Ponga back there? Where do you put Miller? I wouldn't want to be in his shoes, to be honest. I and honestly think, like, this sounds crazy because he's the one point, you know, five million dollar man. Bring Kalen off the bench until you know for sure that he is 100% confident on that field. Um, I know, I know that you want to have strike. I know that he's electric. We we all know that. That's all a given. We all know how great Kalen Ponga is. Huge fan, especially in Origin, so good. But you know, once you cross that line, unfortunately, you can't really say, "Oh well, I was worried about this or worried about that." You know, you're either good to play or you're not good to play. And I personally think that they should uh, put Tyson Gamble back there uh, because, ironically, and you know. I, this isn't a knock on Tyson, but he's not the best half in Lecomp. Like he, he's a fringy, comes in, does a job. But he kind of did represent what he's had over the last four weeks, which was grit. And so like he brought a part of that into the side. And I just think that like, <coughs> I would be putting Ponga on the bench, bringing him in for injection until Ponga could safely say, I'm confident in my body. I'm not worried about head knocks anymore. Whereas like to come back after one game and then go, yep, he's good to go against the Eels, this dominant, massive forward pack, just might be a bit too much too soon. And I actually like what Gamble was bringing to the side. But can't, can't Kempi KP do that from fullback where he doesn't have to defend? But like Lockie Miller's been so good. Yeah, I, got I, I, I get that, but as you said, KP's your, what, $1.5 million man or whatever he is. The, the team 
is better when he's there playing fullback. That's a problem. When you look at stats, they actually yeah, lose. Yeah, they, stats. they are. Yeah. You know, and but, it's no disrespect to yeah. KP. There's so many different things that go into stats. Stats don't always tell the full story. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the Knights are onto a good thing the last four weeks. Like yeah. They've essentially checkmated themselves by getting Lockham Miller at fullback. Oh. He's killed it. Tyson Gamble came in with an ounce of the ability KP has and just off ticker did a really good job. Question is, where do you fit KP in now? Does he improve the side when he's in there? Well, it's like, okay, so maybe you put Lockie Miller at six. Lockie Miller has said he'll play there, but what's he like in defence? We don't know. And all of a sudden, you're moving guys that are going well in positions out of position to accommodate for Kalen now. Miller on the wing. I just feel like, you know, put it this way. Let's say Kalen wasn't on $1.4 million Mm. or $2 million. Let's say he wasn't. Do you reckon he would have been rushed into that six role? Probably not. I reckon he would have been kept on the bench until he was confident in his body to get the job done. If Kalen Ponga, if, if the names, like if Kalen Ponga and uh, Tyson Gamble were on the same amount of money and the same sort of profile, he never would have got that jersey back off him well, after those three weeks. I think I think he would have come off the bench. I think it would have, I still think Kalen is obviously clearly the better player. Uh, yeah, sure. But based on performances this year, I don't think Tyson would have lost that jersey. Mm. Yeah, I, I would have probably kept him, as I said, coming off the bench and basically like, Tyson, it's still Kalen's jersey, but like Tyson is almost, it's a battle for it. Like Kalen, you have to work off the bench mm. to get that jersey back yeah. for off Tyson. And yeah, even the suggestion of put Kalen Ponger at fullback. The Knights have shown they can't get anything out of him at fullback. Mm. When he goes well at fullback, his origin. It's not for yeah. Newcastle. Well, I, I personally just think that like at the moment, he is more, it's more important for the club long term for him to just get confident in his body. And Lockie Miller is doing more than a good enough job. He's had four games on the trot where they were, you know, one point off beaten than Penrith. Penrith. Then you had, well, you've won three in a row, didn't you? A, a draw and mm. then two wins. So without KP, lost to Dolphins, but they had no one. Mm. Beat Raids, drew with Manly, beat Warriors, lost a point to the Panthers, and then two points to the Cowboys, and KP was back for that. So, yeah, it's like great results without so I'm just So I'm just thinking, like, I'd be putting KP at 14, Getting him confident in his body again. Because, like, as we all know, KP is a gun. He's a gun. You know, maybe also whilst you're taking time to get KP confident again, you try to train Lockie Miller at six, see how he goes, maybe mm. test him there, see if he can move in there. Um, well, what are your thoughts, mate, as a, as a Knights fan? And then obviously you too as well. I've been saying for, like, the last few weeks that we're in Anamelia away from a home final. So, eggs on my <laughs> face. <laughs> uh, well, I think we made our own problems for ourselves. Like, when we signed Lockie Miller... I like pretty much said he's going to be the one. Uh, and then we had Gamble signed earlier, so I made him a 6 or a 14 or 18th man. And then we're stuck with KP, our uh, number one, or our number one player. Mm. What are we going to do with him? Too many options. Like, and too many options, or too many weapons in a duffel, really. <laughs> <laughs> Create our own problem. So we're kind of stuck with what's our problem? What are we going to do? How are we going to solve it? And we're kind yeah. of left with no answer at the moment with no answer. I'm sure we'll get there, but how we get there, fuck knows, God knows for. <laughs> would you would you start out of the knights and how me not so you're not knights knights any other knights fans here would you would you start pong next uh, week at six or would you put him at 14. yeah i'm sure he'll bounce back he's got would that dog in him six? would you start him at six yeah well yeah, there you go bounce back oh, well, not, yeah he bounced back at the bottom <laughs> two points <laughs> where where would you put what would you do 14. until he gets confident again or just want to pass in the, the yeah. micro quick there's probably a direct correlation with his uh, off the field halves partner Connor Watson not being there anymore, mm. and you know, but last hot two boy. years, you know, he hasn't been performing. So maybe he misses the hot boy. Hey, we've, we've all had our hearts broken by a hot guy. <laughs> That's a tr- it's just the truth. <laughs> just yeah, I just think like more time to build him into it, and and you're building something. There was really like growth there. I I, I don't see why it needed to rush back to six to, to put in there. And, and it, look, I understand, look, if he missed four or five tackles and it was just, you know, you let in one or two tries, you kind of would be like, yeah, that, that happens at the, in the half position. You know, you miss tackles. That's, that's part of rugby mm-hmm. league. But it was just, you could really tell he was just not confident. Like, it, which again, it's understandable. The, the poor bloke has had so many head knocks over the last, um, whatever it is. Um, it's, any just, other- it's just tough. Like if you bring him off the bench, like, you're then trying to find a spot for KP. You're trying to find a spot for Tyson Gamble. You've had five years to work out what position Kurt Mann is. <laughs> I've got no idea. Credit to Kurt Mann how, how versatile he is. 
Oh. And what happened between him and AOB? For well, him apparently, get- I think an abdominal injury that come out. I personally think Cape, uh, Kurt Mann hasn't been playing well enough to get selected at the moment. He's hardly played. He had a heap of injuries, hadn't he? Yeah, I, I, he played this year? I would be. I would be having Just Tyson, Tyson Gamble, Hastings, Miller, um, and I'd actually think Phoenix Crossland at nine, and then I'd be putting KP on the bench. And then I'd be trying to move Tyson Gamble probably into nine when I brought KP on mm. and just get Tyson Gamble to just, just rip and tear in the middle there, give okay service. Um, but it's tough. It's really tough. Look, it's one, look, they could bounce back. We, we could just be looking at a really good performance from the Eels. Like this could be just one of those situations where, you know, we got the grand finalist team against a team that's, you know, a bottom six-ish side mm. and, and that's that was the score. It, it is going to be an interesting, you know, they've obviously got the bye next week. So Newcastle's got two it's two weeks to bounce back from that. When they come back, they take on the Gold Coast Titans at Newcastle. Sunday Arvo. So. I will say it is in KP's favour now that he has two weeks off to try to, you know, get more confident, do a lot of contact at training, all that kind of stuff. Got the great KP behind us. Um, but yeah, it's it's... We all, everyone, I think everyone wants Caelan Ponga. But any, if you're a rugby league fan, you mm. want him back on the field playing his best footy. Uh, and yeah, on the weekend, unfortunately, just didn't look confident. Now on to the, the mighty Eels. Eels fans. We've got one there, there. <laughs> any, any, any other ones? There we are there. Um, are you convinced with the Eels? Not convinced? How are you feeling? A bit unsure. Mm. Based off Josh Hodgson, like, you can't play him more than 20 in the middle because teams come back and target us through the middle. Mm. He misses tackles, he can't he? cover across. <laughs> Another thing is, you mentioned Junior Polo was massive. I actually thought, like, Wurumu, Greg, Makatar, mm. Ogden, who came in for Madison. Like, yep. going into the ground, I was like, oh, Maddo's out, who's going to stand up? And I was impressed with them. Yep. Oh, Widomu Greg has been really good because when he come down from the Cowboys, I'm pretty sure he came yeah. down from. I was like a bit concerned that he didn't not explode onto the scene, but like where he didn't get many games, and you kind of go on, oh, this this big fella that's come up from the, from the Cowboys has got all this potential, and you would worry that he kind of could fade out into obscurity. Um, but I think ever since Polo and then RCG have had an injury here or there. He's been fantastic. You t- I totally agree with you. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, he, uh, he subbed on right next to us. It was about two metres away. Big boy. Big bit of gear. Good big, big God. boy. And so that's why Monster. it was so surprising that when he got yeah. down there, you didn't see him just like force his way under the bench, at least in that rotation. But even before that, at the Cowboys, like when he first came on the scene, he had so many raps. And he killed he it in that Indigenous game, it. I yep. think. And we're all going, wow, this And he kid. just fell off the radar for so long. Um, but yeah, with the Eels, oh, they're just one of those sides where, you, you know, I kind of feel like what happened with last year where everyone was like, nah, they're done. And I was like, yeah, but they can just put it together. And all of a sudden you're sitting there going, they're a premiership threat. So For 80 minutes too, Kempi. Yeah. Which, probably their first 80 minute yeah. game of the season. Yeah. And they still like, what's bizarre is they still didn't even complete that high percentage. They mm. still completed at 67%. Oh, Shit. And well, so, they still bombed four or so tries yeah. at least. And so it's like when you see them click into gear and you see their potential, it's like, they really can oh. go on a run again. It's all similar. It's a similar situation with the Rabbitohs. Is when they click into gear, it is just you just can't stop them. Mm. Can't stop them. What any other um, Eels fan there? Thoughts on the Eels this year? I just like like the other bloke said. Yeah, it's still a bit unsure. But mm. I feel that was Dylan Brown's best game of the year so far. He mm. actually stood mm. up and he was really good. But um, yeah, until I see it repeated, it's a bit of a maybe a little, bit of a manly flat track bully kind of game yeah. until they repeat it. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's so tough because the best sides that win comps, usually they show consistency at at least at some period during the year. Very rarely does the team that win the comp hasn't shown, like, strung at least six to seven really strong good games together. Um, and so the, with the Eels, it, it all really hinged. Like, what was, what's surprising is, like, I actually think this is probably Mitchell Moses' best form he's ever been in. And yet they're so up and down. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. He, he has been really good. I thought maybe he'd drop off since after the contract signing, but he yep. he's really kept going. He's he's going well too. So, what are your thoughts, mate? Is he still in front there? Bit of a counterpoint to the Mitchell Moses thing. I reckon this, before he signed his contract and all that stuff was going around, he couldn't goal kick for anything. Yeah, like, you know yeah. what I mean. Like it was Struggling. tearing us apart because we were m- missing games by like four points. They're all winnable games, but I reckon he's been outstanding recently ever since it's um mm. signed the contract. Um, 
but yeah, no, it's uh, good performance so far, I reckon. Um, yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's hard to put a gauge on them, like you always say. And mm. like, uh, like old mate said back there, as soon as Maddo was ruled out, this is such a danger game for us. Yeah. But I wanted to see your opinion on um, Andrew Davey signing mm. immediately. Yeah. Like I would have thought our first priority would be signing a prop, especially with Reg out. Mm. Um, and we're stacked for second round. Like we've got Lane, we've got Cartwright who's been killing it. Uh, mm. You've got Dory who's been killing it off the bench. And now you've got Davey as well. So like, I'm not sure if they're going to be having him off the bench. He's not much of an impact player. Mm. Is Maddo going to move to prop, do you reckon? Um, I like Maddo as more of an impact player as well. Mm. So it's just... Um, and, you know, Brad Arthur with these um, rotations as well, it's killing Very strange. Me. Yeah. Um, you know, at least we don't have a 14 that doesn't sit there and do anything anymore, which is good. But um, <laughs> even now with the hooker, like, do you reckon do you start hands and then bring on Hodgson? Oh, yeah. I was, well, first with the Davey one, it's, it's more just about I think he'd be on a minimum contract. And it's just really good to have players like that in your top 30 that you know they're going to give you good footy. Um, he wouldn't be taking anything away from some of the, the, the top tier contracts. And I think they've probably identified Widamu Gregg as that rotating big forward um, with uh, Regan Campbell Gillard and Junior Paolo. And I don't, I don't mind the shout of Madison also being kind of considered a front rower ish. I know he does have ball playing in him. So maybe, like, size wise, you're always going to be okay if you go Widamu Gregg, Campbell, uh, sorry, Madison, uh, Hands. And then a Davy, like that's a that's a big enough bench. You know, you don't need to be any bigger than that in today's game. Uh, so I can understand the Davy signing just through the fact that he'd be on a minimum wage for sure. Uh, in regards to Hodgson at nine, I personally think that they should. Pro- I'm probably all the way in the camp now of I would like them to start hands and bring Hodgson on for 20 minute impact games because I just think defensively he just struggles a little bit in regards to. Like, I love his attitude that he tries to shoot up out of the line to try and get good contact, and sometimes it works, but also at the same time, when it, when it misses, it, it's qu- quite a big miss. So I actually probably would be start beginning to start hands. And also the good thing about starting hands is, like, he's 24, 23, 24. Mm. You're building towards the future. What do you boys reckon? I think on the Madison one, I think Maddo's a better edge than he is middle. For you guys, I think you're better when he's in the middle. Without a mm. doubt. I think the momentum he brings you through the middle is sensational. We are out there the other night. Andrew Davey obviously wasn't playing. He is so loved out there. It's not even funny. That was one thing that really stood out to me, how much they all love Andrew Davey. I would, you know, it looks like to me that Phil Gould's gone. We've got all these injuries. Probably need to bring someone in. We've got back rowers galore. Like, I reckon you would have got a really good deal for Andrew Davey. To bring a guy in who has been very successful for you before. It wasn't that long ago. He was keeping Sean Lane out of the team. So they know what they can get out of him. I like the depth that he adds there. He did the same at Manly. He was keeping yeah. Josh Schuster out of the spot when Schuster was playing all right. I like Davey as well. I think he's a great pickup for you. Yeah, and he'd be definitely on minimum. He'd be like, there's no way. Oh, like max, you know, 200, 250. So I don't think he'd be hurting your cap at all. Um, what do you think about the Hodgson hands? You know, I feel like we've called it quite early in regards to we were a bit like, oh, I just don't know whether we know Hodgson's a gun and individually he does some great things. Does he gel as well as we hoped he would you know it seems super critical after they've just bloody gone on and towed mm. the knights up but i don't know i it's just i just feel like there's some kind of that hands combination just seems to work for me and i like i rather i like the idea of sitting down with hodgson and going mate you got 20 to 30 minutes work your magic like yep. when you go on everybody knows that you're that you're the shot caller for that 20 minutes or whatever at the well not the shot caller but like mitchell moses knows that it's like Look, if Hodgson sees something, he can take it. Whereas this situation they're in currently, it's still a bit... And again, it sounds like it's unfair because he's only been there for, what, we're at nine games in? It's going to take time yeah. to build the combination. He only played 44 on the weekend. Yeah, so I, I, I probably would be starting hands. I probably would be. What do you and think? I think Hodgson showed us at the start of the season he can play 80. Doesn't mean he should. I don't think so. Mm. Uh, and I didn't buy a 33-year-old Josh Hodgson to come and tackle the biggest forwards on the field in the first 30 minutes. Uh, I brought him for his maturity and his experience and his incredible ball plan that he's got that we don't get to see when he's forced to make 30 tackles in the first 25 minutes. Uh, to add to that as well, um, Yates has been killing it in um, lower grades too. So I reckon – I think we've only hot signed Hodgson for one year. I'm not sure if mm. it's one or two. I think it's a – yeah. Right. Oh, the good old mutual option. Yeah. 
Um, so if you have them there, the coach hands, mm. hands can be there, and then you can have Yates eventually come up through the grades. And then how, how old is Yates? Oh man, I wouldn't be able to be like 18, 19. Yeah. But um, I know he also even, won the SG ball on the weekend with Brad Arthur's young bloke at hooker. Yeah, exactly. He's very talented. Yeah. What Arthur at hooker? Yep. Wow. The younger brother. Oh, the younger brother. <laughs> That's nice to say. Damn. Where's that going? Like, my well, math's not my strongest point, Guru. Um, and Eels, there's no one to stick. Any questions, mate? I was just going to say that um, I thought it was probably uh, the first time this season where we've just gone back to running hard mm. um, and playing off the front foot. I know Newcastle weren't at their best, but um, I think just watching all those missed tackles and um, playing off the front foot, you saw guys like uh, Moses and Gutho just thrive on it. Um, and just wanted to ask, you know, do you think Parramatta need to go back to just playing power football or um, uh, any other way of playing? Because I think that if we just keep running hard, you're going to have guys like uh, Moses and, and Gutho and Brown, uh, that'll get them to run more. Mm. Oh, mate, I totally agree. Like some, the, the big knock on Moses sometimes is he's just too lateral and he just... He's, he's having a good game. He might have a try assist also, and all of a sudden he just gets in that super competitive mode and he's trying to score every play. Um, even though I don't think he's been guilty of it this year and I think that he's matured out past that, I do think you're right in regards to, like, they were super direct on the weekend. And if the Eels are going to make, it, like, any kind of run, it's it's going to be a hyper-aggressive forward pack that's running super direct. And that's why I think it's perfect. You start with Brendan Hands. He gets them going forward. When you've got Josh Hodgson field, they can go a little bit lateral, but I think that if Parramatta can beat the door down early, then bring Hodgson on to do his stuff, a very hard team to beat. Oh, mate. Well, it's just, it's crazy. So, like, out of the last, I think, four times they've met Panthers, obviously they lost the one that counts, but they've beaten them three times. So it's like Panthers fans. It's a, it's a nice little giggle there, like, yeah, yeah, that's right, we did win the grand final. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so Eels, incredible win. Uh, really, really good for their conversation, uh, for their confidence going forward. Um, Do you think they still need a fullback with X Factor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My God, seriously. <laughs> That's just insane. And the fact that, like, they club didn't come out and immediately just go, nonsense, nonsense. Like, they, the club were like, oh, well, no, we don't really, like, we kind of want an outside back and we kind of, if there is a better fullback on the market, and you're like, just come out and say, Oi, Gutho is good enough for us to win a comp. We back him all the way. We're looking for an outside back because they need an outside back. Mm. <laughs> and I, I do think, I will say, Eels fans, I do think you need an outside back to win the comp, though. I think it's like... Uh, 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 sorry? It could be Gutho. It could be Gutho. <laughs> Gutho in the centres. Um, no, I do think that you need... Like, you know what's crazy? It's like... Opacek would be heaven sent right now, yeah. you know. Oh, it, and like, I miss an Opacek. Who, who thought you'd ever say that? I know. But seriously, he, 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 at, there was a period there where, like, you, you're almost saying like Opacek's lucky to be in the side, mate. If you had Opacek this year, I th honestly reckon you win two or three more games. Well, I was originally the first few games. I was like, if Maddo's back, mm. we win those 100. percent Yeah. But it's the centers, man. It's like I understand. Russell's come back in and he's mm. done well with the centre, but he's a winger, yeah. in my opinion. Like yeah, I agree. He, the, the first two games of the preseason, he scored like three tries or something. He's insane. Mm. Mm. Um, and uh, Hayes needs some time to warm up to it, but he, he liquefied his knee like a year ago. Then he was like ACL, PCL, MCL. Yeah, it's going to take yeah. time to get It'll back. It'll take time. Quite um, I reckon Tass from Rabbitohs, if Whiten's gone there. Mm. I would, yeah, uh, Jesse, Jesse Arthurs would have been... <laughs> Jesse Arthurs would have been fantastic. <laughs> Don't you dare uh, yeah. my boy Jesse Arthurs. But, um, How did yeah, he serve? We just need a, a, a centre, I reckon. Well, yeah, That's a great yeah. shout, the yeah. task, because he wouldn't be on mm, big coin. Right, yeah. you know, You've got Assi in reserve grade still, who they're playing we haven't at fullback. Used I have What's no idea on? why, but yeah. he, I would have had him at centre weeks ago. Mm. Fingers crossed. Maybe well, I wonder, can... yeah, that, I, I really like that task shout because most likely going to be moved to the wing, but you'd have to say surely the Eels have got, if they're in the market, like, for example, they said they're in the market for if there's a fullback out there better than Gutho, they're in the market. So they've clearly got cap space mm. because a, a fullback better than Gutho is fucking a million dollars. We're going after Jaden Campbell, weren't we, originally? And then uh, yeah, there was chat. Yeah, yeah. So I really like that Tash out. Really hate the Jesse Arthur's one. Just relax on that shit. <laughs> it's too late now anyway. Yeah, come so. on, Russ. Um, 
But yeah, that's a good shout. I, I like that. Uh, now, just quick ad. Uh, Nine now stream live stream live NRL games from free on Nine now this week. Nine are starting with Manly versus Broncos on Friday night, Storm versus Rabbitohs on Saturday night, and Roosters versus Cowboys on Sunday night. All of these games are Magic Round, the biggest games and the best commentary for free. Get it. Uh, get on and stream it now, anywhere, anytime. That's Nine now, guys. As you guys all know. I get access to the Nine Now talent to interview them with this partnership. So if you're going to watch footy, watch it on Nine Now. And it, it really genuinely is. I used to think that like there was ads all the time on the app side of things. It's only when they score. There's an ad and then they come back, kick. And it's about a, it's only about a minute um, in regards to like how much extra you have to watch in a game. So Nine Now, it's uh, HD, free, and it's a great app to use. Now let's get to, well, let's not get to this game. <laughs> Rabbitohs defeat the Broncos, 32 to six. Um, uh, to, like, to be totally honest, you could see this coming a mile away. When Broncos were gonna, we basically were saying for quite a few weeks, when Broncos meet a top tier side, these games where they just use their freaky talent to get away with things, um, they're gonna be found out. Rabbitohs rolled up, rocked up there and said, yeah, you can go with us for half a game, but we're going to do this for 80 minutes. Broncos, unfortunately, did what they've done for the whole season, play only 40 minutes of football. What do they do against the Eels? Played really good 40 minutes of football, nearly got ran down. Rabideau said, we'll play as good as you for the first 40, and then we'll blow you off the park in the second half. Really mass- like a massive, massive eye-opener for the Brizzy Broncos. Got uh, Brizzy Bronco fan there. Any other Brizzy Broncos? Got one there. You got your mic, mate. What, what are your thoughts, mate? Oh, we just got done through the middle. Mm. Uh, it was pretty clear that Turgis, Totola, they just ran over the top of us and without Haas to really steady up the middle and get those really good uh, post-contact metres, we just got done. Yeah. Um, and then add in that Jock Madden wasn't really living up to um, what Mam was doing as well, wasn't offering too much to take a bit of the, um, the pressure off like Reynolds and then Walsh tried to do a few things, made a lot of errors. Mm. Um, like he tried, he tried hard, uh, Walshy, but um, yeah, it was just one of those games that he really couldn't inject himself as, as he wanted to. Yeah, it's, uh, there were three times, there were, th- there were three <laughs> times where I thought it just typified like the, the concern I have with the Broncos at the moment is like, look, if we want to talk about them as a top eight side, I'm stoked with their season. How good the Broncos, they're exciting. They can beat any team on their day. It's great. If we want to talk about them as a premiership threat, I thought there were three plays that really typified the fact of why they aren't a premiership threat yet. And it was, unfortunately, my boy Katoni Staggs on three different occasions. It's second tackle. He goes for a grubber. I think it goes out. He goes for maybe a flick pass. It doesn't matter. Anyway, three times on second tackle goes for a huge play that's totally unnecessary. Like, just build pressure. Just keep the ball in hand and we'll, we'll, we'll get some points. When you look at their backs, Walsh, four errors. Staggs, three errors. Farmworth, even though Farmworth played fantastic, two errors. So on Cobo, two errors. So you're looking at four, seven. You're looking at 11 errors just between the outside backs. So on's always good for a few errors, though. Oh, man. I know, it hurts. <laughs> it breaks my heart. But like... Died, though. Um, yeah. In both attack and defence. Like, we'll, we'll have errors in attack and then we'll have missed tackles in defence. Like, yeah. Ricky... Ricky and oh, both um, edge back rowers, both Cape Will and, and Ricky, have been letting a lot of missed tackles go through. So, yeah, it's a bit of a... Bit of a trouble for us. Your, your, your right edge can be the best and the worst edge in rugby league within a fortnight. Within the same game. Yeah, that's fair, <laughs> actually. Like, yeah, different. Like, you're, you're totally right. Ricky, although I've loved his aggression and his passion this year, seven missed tackles. Capewell, six missed tackles. You add that into all the errors on the edge, and it's like, man, there's only so much your forward pack can do for you, boys. Like, um, Broncos fan here, what, what are your thoughts, mate, the Broncos? Mate? Agree completely well with what he said. Um, we definitely missed Haas. All our forwards, other than Carrigan, definitely underperformed. Um, mm. Didn't help with all the errors from the backs. Um, I've never, I've always been in the boat of no prop should be worth a million dollars, but to Broncos, I think Haas is worth that. Yep. And I hope we get some good news out of the contract negotiations that's going on at the moment. And um, also, I also want to get your opinion on Flegler. Mm. I love him off the bench. When we went through that big sh- winning streak last year, mm. he was coming off the bench. He seems to have way more impact off the bench. When everyone's tired, he's got footwork, got a good offload. Um, 
Yeah, I want to get your opinion on that one too. Yeah, at full strength, I like him off the bench too. I think there was a game this year where Kevy just decided to mix it up a bit and, and put Flegger on, but I like him off the bench because if Paddy and Haas get tired or have to be taken off, at least we've got some X Factor with Flegler on there. But if you if you start Paddy, start Haas, start Flegler, there may be a period, I'm not, not 100% sure, but there's a possibility where all three go off and all that, like, our forward pack without those three in it, you know, it's a different fallback. Jensen's good, but he, he's a toiler. He's not a, you know, and then you've got Kobe, Kobe Hetherington, who is he's a bit smaller, so he's not going to have as much impact. So I agree, I like Flegger off the bench. Just with the Broncos fans, do you think we're a premiership this season? Potentially. Potentially. Not, not 100% confirmed yet. But yep. yeah. No, I'm, I'm in the same. What, do next, you th- season. next season? Next season. Yeah. I, I'm, I think potentially in regards to, like, if we can clean up the, the errors in, in the completion rate. Um, but I think 2000, the only problem with next year for us though, is we lose Flegler, we lose Herbie. And like Herbie is so important for us, it's crazy. What do you? Yeah, we've got Jesse, got Jesse Arthur. Like Herbie guys. brings something special though. <laughs> Herbie brings something special. And I, I think as much as we're talking about him, I think we'll talk more about Flegler, how much of a loss he is next year and how much we appreciate him at the moment. Oh, Flegler. How, how, how concerned, Kempi, are you around Payne Haas in that, firstly, it's only a one-game sample size, essentially, mm. without him and mm. getting pumped after a really a terrific start to the season. And secondly, I'll say that if any team loses their best player, you know, your, your premiership credentials take a massive hit. How far can Devil's Advocate, glass half empty sort of view of it, if Payne Haas gets into miss of the season... How far can Brisbane go? Like, how much did that take out of him? Yeah. Because it was, it was grim on the weekend. Well, we're not going to win the comp without paying house, I don't think. But I will say that it's, I'll be able to make a better judgment call when our outside backs don't make as many errors. Because, yeah. like, our forward pack can only do so much if we're making, eight, like, what, 11 errors between the four of us. And when you look at the stats, we had 48% of the ball and we ran for about... 250 to 300 metres less in a Rabbitohs pack. And we all agree like Rabbitohs are a premiership threat. So that's not too bad considering we lost Payne Haas. And like Payne Haas is literally worth 200 metres. So I think that it's it's not as dire as some may suggest where like we're just going to get lose games without Haas. But I do think like if we're going to win a comp, it's like, it's like Haas is almost like could Panthers win the comp without Fisher-Harris? I'm, I'm not sure they could. Um, like, I just think he's so important to the side. It's crazy when you look at it at the weekend without Payne Haas, you know, and he, he, he was the main out there. And you think back to last year, as soon as Pat Carrigan went down, you didn't win, did you win another game after that? Mm. I don't think you did. No, no, we didn't. He went out in the Tigers game, I think, and then you, you yep. lost after that. Yep. Whereas, like, earlier in last year, Adam Reynolds missed a couple of games and you were fine. Mm. Like, it's unbelievable how – and I was sitting there last year going, wow, they can lose Adam Reynolds and still be okay. But as soon as you lose either of these middle forwards, mm. it just falls into a heap. Yeah, I think we're getting a little bit better, though. Like, I thought on the weekend without Haas, we were still sold through the middle. I actually thought it was our backs that kind of let us down. Um, so, but yeah, it's we do rely heavily on Haas. Like, Haas is single-handedly the one, well, definitely one game, mm-hmm. where he came off the bench for that 10 minutes and we scored three tries. Uh yeah, he's a big part of our... Now, the million-dollar question in regards to is he worth a million dollars, in the old salary cap, I would say I'm never paying a forward front row a million dollars. In the new salary cap where a million dollars is the equivalent to, like, $800,000, I say, yeah, you pay him a million dollars. Um, so, yeah, he's just... we just never seen anything like it. Never seen, now, let's get to the, um, the Rabbitohs. What a win. What a win. Easily... Oh, probably is... I mean, I'd even go to you. Oh, we'll be without us. Second best performance of the year. What I loved about this with the Rabbitohs, it was just so ruthless, so ruthless. Like you just, you basically challenged the Broncos to say, yeah, you've got a gun side and let's, we'll, we'll go with you for that first 40. But what separates premiership threats from non-premiership threats is who can play 80 minutes at the, this super high level. And the Rabbitohs proved that on the weekend. Uh, Campbell Graham was absolutely phenomenal again. Has he, has he etched his name in a Blues jersey for sure? We've got some Rabbitohs fans here. He's got the mic. Sure, 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 sure. I'd like to say I just absolutely love that Campbell is getting the raps he deserves. For years, he's been the player who's put his hand up to take this tackle to hit up, which is the hardest hit up 
um, to take in a set. He has also had a lot of changes in his right winger. Mm. So his combinations, he's also helped bleed in Lockie Ilias. So there's a lot that Campbell does off the ball as a South supporter I've admired for years as he's come through. And then mm. now just to see him reap the rewards of all his hard work, his prowess in attack. Mm. Um, and I'm just so happy that he's getting this recognition and he's in the talks to play at Centre in Origin. Oh, absolutely. And you're, you're totally right in regards to like all the, the, the little things that he does that don't get noticed. Um, you know, we're, he's getting hype now because we see the tries. But any Rabbitohs fan will tell you, he's been doing this for years now. Two to three years even, you know. <laughs> like, people forget, like, we, we t okay, we talk about um, Sue Lee. He debuted at 18. Mm. Um, Campbell Graham was still in school when he debuted. And people don't even even talk about that. If you're still in school and debuting, like the other bloke did debut when he's still at school, Wade Graham, like we're talking about international, you know, gun rep players. And I just think Campbell Graham has been, you, I totally agree, flying under the radar for so long. We, we've been talking about him for Origin since last year. I think if he isn't in an Origin jersey this year, it's criminal. It's, it's honestly, put it this way, I think he's more sure of an origin jersey right now than Hines. That's how much he deserves a jersey, even though I would probably, after Hines' has continued crew performance, you know, last week I would have probably maybe still had Luai there and had Hines off the bench, but now seeing the way Hines continues to just go up and up and up, I'll probably bring Hines into that sixth role. But Campbell Graham's so good, I'd probably have him as, he's almost my first pick. It's a term that we don't use as much anymore because the centre position has become a little bit more um, fluid in the modern game, but I think he's the best pure centre in rugby league right now. Campbell yeah, Graham, for sure. Without a doubt. He is such a good footballer. I had the pleasure of watching this game with an incredibly drunk Matty the Water Boy, <laughs> which was quite an experience. And uh, myself and Matty, we're both huge Brad Fittler people. Uh, or I think always will be, but I think we both looked at each other the other day and said, if he doesn't pick Campbell, We've got dramas. Yeah. We've Matt, got serious Matty dramas. Maddie loves Brad Fittler more than you love Jermaine Hopgood. <laughs> Might be true. He loves Brad Fittler. <laughs> He's got to be there. He, 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 be. he is arguably one of the most well-rounded outside backs in the game right now. Like, so you've got a guy like Trell who has this crazy high ceiling. But I mean, you know, the tough carries that Campbell Graham does. Now he's added to his game attacking flair. His defense is fantastic. His work rate is fantastic. In contact, he never loses contact. He, anytime he's gone up against some of the best centers in the game, he's never lost that battle as well. He is seriously- He can't do anything more to get picked for the Blues. He seriously can't. Opinion, yeah. like, he would, like he's been playing so well that even if he's like Tom Travoy, which was killing it, um, Tra Trell was killing it, you know, Biz is killing it, Addo Carr's killing it. You would like be uh, like stressing out how to get him in the side. That's mm. how well he's playing right now. And mm. he just seems to be a guy that would just eat Origin up, eat it up. Um, any other questions from Rabbit? Yep. Do you think, uh, sorry, do you think uh, Campbell Graham's on the wing or in the centres for Origin? Well, it just all depends on Turbo. It all depends on Turbo. Like, look, if, if Turbo is 100% foot fit, I'm putting Turbo at centre only because he's one player of the series from there. And also, Campbell Graham played a lot of wing coming through the grades. And I thought he did quite well on the sting for Australia. Um, if if uh, Tommy Trevojevic is not 100% and he's not picked or whatever, 100% you're picking um, Campbell Graham in the centres. No doubt. No doubt. Any other? Got some? Just, yeah. I just want to say as well, like, Cody Walker's absolutely killing it at the moment. Like, that try where Campbell passed it back into him, uh -huh. like, the way that he just spocked it out uh -huh. and said, just give me the ball, I'm going to be on the inside, and he just popped in, put the ball down, unbelievable. You could even consider him playing, like, 14 for New South Wales if you really needed someone. Like, bringing him on for 20 minutes, like, he'll absolutely run riot where there's tied forwards um, on the field. He probably won't get the spot, but if you need a consideration, he's probably there. Um, and... Just another thing, Latrell's killing it after that criticism he copped a few weeks ago and well done to him because he's just put the team on his back and he's absolutely running a riot around everybody. And like that second try that he scored yesterday where he just got the ball, palmed someone off and put the ball up and then bounced and just got back off AJ. Like who else is doing that in the comp? Imagine scoring off your own crossfield kick. <laughs> 
<laughs> I um on last podcast I gave him a massive massive rap and, he, and I said something that he disagreed with I won't say what it was anyway he sent me a very aggressive banter chat but tr- let's just put it this way Trell is in the mood and he <laughs> yeah. is, uh, he's ready to rumble he was um he basically saying you know no one no basically said no one does it like I do it so he's a very confident right now I personally think he wants a Dally M. I reckon he wants a Dally M um, and obviously he wants a premiership as well. But I think his main goal right now is a premiership for South and a Dally M. Because then, then it's everything. He's done everything. Yeah. Got a question there, mate? I, I just wanted to know uh, what your thoughts would be on how how uh, confident South would be after coming off those two wins, uh, how close they would be to a premiership, seeing that in the previous few years South have had – very good offence and uh, they've, they've sort of floated in and out of games but coming after the cr- criticism throughout the start of the season the last two weeks they've really shown that they can get down to the grit and the grind of the game mm. you haven't really seen that off South Sydney for the last few years but just wanted to know how close you would think they are seeing that they can grind and especially with that Bulldogs game the Bulldogs run it for 30 so minutes and then their attack just flourished through yep. same with the second half and then last week against Panthers they just stuck with it stuck with it had no ball and then just come through and especially with the Broncos game first half no ball at all mm. coming into the sheds 12-6 and then you just see them in the second half just showcase what they've got yep. just grinding and then just pushing them out of the games like they haven't been able to for a few other years Kenny, yep. before you jump in a couple of numbers around that mm. and, and you mentioned the grit that they've shown like the Bunnies put 40 points on sweet we know they can attack they're arguably the best attacking team in the competition they've got the second best defence in the competition this season conceding 15.3 points a game the Panthers are number one, surprise, surprise, with 13.9. So Bunny's 15.3. Third place is the Broncos on 18.2. So that's a pretty significant difference between the two teams. The Broncos going into the week, the Broncos now have the second best attack in the competition with 26 per game. The Sharks are first with 29. So prior to the weekend, I checked these stats today. So the Broncos may have been number one mm. leading into this round. And then the Bunnies came to six points. Like that defence... Yeah, it's Incredible. amazing. And it wasn't a, a matter of like, you know, it was 50-50 possession. Like, they were under the pump the mm. whole first half. The whole first half. And, and you know, Broncos, yeah, they're missing Hass and Mann, but they still have Adam Reynolds, Herbie Farnworth, Selwyn Cobbo, Staggs. Like, they they got, were their only two players missing like, from yeah, the entire it, roster. It wasn't like we were decimated by injury. Mm. And they just kept – they just dominated. Like, even when they were under the pump, you could still feel they had control of the game. That's how confident they are in their defence. Uh, in regards to premiership, they're absolutely a premiership threat this year. Like, if you had asked me a few weeks ago, I would have said I'm a bit unsure. But after this, beating Penrith and then doing this to the Broncos who, you know, you know they're on top of the table. Like, even though their wins haven't been that convincing, they're still on top of the table. And they went up there and did it. I will say, though, that next year, oh, my God. <laughs> Like, if there was one knock on the whole squad of the, the Rabbitohs right now, it would be maybe missing a winger or an outside back on that other edge there. With Jackie White coming at centre, you move Tass to wing, that is like... They're basically... If they don't challenge for a premiership in that... If they don't win a premiership in the next year or two, it'll be a missed opportunity. You're right, <laughs> <laughs> Our best player... <laughs> And they signed him as like, oh, if he performs in the preseason, he might get a run in the NRL for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving I, on. I think it's really good what South have done, though. I think that you see it quite often in, like, the NFL, where they might have a roster in a certain spot and you stack two seasons to go hard at it. Look at the LA Rams a couple of years ago, did a very similar thing. I love what South and you have done. They've obviously looked around the room and gone, hey, we've only got Cookie and Walker for X amount of time. Let's go all in on this period. You've got guys like Campbell Graham, Colin Matungi, they're mascot boys, they're Coogee boys. I think they will stay there to try and win a premiership over the next two to three years. So I think South Sydney have nailed it at the moment. I, I think there's a really good chance I get to round one next year and they're my premiership favourites. Yeah, agreed. And like, what's what's crazy is like, you got Lock Elias just sitting there just plying his trade, plying his trade. Because like the one thing that a lot of these clubs that are in these windows, it's usually based around a seven where you go, well, this seven is only got two more years left. Once he's there, like, you know, sorry to bring it up, but like the Raiders right now, they lose Jackie White and they are done. Like they're gone. Like they're going to have to recruit massively. <laughs> it's just the truth. Like, 
it's just the truth. Uh, it's the truth. Um, it's just hey, hey, the Broncos went through it too when we when we had no half and we had to go out and recruit uh, Rabbitohs number seven. So we've been through it too. But the crazy thing with the the Rabbitohs and how well they've set this up, even if they lost Cody Walker, you would still go, yeah, I've got confidence in them that they'll be able to bring someone in for that. They could even, you know, they they made the grand final without Latrell Mitchell. So like the the what they've managed to do there is just phenomenal and especially like they're the only club post Wayne that has you know continued to dominate whereas post Wayne usually it's a fucking shit show uh I'm loving what's happened to the the Rabbitohs I really really am did you seriously just compare the Broncos recruitment prospects to the Raiders (laughs) I'm just saying that we had to go out and recruit seven you guys are gonna have to go out and recruit Uh. a miracle (laughs) <laughs> we'll be paying Seb Chris 1.5 mil next year just to keep him at the club. Uh, any more questions of Rabbitohs at all? Or you all? I just wanted your opinion on the forward pack from South Sydney because mm. that's what I was happy with the most, I think. Um, they only complete at 70%. Mm. I think if South complete over 80%, they can pretty much beat anyone. They showed that with Penrith the week before. Mm. But to Tola back, Burgess was... He picked up his game a bit. Um and Kalamantang, has got to come back in. Um, I just wanted your opinion on the four-pack. Oh, mate, it's incredible. Totola came back in 45 minutes, ran for 200 metres, essentially. And again, it just it re-emphasises the point. If you had said to me a couple of years ago, a Rabideau side with a, and a Burgess Brothers is quiet, I'd say there's no way they're going to win games with the Burgess Brothers quiet. They, like, obviously, Tom Burgess is still important to that side. I'm not sitting here saying that, you know, just get rid of him or whatever. But like you can win matches without Tom Burgess, whereas I just feel like a few years ago that just wouldn't just wouldn't happen. You know, Totola, you got Moale's got um, getting more experience. I mean, you're starting front row with Sele and Jai Arrow, like, and they both did an incredible jobs. And so once you have that full strength forward pack back on the field, you're going to have guys like Host Cheekham that potentially may not even be in the side, and you're winning games against teams like Penrith to them. So, mate, I. I just cannot speak highly enough of the way the Rabbitohs have just almost under the radar built such a solid squad that doesn't rely on just one or two people. Again, I repeat, they made a grand final without Latrell Mitchell. How many teams in the NRL could say, take out your superstar and make a grand final? It just, it just does not happen very regularly. So, see us. Fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> now, now uh, on to... Oh, there's one more question. Sorry. There's one more question. Our forward pack last, across the last few years have just been building so nicely. We've got the experience of Tom Burgess mm. and Jairo, but then we've been blooding guys like Davey Mawali. And then now we're hopefully starting to see Hame Sele get a bit of runs on the board through hopefully luck. Um, mm. That's what's let him down across... The last few years, his um, injury toll. So it's just good to see how we've nursed through um, some of our forwards, and we've got Keon to come back. We've got Havili to come back as well, um, mm. and then we've also got Shaq Mitchell, who yeah. had a great um, start to the year Very before true. he fell out injured. So we've got some good depth in our forward pack, which is building nicely. Yeah, absolutely agree. Absolutely <laughs> agree. Um, now on to the uh, oh, I've got to think about the listeners. Make sure to grab a case of bloke beer on the weekend. Uh, get down to your local. We've got a store locator on our website. We are in hundreds of stores across Queensland, New South Wales, ACT uh, and Victoria. Uh, I think we're in every celebrations, every bottle, every IJ plus liquor, crazy prices and it's beautiful beer. Give our beer a try. I promise you, you will not regret it, especially the midi. The midi is absolutely exploding. Now let's get on to uh, Raiders absolutely robbing the Dolphins of a victory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Raiders uh, defeat the Dolphins 31-30. Uh, there was a period there where I'm going, the Raiders have absolutely bombed this game. What is going on here? They show fight. They get the job done. What a great win for the club. You know, they lose Jackie Whiten, who is the heart and soul of that club. They come out and just is a Raiders performance. You know, yeah, it wasn't pretty. Yeah, you wish you could have put them away by 30. But even after they lost momentum, they swung it back in their favour. Uh, and they got the win. I thought it was just a, a super entertaining game. Uh, and the Dolphins, once again, show like their grit and determination is unbelievable. It's off the charts. It is off the charts. I'll go to you first, Timmy. Thoughts on this game, mate? Yeah, really good win, mate. Like it wasn't pretty sort of at the back end of that game up until the Jamal 
Fogarty field goal. First of his career, I believe. Certainly his first match winner. So, mm. mate, that was unreal. So, very, very special win. And obviously the, the Jack White news dominated the headlines during the weekend. It, it could go two ways for the Raiders. And one is that, all right, we're losing our su- more than just our superstar, but the heart and soul of the club. Mm. And the team could just fall apart in the back end of the season. And I'm so confident that won't happen mm. as a result of Jack announcing that he's leaving. It's unfortunate the circumstances that it's happened and the way the game is these days, you make these decisions early on and you live with it for the rest of the year. But Mm. the Raiders, it clearly meant so much to that entire team and Ricky Stewart and Jack White and and to see them get up and get away in a gritty golden point win was pretty special. So, and anyone that knows Jack knows that he's not thinking, all right, I'm done here, I'm moving on to next year and get Mm. my, you know, my premiership window with the bunnies and go to a gun club. He will give everything he's got for that club. He Mm. loves the Raiders. He loves the boys there. He's been there since he was about 15 years old from Orange. Uh, It's devastating that he's leaving, mate, but he has every right to to make that decision and go to a new club. He's given so much to us. So uh, I'm excited for what the back end of the year holds because they'll want to send Jack out on high. Garina. Should have heard what he said in the car about Jack. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. Mate, for mate, me... What are you saying, like, good riddance, <laughs> dog, with something along those lines? I would never say that about Jack White. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just some numbers <laughs> yeah, just around the Raiders. And, you know, when I have a look at their side, I look at them every week and go, where are their points going to come from? Most of the time it's Jack, which has me really worried about them. But I quite often watch the Raiders and I think, fuck, they're not doing themselves many favours. When the Raiders were at their best last year... They were offloading constantly. They were playing mm. second phase footy. Offloading players? Oh, sorry. Had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I, sorry. Sorry. I apologise. That wasn't me. That was fucking just came out of my head. <laughs> you deserve that. Um, when you have a look so far this season, they're four and four. They've had one bye. In the games that they've lost, they've averaged seven offloads per game. The games they've won, how many offloads do you reckon they've averaged per game? 13. Wow. Almost double. How many offloads they had on the weekend? 24. The next best was 12. Wow. It, is, wow, it has been the key to their game for so long. They went like a busted for the first half of last year and Tapane was given a license to offload. He's let Corey Horsburgh come in and play middle third footy and offload the ball and you're able to get on the front foot. You don't have that much creativity in your side realistically. And, and you win some, you lose some, Guru, but we called this very loud and proud on the podcast a month ago, offload yeah. the freaking ball. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what about Big Red? How good's he been at 13? Oh. Oh, mate, I'm loving Big Reg at 13. And, and, like, he's just... The positive with Corey Orsborough at 13 is, like, he's still so relatively young in that position. Like, the impact he's having on games now is second to none. He was going to win our hungriest player, but obviously we gave it to Coruscant because we like to confuse our listeners. <laughs> Horsburgh when it comes was to, too hard to spell. Yeah, Horsburgh was too hard to spell. <laughs> um, but this, is, is, this was in a big game... And what a, you know, I always remember a, a few years back where he had that little push and shove at, at the Eels and he was so passionate, he was brought to tears. And like, yeah, people put shit on him for it or whatever. But like, for him to come out and put on a performance like this, you knew it was for Jackie. You, you know what I mean? Like, and that's the kind of player that you want in your side every day of the week because it was one of the best performances he's ever had. He had 24 runs, 190 metres, 94 post contact. He had five offloads and 41 oh, tackles. Oh, 71 minutes. Like a big boy. The big fellow in the middle there. And when you talk about club players, 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 you want a bloke that's, you know, he was clearly, again, as I said, he's playing for Jackie Boy there. Because everyone knows Jackie Whitewood is a tough decision to make. There's, oh, I bet you there's a million reasons. Even Ricky Stewart has come out and said that the, the yarn's about the – he didn't specifically say the yarns about premierships, but he just said there's been a lot of lies and speculation as to why Jackie's mm. leaving. So I don't think it is just about a premiership. I think there's plenty of reasons, like maybe he's, he has a missus that is from Sydney or family. Like There's so many things, you know, when you are part of a, whether you're a guy or a girl, you have a, a wife or a husband that can go into where you work that I think doesn't get... Uh, it really just doesn't get brought into the equation for a lot of footy players. They just think, oh, yeah, well, they're on Bitcoin. So it's like, rah. Happy wife, happy life. Seriously. Your, 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 wife's from, uh, your wife's from Canberra, Campy, so you're going to make the move down? Uh, look. <laughs> like Zoom. We, we can just Zoom our Does relationship. Did she go for the Raiders? No, she honestly doesn't know what rugby league is. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, you couldn't. Um, I think because she's Filipino, so the only person that she knows, because her mum used to have a massive crush, Craig Wing. 
Yeah. We all had a crush on Craig Lee. And I'm like, me too. Me too. Me too. Uh, but just, yeah. just on Corey Horsby that you mentioned there, mate. Speaking like, of hot blokes. Hot blokes, yeah. <laughs> they've, uh, they've won four games this year. One of them was when he scored two tries, and the last two weeks where he's played 70 minutes in both at lock four. I, I know we're stacked. I know we're stacked in the pack, forward pack, depth. I think he's a smoky for Queensland. My super coach team needs him pretty desperately. So I I'm can, happy to leave him out. I can he would have played, was it the 2022 year, 2020 year that you were decimated? Yeah. I knew he was this close, then he got injured just before I was one put, or put two of I reckon he'll be in the extended squad. Mm. I reckon he'll, he'll be brought into camp because, you know, Queensland love picking blokes like him. Yeah. Like, we love blokes like Corey Horsra. Yeah, Queensland four pack's going to be interesting. Me and Matty were talking to blokes on Friday night, naming all these guys. Oh, he'll get picked. He'll be there. He'll Can't all be there. You can't pick 25 forwards at the end of the day. You've got to get Christian Welsh back in the side somewhere. Hopgood, maybe. Horsbra. Settle down. Fafita Settle wasn't down, in the God. team last year. Is that why you just brushed my Horsbra shout? Because you think he's yeah, going to take Hopgood's spot? Slater doesn't pick him. He's going to wash <laughs> up on a beach somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting, though, because like they probably will be fighting over because they're a similar body shape, yep. similar style of player. Yeah, um, you probably wouldn't. Have both. Oh, I'm saying that. I suppose you could play like Hopgood as your 13 if you wanted to pick him. Yeah, and Hopgood's not necessarily a front rower. Yeah, yeah so, whereas Big yeah. Red, you could play, play as in the front out row. Out prop. Um, but yeah, I thought, as I said, was it pretty? No, it wasn't pretty. Was the last set before the end of the game the worst set I've ever seen in the history of mankind? <laughs> like, Timmy, walk me through it. Well, I mean, I know, and I know Jamal Fogarty, he's come out and he said, like, look, we didn't set up properly for a field goal and yeah. we should You sound have. surprised, mate, but the Raiders <laughs> haven't been able to close out games for about six years and you sound, you sound surprised by it. But I am stoked that... Like, if, if we went and, like, if we had a clinical last set to end a game when we're in front or scores a level, you'd be like, where'd that come from? Yeah, who, who's leading this team yeah. around? I will say, though, that it's, it was bizarre... That the commentators were letting everyone know that um, no one had kicked a field goal in the Raiders' side. It was like that, that blew my mind. I had a double take. That. I'm like, surely not. Surely not. not. Uh, but the good thing is, is Fogarty kept his head and boom, nailed it. Uh, I think that's actually really good for his confidence as well um, because he needs to be the seven that leads the team around. We all know Jackie's just more of a ball runner. Uh, you know, he had a try, 84 metres. This is uh, Fogarty. Three tackle breaks, 19 tackles, uh, nearly kicked for 400 metres, did 15 of the kicks. Um, you know, another player I just absolutely love, and I think he's he's a similar guy in regards to if he was a New South Welshman or a Queenslander, we'd be speaking about him more, but it's Tim Yeah, He is a gun. He's a strike centre now. He's a genuine strike centre. And because, like, Origin, it puts you in the paper, you know, in regards to like if you're in contention you get spoken about a lot now i don't i wouldn't have him in my origin side but i'm just saying that he would be spoken about more because of the origin yeah. chat he, he's been one of the better centers in the comp this year like seriously he's been up there as, as one of the better centers in the comp um and my boy jared croker i'll leave it to you croak croak in a bar croak in a bar yeah <laughs> what, what was the what was the chat there that if x happens it becomes croak in a bar I think maybe if we tear the Broncos up again at the end of the year, it comes croaking a bar. <laughs> I think it was if you managed to retain your superstar player. <laughs> yeah. you, you la- uh, reportedly. Sebastian Chris is still safe. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> you laugh now, mate, but when we give, uh, when we poach Jock Madden for 1.3 million a year, then <laughs> we'll see who has the last laugh, Kempi. Uh, um... <laughs> Jordan Rapana as well. He was fantastic. <laughs> what, 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 it was, what else were your thoughts about the game, Timmy? Um, well, that's it. I was like, when, when the Dolphins fought back into that, it was identical to what happened in round two, I think it was. And you just go, not again, not again. Just great to see us close out a game. And mm. you mentioned Jamal. Well, Jack's going next year. Who steps up? You know, any here. number of people could be slotted into the 5'8 role, but Jamal's got to be the man. So you mentioned it being a confidence builder for him. He's such a talent, Jamal. He scored a late try in that game as well. It, it'll do him the world of good. And, yeah, I think we can really build off the back of it. That's three wins in a, in a row. Yeah. None of them are pretty. The Raiders never win pretty, let's be fair. So as long as we're racking them up, we'll be in contention for the top eight. Raiders fans? Yep. Thoughts? All questions? Uh, yeah. So I think the yarn about Jamal Fogarty, 100%. So we're four and four this year, plus a bye. Those four wins we've had, Jamal's kicked close to 400 metres or above. Mm. He missed the Knights game with 
he was crook. Mm. And those other three games that we lost, he didn't even kick for 150 metres. So, mm. yeah, like, as a fan, massively it sucks that we're losing Jack. But it's this perfect opportunity to take the keys off Jack and hand them to Jamal. Mm. And his end-of-set kicks are just, are just so much better than Jack's. And kicking was never Jack's strong point. And, yeah. like, it's no knock on him. I don't know how we're going to replace that kicking it out on the full every game, but <laughs> we'll find someone. Don't worry, Ricky will find someone. <laughs> but Jamal's end of set kicks are just, just so much better. And mm. so, yeah, like I said, it sucks, but he's, Jack's got to do what's right for him. He's got to do what's right for his family. Mm. He's the only bloke who knows why he's made that choice. Mm. Um, and, you know, him crying at the end of the game... Ricky crying at the end of the game. You can see how much it means to both of them. Yeah. And Jack had a blinder. He, before half time, he had two try assists and a try. Mm. And those two that he assisted, he was the first bloke there congratulating the bloke who scored. Mm. And when he scored, the whole team got around him. So this yarn, who it came from a Canberra great, around, oh, you'll have trouble looking his, his teammates in the eye. I don't think that's... I don't think that's spot Stupid, on at yeah. all. I, I think he's yeah. going to go out Close. there and he's going he's to attack it like a night out on Canberra and yep. he's going to end up in a wrestle. Yeah, <laughs> which is a great thing. No, I agree. I was a bit surprised the yarn around, um, you know, not being able to look the uh, teammates in the eye. I was, I was quite surprised. Obviously, it come from a quite influential person, so they've got their reasons for saying in regards to, like, that's their opinion. But, like... Jackie Whiten has earned the respect of every single bloke in that changing room. There's not a single soul, even as a fan, that wouldn't say Jackie's not going to rip and tear for the rest of the year. Um, it's, uh, it is going to be interesting in, with the Raiders where do they, do they try to bring in uh, Schneider earlier than expected and like put him at 14 maybe just to give him some runs on the board, to get him some pairing with Fogarty? Do they go into the market? I guess the, the biggest concern going forward for the Raiders are is they, they already kind of needed to go into the market for either a nine or a fullback. So now they, I mean, in their salary cap, they, they surely have got, they probably got two to $3 million free to just go. But the problem is, is like, who's out there? Yeah, you'll need it. Yeah, you'll need a lot, a lot. Yeah. Um, so we've got the money. Yeah. So we, we desperately need a strike spine player oh, for That's what I was going to bloody say. Um, look, I understand it's their job, so I'm not blaming the cameraman, probably the people above him telling him what to do. But if a bloke has a footy in front of his face trying to hide from crying, maybe oh, just take the yeah. Walk camera away. off. Just take the camera off him, bro. Like, yeah. I get it the, initially when he's in, like, a little bit of tears. But if he's literally walking away like that, it's like, come on, man. Like, it, there's a line of, like, yes, they are rugby league players. We need to have access to them. I understand that. But when he's actively hiding and you're following him around to try to oh. get a shot of him crying, it's like... Come on, have, have a bit of human, like humanity in you to go, mate, this guy clearly doesn't want to be filmed crying. Um, and yeah, I, I actually, I thought it was almost, it's going to sound a bit sentimental, Guru, but you know me, I love love. Yeah, love is love. <laughs> Love's um, love. I actually thought it was a bit of a healing moment for the Raiders in regards to like seeing Ricky in, you know, upset and seeing White and upset, like almost cathartic in like letting it go to a degree. Like it's happened. It's over now, let's move forward. And I, so I actually think it was a bit of a healing moment to see how passionate both Ricky and... Mm. Whereas, like, let's say there was a bit of tension between Ricky and Jackie. This is something that probably could, like, rear its head again in the end of the year. But I think, like, that's put to bed now. Like, is you can see there's no drama between them. Yes, Ricky was pissed off with this decision, but it is what it is kind of thing. Yeah, and once again, like Ricky's comment saying he is pissed off. So he should be. Yeah, for sure. 100, like, he'd be a lot like... He, if coaches aren't pissed off when their best players leave... The fuck are you doing? And not, yeah. not word for word. It was something I love the quote. It was something like, "Yeah, I'm I'm angry at it. I'm I'm disappointed or something." But he goes, "If I wasn't, um, that'd mean we don't care for Jack and we don't want Jack. It's like we all yeah. care for Jack. We mm. love Jack. Of course, they're pissed off that he's going." Yeah, absolutely. I was furious at Guru going on a honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> so much I love the bloke. Uh, got any questions, mate? Before we move on from him, can you tell your mate Mark Nichols that the glasses are he's not fooling <laughs> anyone? Mark. <laughs> it is. The he's your marquee the, signing, mate. The beard is trimmed to the point of Nosy Nichols, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I guess just more along the lines of the replacement for Jack. I was having a few thoughts about it. And, like, do we go 
along the lines of the Luke Brooks, he just had an incredible game. Get him, get, get him up there. He'll, he'll kill it. Um, but or Ricky Old Faith will go over to England. Um, I know that the half from St. Helens was looking to come to NRL. Young mm. Lachlan Dodds, I think it is, had a good game for the World Cup Challenge if we get him up there. Just depends the way it goes. If we get someone cheaper, we can focus on other areas that might need improvement, like the nine, or I think we're still down a strike winger we really need. It just depends. I'm excited to see with the way the club yeah. goes for it. Well, I actually think that Schneider showed promise. He got a really strong forward pack. I would actually be going super aggressive into like the 16, 17-year-old market of the best halves and basically going, okay, there's no one on the market that we can, we can buy right now that's going to win a premiership in the next year or two. But we could go and pay overs for a 16 or 17-year-old to bring him down to, to Canberra. Um, hopefully, Schneider may blossom into something and Fogarty can get us to play finals footy for the next two to three years. And we, build, and we, and we land, like, we take a punt, but we land the best 17 coming out of school. You know, we, we give him a three or 400K contract coming out of school. I know people don't like to hear that, but sometimes you've got to take a risk. And you have Schneider there, you've got Fogarty there. It's not like Schneider or Fogarty are going to be charging, uh, like, you know, taking up massive salary cap. So if I was the Raiders, I'd be going, like, paying overs for the best seven coming out of school or six. And, and to be fair, I think that is a path that the Raiders have taken to some extent. Um, I don't know how many of you watch um, junior footy, but um, Chevy's <laughs> probably only me, I assume. Under 12s. It's very lonely at Leichhardt Oval on Saturday. Um, they went and got Chevy Stewart from Cronulla, who I think could be the next big fullback. Mm. Um, they also could be. They also, um, Ethan Strange, another one they got from the Roosters. I, th I think as well, which I think we'll see in a few weeks. Kid they got from the Panthers last year, Pudu. Mm. Uh, he's obviously the brother of the kid at Cronulla. Oh, Cronulla, yeah, okay. When very, very yesterday. talented guy. Yeah, well, he played 5'8 yesterday. So he's been playing lock the last few weeks. I think he's one of those guys that can't play to around 11 or 12 or whatever that rule is. Mm. Um, so there are there are a number of young guys there that have got ability. It's just, you know, you've obviously got your Trey Mooney's, yeah, Adam Mariota's, these sort Trey of was good yesterday. Yeah. Xavier was good second mm. game back from injury. I still think, I think Savage is a winger, eh? Like, I really do. But... I, like I would be going to like, well, Penrith's already been raided, but I'd be going to all the top tier clubs, finding their 17 to 18 year old half that's on just outside minimum. So he'd be on like 75K a year and taking a risk and going, here's 350K, two year deal and trying to lure him in with money. That's that's probably what I'd be Once doing. Once again though, I think, it, like, I think it's tough when you're trying to get someone that's late twenties, early thirties who started a family to move to Canberra. Me at 19. I, there's not a hope in hell I would have moved down to Canberra. Really? And I, yes. <laughs> no way. I would have, yeah, see, I, well, me coming through, I would have moved anywhere at the time. I mean, mm, I moved yeah, to right. New Zealand. Fair. So when, you, like, when you're in the system and you're so desperate to, to play first grade, you will, you're literally willing to do whatever you, it takes to, to do. But the kid that they're going to try and get, I don't think they're going to be in that situation. Like, for example, let's, like the Panthers... You could have said that about Katoa, about so they lost Katoa, they lost Peru as well. Yep, Sean O'Sullivan. Peru. So I would be going to clubs where it's like, even if you play the best you possibly can play, you're not going to get a crack. Uh, Oluapu got taken from the Broncos, mm. so I'd basically be going to them and going, here's a three three hundred k contract, plus you could be the seven in literally two years. Whereas if you're at the club you're at right now, you've got to wait six years to be. The starting seven for me i think the other tough thing that you're going to face and timmy can probably talk more about it but i'm looking at the raiders right now going ricky short has always been jack whiten's guy jack whiten's willing to leave is ricky going to be the coach in two or three years he's pretty close with ferner the ceo sure it's got to come to an end at some point mm. I, I just that would be a big worry of mine I, 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 I think it does say something about where the raiders are at if jack decides that he wants to go elsewhere. Yeah, I, I, I would. He's <laughs> killing him. Here I am defending Timmy. Yeah, We've won three on the trot and it's just negative. No, I, I think I think Ricky, although, um, you know, he's not perfect like anyone and, and sometimes he says things that I disagree with, I think he's done quite a good job down there at the Raiders to make them basically a top eight side. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see him under any pressure anytime Without soon. Without taking this too far, the uh, the... 
the talent pool you're looking at, we need a spine, gun Scots, gun spine, gun spine player. Gold Coast Titans have got too many spine players to know what to do with. Weaver, Sexton, Jaden Campbell. Yeah. Got to be an opportunity like there to get someone in. Yeah, 100%. I like that. Um, Wellsby would be great. I would love to get Jack Wellsby over. The only problem, only concern with Wellsby is I reckon you'd have to pay him a mozza. And it's just like, you just don't know how good they're going to be until they get there. Like even Sam Tompkins was like one of the greatest mm, yeah. ever in the Super League. And he came to the Warriors and it just didn't seem yeah. to work. Now, I don't know whether that was his fault, Warriors fault, whatever. But I, I do, I would love to see Wellsby. Like if you could get Wellsby over here for like, and I've already had some Super League fans angry at me for saying this, but if you get him here for like five, 600K, I reckon that's a, that's a, a, a worthwhile risk. But like, if he was demanding around the nine to a, nine hundred to a million mark, like compared to like our top tier fullbacks, I just don't know whether it's worth the risk. I mean, it could pay off, um, but I would I would love to see Wellsby in in uh, first grade for sure. I Absolutely. um I haven't watched enough of him. All I know is that he won a Man of Steel last year. Read to that, whatever you will. Brody Croft. Yeah, I'd consider it for sure. For sure, why not? Again, like. It, you probably wouldn't have to pay a mozza to get Brody that's, Croft, that's I don't what I'm think. Saying. And he's also he's willing to move to England, so he'd be willing to move to Canberra. Um, <laughs> oh. Seven year deal. <laughs> wow. Sold to twenty nine. Wow, we. Oh, good on him. I'm happy for him because like he wasn't that great at the Broncos and mm. looked like it was over for him. So there's a lot of options in that in that deal though. He can come back. Oh, he can come back. Yeah, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of NRL clauses and shit. Yeah. Fair enough, Matty. Fair enough. <laughs> 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 uh, now onto the Dolphins. Uh, do we have any Dolphins fans here? No. No, not yet. No. I know I'm not a Raiders supporter, but um, sort of touching on everything that we've just spoken about mm. and Corey Horsburgh and the passion that he showed a couple of years ago and, and the tears and the tears from Ricky and Jack. I think it's such an underappreciated value in rugby league is a player who wants to play for your club. I mm. think you can't get anything more valuable you can get the more talented guy but if you've got someone who just wants to be there and win for your team i think that's invaluable and the passion that ricky showed in that press conference i don't think the especially with i don't know how many great coaches are out there on the market right now and we know ricky can do it he's done it before and he's got canberra close in 2016 and should have won in 2019 you can't let him go. The passion he shows for that club, and he's everything that they need, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I agree, especially with... It just depends what's on the market. Like, if, if, you know, Bellamy or someone come on the market, yeah, maybe you could consider it. But Ricky is, you know, he's almost, like... He's almost done a full cycle of build and rebuild in this time yeah. and always stayed relatively competitive. He's never, he's never really dropped all the way down to the bottom of the table. The wise the supporter gets it. He gets it. Guru doesn't because does he doesn't support a team. I'll give Ricky three years. <laughs> I reckon it'll turn very quickly. Um, now, on to the Dolphins uh, quickly. Uh, like, what is there to say about the Dolphins? I feel like we say it every single week. Like, this, just the standards that have been set there and the blueprint that's been set there for... I, like, they're such a heaven sent in regards to for how many years we've and we've all been guilty of it. We've all been guilty of it. Like, oh, my team doesn't have the roster. My our team it doesn't have the roster, so that's why we're not doing well. And like, Dolphins have just completely disproved that theory. You, you know, yes, everyone now is looking at the benefits of their roster and their experience, but at the end of the day, when you looked at their roster on paper coming into this season, everyone said that it wasn't. A lot of people said it wasn't even NRL standard. And they've proven that there's a lot more to rugby league than it, talent on paper. You know, uh, you know, a team of champions can beat no, a champion team can beat a team of champions. And the Dolphins, although they lost on the weekend, again that gutsy, gutsy effort of just hanging in games no matter what. You know, they've got they're down. A, I think Katoa is going to get better and better for it. I actually think uh, nikarima has been playing at least in attack. He's been playing some great footy. Ewan Aiken has been outstanding. Uh, I don't really think it's much of a negative for the Dolphins. They've had gritty games back to back to back and they continue to show that they're such a Wayne Bennett team that they refuse. They're not going to just give up. You know, they may lose, but they're not going to give up. What do you think, Guru? Dolphins? Yeah, I thought. I think the Raiders were up 10-0 after about five or six minutes and they were running right. So for the Dolphins just to get themselves back in that game, mm. I thought it was incredible. And as you said, good team beats the best third, whatever the hell that saying is. But... <laughs> 
I think what the Dolphins have shown, I've said it a few times this year, is that rugby league is such a simple game. Complete your sets, kick to corners, have good kick chase, do the one percenters, and you can compete in any competition. Mm. Not only are they competing, are they a top eight side? Well, like I, I don't think they'll finish in the eight, but they may finish in the eight. Just whereas... I'm closer to think they'll be in the eight than I have at any other point. Mm. Yeah. Like if they are, is anyone going to be really shocked at this point if they're a top eight side? No. I, I would be. I know you would be, but you'll, you'll die on that hill for a turn. <laughs> if you watch the football that they're playing and what they're doing, when you consider all the guys that they're missing. I mean, Kenny Bromwich played front row on the weekend. Um, and also, just quickly, Guru, the Raiders completed that 90% oh. and the Dolphins still nearly won the game. Incredible. Fullback wasn't a starter in first grade last year. Neither was one of the, neither was either of their wingers. Branko Lee wasn't either. Ewan Aitken was a back rower. Nick Arima wasn't really a first grader. Cartel was playing SG ball. Kenny Bromwich was playing as a back rower. Connolly was playing as a centre. Yeah. Once they get their full team back. Well, I, I don't have my might yet, but I wouldn't be sitting there mind blown if they did make yeah. the eight, for sure. Um, now let's get on to Manly v the Titans. Oh, wow, I wish Tom and Eddie were here. Just to, <laughs> <laughs> um, should have Zoom called them in. Um, what a, this is like, this is the Titans I want to see every week. This is the Titans, the oh. top eight footy kind of Titans. Um, you know, an 80 minute performance. It had, you know, they were aggressive. Their completion rate, it wasn't the greatest, but it was solid. Uh, I thought Fodder Waker continues to go from strength to strength. Obviously, the negatives are uh, Brimo, he's done his hammy. Positives are now we're going to see Jaden Campbell for at least three to four weeks. So it's like a good and a bad thing for the Titans because if he goes on and kills it for the next three to four weeks, you know, the contract offers are going to be huge. Um, Khan Pereira, who I'll be honest, I, I wasn't sure whether he's, no, I wasn't, not that I wasn't sure. I didn't think he was ready for first grade yet. I thought that he just needed maybe an extra six months or a half a season in Q Cup. Just continues to score try after try. It's unbelievable. Serious Alex Johnston vibes. Oh, wow. S speed, great finisher. And I think when you look at a great finisher, you think, you know, oh, they can barnstorm over and get it. Timing is everything. Yeah. Being in the right position, like time you run with the bloke inside, you're throwing the ball. You know, if there's a kick in behind the line, you know that's coming. If they're holding off and you need to be deep, you know it's coming. AKP just gets it right every time. He's yep. like very early AJ vibes. I like that AKP. Did you come up with that one? I'd like to say so, mate, but super coaches abbreviate everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, David Fafita. I think he has had, you know, has he had as flashy a year as, say, like first or second year of Broncos? No. But I'd probably say this year is his best season of footy. I really think that. It's his most complete footy by far and away. Like, he is genuine. Like, if he plays like this, he's only going to get better. He's playing in a side that currently isn't in the eight, even though they're sitting 10th, which is like, to think this Titan side, for the ups and downs that they've had, where sometimes you're sitting there going, oh, this is the worst ever, they're 10th. So they've put themselves in a position to, to stay in that, to fight for the top eight. But I think David Fafita is a lock in the Queensland squad. You had to said that to me four weeks ago. I would have said, you know, he'd be lucky to make the squad. Mm. He's a lock. Yeah, I agree. Um, there was a moment there where he scored that try from dummy half and Chris Randall got to dummy half first. And Fafita went there and they sort of had a tussle and I just thought, Christopher, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Please get out of the way. And thankfully he did, Fafita scored. And I'd love to know, as they were walking back, um, Kieran Foran grabbed him, put his arm around. He said something to him. I'd love to know what he said to him in that moment after he'd done that. Because you know, normally when Fafita scores from dummy half, you go, "Okay, mad. He's had three runs. He's done that. That's amazing." But in this game, he'd had his 12, 15 runs. He'd made his forty tackles. He's doing all the stuff that he wasn't doing. But then I still love that he's got it in him to go. My team needs something right now. I need to get to dummy yeah. half. Well, it's it's like what we always say: those moments when you do the tough stuff and you just do your, your carries, you get through your fifteen to twenty carries. Those moments present themselves. Whereas I feel like, you know, in yesteryear, he would look, he would almost force the moment and it would, it would throw the team out of whack. Whereas because he's doing all the right things, they just, they appear and he takes them. He takes them every single time. 19 carries, 30 tackles. So Unreal. good. Is that not an underrated tactic that should maybe utilised more with the best, most damaging forwards in the game and there's a handful of them and Dave Feed is probably the top of it just go yourself from dummy half. They know it's coming. Yeah. And like they'll often like, let's say it's a short side and or open side, whatever. 
and someone like Fafita will sit down, they'll run that half-hearted block play just mm. to hold up a bit of a number. Just be like, no, if there's a half-quick play, or just go to dummy half. Just try. They know it's coming, yeah. but you can't stop him because he's a beast. Especially if you can drop that play the ball on a half-back or a 5 8 yeah. get them a first marker mm. and then go at it. Because it's, it's, it's a very reactive thing where there's sort of no one there, there's a bit of quick play ball, and they just jump in. Mm. Make it more of a play to be like, if there's a slightly quick play ball and you're around there, push the hooker out of the way and go. Yeah. No, I agreed. I also just want to give a, you know, Holbrook, he's been getting pizzled in the media, especially after last week. Should he keep his job? But I think that the Titans deserve massive raps for two things. The recruitment of Chris Randall, who the Knights would kill for right now. I can't believe they let him go, honestly. Like, that's such a <laughs> poor decision. I think he's been outstanding. And Tanner Boyd. Tanner Boyd, for me, has been Titans' most underrated player this year. I think he's just getting better and better. Is he a showstopper or a world beater yet? No. But he's just getting more confident, getting the boys around the park. You know, they're sitting, I think it's 10th at the moment. And I think, so I'm just looking at their points. So they're sitting 10th, basically equal points point with Panthers right now, the, the Titans are, who are sitting 6th. Um, if you had said to me foreign would be having a, a relatively quiet year, even games that I would say are poor by foreign standard, and the Titans are still equal, you know, sitting equal on that eighth, you'd, you, I just wouldn't believe you. I wouldn't believe you. And that, that revolves a lot around Tanner. So massive wrap. We've got a Titans fan back there. Any questions? Yeah, any questions? Uh, yeah, not so much a question, but... Uh, last week, well, actually, sort of is a question. Last yeah. week's game, uh, for me, the fact that we were leading by such a big margin, yeah. there's so many comments in line, and I felt the same. I turned to my partner at halftime. I was like, if someone can lose it from here, it's going to be us. We've done it 22 nil, 24 nil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I us to lose this. Yeah. It's, it, the weird thing for, like, the fact that we were losing 2 nil and then Manly had all the dominant sort of possession in the first half, it's bizarre, and maybe I'm making this up, but it, I, f I feel more comfortable in those scenarios with the Titans because we're such a flashy attacking team that when we have to grind and play mature footy, and Fafita's doing that now, and Brian Kelly made all the right reads on the weekend, it seems like we're if we're slightly behind and under pressure, we play more maturely than when we get ahead. What do you think that comes down to? Is it a young squad? Like, we've got foreign, but he, he didn't play that well last week either. Mm. It's just such a... It felt like such an immature attitude or something last week and we've done it for the last three years one game every year we seem to lose by a big margin after having that lead yeah it's like a it's like a double-edged sword for having good attack because you go when you come out you score four tries you go oh yeah boys here we go we're on here and then everyone forgets about the nitty-gritty it's almost similar to the broncos a bit at the moment where like you, you want them playing a grindy style rather than going out and scoring a bunch of points because then they can come in and um and get dominated in the second half. So it it's just a mindset thing that the Titans have been missing for the last few years. And I think on the weekend that they, they nailed it. Like if you're the Titans, you almost want to go in half time like six all or, or ten to six losing. Cause at the very least you know that they're not gonna think that they've got the game in the bag when they don't. Um, so yeah, it is it is a bizarre thing where like you you're almost wishing your team doesn't score first, because then they get reality checked into grinding the tough stuff because they can do it they can do it and they were outstanding on the weekend i thought they were absolutely outstanding um other titans fan somewhere over there just pass them on i've got a couple of questions for you um i'm going to disagree with you on tanner boyd to a point okay i'm a big tanner boyd fan i'm a big toby sexton fan mm. i think the biggest difference between their two games last night tanner's kicking was unbelievable he hit the mark. He hit that five-meter in mark from the 40-meter out nearly every time he kicked. Yep. Against the Dolphins, how? why would you keep kicking to Hammer every single time? He's the quickest bloke on the field. All he's got to do is get on an angle to beat a tired forward. That was the starting point of their sets. Mm. Last week, it blew up our second half. Mm. Outs but you put Sexy in against the Dragons – Finds turf, makes all the big fellas turn around. They've got to get back quicker. I'm a big fan of finding the turf with a kick. That's the only thing I think that lets Tanner down. Outside of that, he's been outstanding. Foz has been the best thing for him. 
the big question is going to be is who do you let go? Do you let go Sexton? Do you let go of Boyd? Yeah. Like who who do you let go long term? Because we've got an Australian schoolboy who was named. I think he was named on the extended bench this week. Tommy Weaver. Tommy Weaver. You've got to make a call there. Yeah, we've got a heap of depth in the spine, but someone's got to go. Who's it going to be? Yeah, look, I'd I'd agree with you in regards to you know Tanner Boyd's not the complete product yet for sure. Like you know, kicking game every now and then is not perfect, but. I would always rather pick defence first. And I think defensively he's a substantially better defender than Sexton like right now. Even on the weekend, if you look at his stats, 23 tackles, zero misses. Uh, so I, I agree with you that like there could be an argument made that maybe Sexton attacking-wise has a few more strengths for his bow, maybe. And he might, might have proven that with the Dragons when he scored the match winner. But I just think the problem with the Titans right now, it's just if they can sort their defence out, you know, their attack is sweet. Like, they can score points. 100%. I, after the match last night, we missed 22 tackles. Mm. I think 14 or 15 of those come through the middle. Mm. Like, yeah. That's too much. Yes, we held a slow manly side down that didn't have turbo. Yes, our attitude was better in defence. Very pessimistic here, but we played like that against Melbourne, the Chooks, the Rabbits. The boys are going to have a field day up the middle and it all stops as soon as Moe and Tino both come off of the field at the same time. Mm. I said it to Timmy at the start. I said the biggest difference was yesterday, Moe and Tino, one of them was always on the field. Mm. And you said what, Moe played 70 minutes or something? It's a lot. 71, 71 minutes. <sighs> Moe for a waker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't, can't do that every kill the And Tino, Tino, 61 minutes. That's where our dominance comes with the forward pack. And I've been David Fafita's biggest critic since we signed him. Mm. He didn't take the tough carries for the last two years. Now he's one of the first forwards inside that 10 to 15 metre like range. He puts his hand up, he'll take a tough carry. And then more often than not, he's got the ball in his hands on the fourth tackle again. Like mm. He's been by far our best player this year and... It's the first time I've said in a few years that he's worth the money we're paying him. Mm. Outside yeah. of that, he would have been worth half. Yeah. No, no, mate, I, I agree with everything you said. I, I think we said at the start of the year, the one thing that we would sign if we were going to recruit for the Titans would be another front rower to take some... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, t t Timmy and I man, spoke about it before. Yeah, we got Bo Firma out for the year. Mm. We're still going to be short and edge or a lock. Outside of that, mm. we're a pretty complete side if we want to turn up for 80 minutes. I, I still reckon Aaron Clark could be develop into a, a starting 13. I, th I think at the moment he's good at impact, uh, but if he cleans up a few parts of his game, that maybe he could be a 13. Um, I just reckon another front row would be really good for you because, as you said, when you lose Tino and Maui, like it's, it's just like night and day. Yeah, so if you could somehow go onto the market and get a big fella in the middle there to, to, to pick up a bit of that slack. But, you know, really disappointing a couple of weeks ago or last week or whatever it was to lose the lead you had. But as I said, you're sitting 10th, same amount of wins as Penrith. Like, I think that, relatively speaking, even though it hasn't been pretty, I think that's pretty good for the Titans. I really do. And that's not to be, you know, uh, it's not like the bigotry of low expectations. It's like... This is a roster with a new spine. You've lost Verrells, who was your like a, essentially a marquee signing just below foreign. Foreign. Randall's done a job. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with the Titans are at right now. Yeah, I, I've been impressed with them. I think I think both Thermal was a huge loss. I think Matt, I think people outside of the Titans probably don't realise yeah. how much of a big loss that was. Um, it might actually be the biggest blessing in disguise because you moved for feeder over there. And that's unlocked him outside Foz out there. But you've also, you know, you've obviously lost your hooker. As can be said, you've gone through periods without having Foz, without having Brimo. You're going to go through another one of those now. I, I do think, and I was, you know, everyone was very high on the Titans last year, and I couldn't make any sense of why. And they really battled. But I think this year you're learning a lot of lessons that are really going to set you up for the future. Yep. Geez, the uh, sorry to cut you off quickly, but Brimo's injury history must be starting to get to you. Like Tommy Turbo injury, this injury that gets all the talk, and I know he's not the superstar that Turbo is, but as good as Brimo is, he's getting injured a lot. Yeah. 
You lost your Jack White. <laughs> what, what, what do you want me to say? Well, you so, lost Jack White. Yeah, no, I was going <laughs> to. No, not yet, we haven't. Uh, but I was going to say, but I mean, you've got Jaden Campbell to step in. Like, hardly a problem, but yeah, far out. Like, JC wasn't there. Mm. I'd be shaking in my boots because last year, Brumo was out, JC was out. We had Jermaine Asako at the back. That was nothing. We had no attack. The boys just went, yeah, we'll go sideways. Nah, we'll go back the other way. We'll go back the other way. Mm. Uh, we'll kick. But there, there was nothing there. Yeah. But the other thing I agree with you, Kempi, is buzz of a, of a morning has been massive on taking the absolute mickey out of Holbrook, saying he's the biggest coach under pressure. Mate, he's had injuries every week to quality players. Apart from last week, I haven't been upset at a single loss we've had this year. I think the boys are turned up. Mm. Well, I just and I just think that like, you know, a lot of coaches aren't given enough time to build something. You got Tino, one of the youngest captains in the comp. Maui is young. Brimo is still only twenty five. Like the Titans is a young squad. So, um, I, yeah, I've, I've been satisfied. Aside from that one, you know, shocking second half, I've been satisfied with the Titans. Let's get to Manly now. Uh, we've got just a couple of Manly, couple fans. Of Manly fans. Does that say minus 13 plus or 13 plus? <laughs> 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 um, now, on a Manly. Uh, so, oh, there's a few things going on at Manly. So, Reece, today a report came out that Schuster was in a bit of a, a brouhaha with one of his teammates. Then there's rumours that Flanagan may be potentially signing with the club. Uh, Seabold refused to speculate, but he did say they have got one spot left in the top 30. I think it's really interesting, the timing of all of this. Um, the Schuster, oh, he's just got a cork, then it turns into a strain. Now there's a bust up at training. We, we might be signing Flanagan. Like, if I'm a betting man, I think there's a possibility that Schuster may not be at this club in 2024. Quite possibly. And then you add in, I thought DCE's comments <laughs> hit home. If I'm sure stuff. And he doesn't, he is smart with, like, as in, he doesn't mince he words. He is the politician. Yeah. I've never heard him do that. Or, and I mean that in a nicest way. But for him, for him to say that in the way he did, there was something in that, for mm. sure. So I, I, and then there's word that Tigers maybe trying to have a, a crack for Schuster. If he's on Bitcoin, <laughs> <laughs> look. <laughs> Might be a match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's... So, Seabold, when he was at the Broncos, he actually lost Fafita, and Fafita went to the Titans. And, you know, some would say that uh, that was a good thing in regards to, you know, to, Fafita didn't go and fulfill his potential at the $1.2 million mark or whatever. But at the same time, when Fafita was at the Broncos, he was absolutely killing it. And so now we've got another young player that, I don't know, like... Schuster has had, I guess, not not issues, but consistency issues uh, pre Seabold. So I'm not blaming it solely on Seabold, but I do think that this is one of the uh, challenges a young coach faces, and he may be making the decision of, look, as this is a young guy that's on a big contract that I didn't agree to. As in, I don't, I'm pretty sure Seabold wasn't the coach when it's mm. signed. What do you boys reckon? Do you reckon Schuster's going to be at the club next year? Because it's look, it's everything is like, for example, a first grade. Actually, sorry, I'll, I'll throw it to you guys. A first grade player and he didn't go away and condition his body mid season. I can't wait to get the Manly fans' thoughts on Schuster. Yeah, that, well, what that is that question? And, yeah. and, and obviously, keep it respectful. I know you will, but yeah. can I just before Ella does talk, can you stand up and show us your tattoo, please? <laughs> oh no, who's it? <laughs> We've got Manly 13 plus. Fair play. Fair play. Fair play. Fair play. None from two after getting that tattoo two weeks ago. So, uh, <laughs> even though we did win the week before, but it wasn't 13 plus. Um, yeah, obviously, Schuster, I, I wanted nothing more than for him to excel at six this year and stay healthy. Obviously, he's been in our system since he's so young. Um, and yeah, it's been super disappointing. I think the whole fan base is pretty split on what they want, whether mm. it's a move to the second row, Locke's been thrown up, whether they want to get rid of him completely. Um, I think it's definitely part of it is a attitude issue with him. I think, I mean, I don't want to like just speculate for him or whatever. Um, 
But I think just getting so much hype as a young kid mm. kind of probably didn't help his development. Um, so I'm hoping this month off and obviously the support and comments from the first graders and all of that um, will help. But, yeah, it's it's a bit of an issue because we don't have really a backup six. Latu Fainu's probably next in line, but he's 17 at the moment. Like, he has he debuted in reserve grade last week. Um, it's like he's there, but I'd even be considering – Contacting Cade Cust again. There's a part in um, his right. contract in the Super League. Cade Cust was great. Yeah. Cade Cust is a weapon. Doesn't he have a clause that he can only return to Manly yeah, while well on current contract? If it's like only return to Manly, but like we have to be first like to offer him or like first yeah. have yeah. conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know if that's an option. Like, I mean, I'm still hoping that after, I'm a big optimist. So I'm hoping that he will, after this time off, can get back into form. But yeah, I think we definitely have to start looking at other options. It's just the, the the Schuster one is like it's one of those really hard. If he was ten percent less potential than what he has right now, the decision would be quite easy. But because he genuinely could, he could literally be anything, Gurino. He could be. He could literally be anything. He used to be the fan club, but there could be anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's such a tough call because he is so so good that it, him and his potential could lead a team to a premiership like that's how much potential i think he has and some people might think that's crazy or whatever but there is no half on the market there's no half currently playing that has half the attributes that he has like that's how skillful he is big strong can, he's so strong that he can be one of the best second rollers in the comp he's so his hand skills are so good he could be a seven he's got great footwork he, like there is nothing that he doesn't have when it comes to footballing ability so it's hard to say, like, is it just purely his attitude that is a problem? Does he have personal personal issues off the field? Sometimes it really is like, you know, maybe family members have passed away or, you know. I was going to um, mention Keith Titmus, his best friend at training. Some people are speculating that um, he it, he could still be kind of going through that because it's sure. hard for, like, a young kid to mm. see that happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, <laughs> basically yeah. best mates as well. He's, they were literally best mates. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you just don't don't know yeah and like that's a it's not that it's not a like of course it's not a small event but like that's going to rattle you for years and years so like that could be something that he just needs to slowly work through that he's, he's struggling with still um so it is such a tough call i think that everyone agrees though we all want him just playing the best footy that he can possibly play because he is even when he first came back, like so, like that little chip that he did for Tommy to come and score, or he could have scored, like, it was amazing. But it does seem like the that he's struggling to meet the standards that probably DCE and that are setting at the moment. Uh, what do you reckon, mate? Do you with, with the Schuster situation? Do you think that stick with him, or what do you reckon? Like. Uh, just to reinstate what she said, it is an attitude thing in a way. Like I look at the Jared Croker situation. He got dropped for like, what, a year? Played reserve grade, fought his way back into the side. Mm. So you've got to think in that way, like you've got to work hard to get your position. He's a great player, got all these attributes to his game. But if you don't have effort, then can you really like be a first grader? Mm. Mm. That's what a lot of like them talk about. You've got to have all the effort plays, which I think he, he does lack mm. a lot of that stuff. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, so I guess if you say the fan base is split, would you rather Manly go, okay, he's on a decent contract, let's try and allow him to go somewhere else and we bring in, you know, we bring in Cooper Johns and keep Kyle Flanagan and then develop someone else or uh, Kaya Weeks? Because I think he's once in a generation talent at this point. Yeah. Like the stuff he was doing two years ago Crazy. was out of this world. Yeah. So you've got to persist, but he's just, he's got to get his effort play. He's got to get his attitude right. And once mm. all that, that's ticked off, it could be the next, next big thing. Yeah. Would you would you also persist? Uh, yes, for this season, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, what I was saying about like Kate Cust is just like a what if because yeah. we really don't have a Premiership winning six that's like mm. ready to go next year if it doesn't work out or if we do have to move Shuey to the second row again. Mm. Yeah, I was just going to touch on. Um, I think sitting out for Shuey and watching the boys struggle would also be tough. Like. In that recent Tigers game in the first 10 minutes, you could see our attack, it just looks so fluid across the whole field. And when Shuey re-injured that quad injury, you could sort of see it at the game. It was a obstruction. He slowed down really quick. And from then on, he was dragging his left leg. 
the whole game. Mm. Shui, like the Fuldens took a big uh, shot at him when he was 14, I think. I know Scott recently left the club. I don't know if that's playing a sort of part in the drama at the club. Yeah. Um, but I think he's such a good player and mm. we've just got to stick with him. And I hope he, uh, he prevails because he truly is really good. Yeah, I, I agree. I, if, if it was my, if I'm Seabol, I'm almost using it as this like as a personal challenge to try and empathise with Schuster and, and see where he's coming from and just try to get the best out of him. Um, but I also think that you don't want to stay down that path for too long because it can totally ruin your salary cap. Because if you, if you, it's a time thing as well. Every year that you keep putting energy into someone is a year that you could be getting someone else. I personally would persist with, persist with him for this season. What would you got? What do, what do you guys reckon about the shoe situation? Yeah, definitely persist with him this season. Uh, but I, I've always thought his body, his skill set, everything, he'd be a perfect 13. The more I see him, the more I worry. If, and I think you might have said at the start of the season, if he's cut out to play 13, I probably don't think at the moment he is realistically. Um, so I think either that edge spot or at 5'8". I'd keep going with him at 5'8". I think that's what's just so frustrating about Josh. As you said, if he was 10% less skilled, fine. Yeah. You're not performing. It is what it is. But I think that that just, you know, I mentioned before DCE's comments. I think DCE's comments speak to just the skill set of this guy. The DCE knows it's worthwhile him coming out to say that, mm. to try and get him a set because he knows this is a guy he could be a comp with in the next two or three years. Yeah. He knows it. Yeah. A DCE, Croker, Tommy, Schuster, Spine absolutely can win the comp. You look at like every, every premiership winning side has young guys that are so undervalued it's not funny and placed so far above well, their age DCE. Back at DCE and yeah. Fozzie exactly you look at South Sydney your Dill Walkers your AJs Schuster could be that guy mm. well and truly you look at Jack Bird for Cronulla these sort of guys every team's got him and I think DCE is well and truly aware that he could be one of them mm. what do you reckon Timmy? Yeah, I mean, absolutely persist with him for at least this year. Not at least this year. Like, I'd give him the season to, to turn things around a little bit. And he has been impacted by injury. That's the reality of it. At the end of the day, he's 21 years old, which yeah. is pretty ridiculous. He turns 22 <coughs> in five days' time, mm. 5th of May. Um, so, look, I'd be sticking with him. And I touched on it on last week's show, so I don't want to flog a dead horse too much. But I think he should take a leaf out of Dave Fafita's book this season. And then yeah. I just, we mentioned all the great things that Dave Feed has done this year where we questioned attitude and his commitment to games a little bit at times and he's just blown expectations out of the water in 2023. Mm. I think Schuster just needs to simplify things a little bit. Yeah. I know he's a 5'8 now and it's a creative position and, and I get that, but he's got DCE running the show. He calls the shots. He makes life for a 5'8 pretty easy, I think. Mm. Schuster, wrap, um, roll up the sleeves, take some tough carries, you don't need to be the flashy, do everything kind of 5'8", pull out these miracle plays. Mm. Slow it down, the, the attacking stuff will come. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree in regards to like, if I'm Schuster, just think run first. Just mm. run first. And I, yeah, I like, r- run first, pass run first. second. I'd Love always that. be thinking that. That's simple. Um, and, and to be clear as well, like the reason why, like Manly is still sitting fifth, you know, and, and he's played what, three games this year? Mm. So like if you're disappointed with the way the Manly are going this year, a, they're fifth. Don't be disappointed. That's good. Uh, but if you are, it's absolutely not Schuster's fault. It, I think it's more just because he is so talented that he does steal the headlines. But um, in regards to Manly, look, disappointing. Really, really disappointing loss. But they're sitting fifth. They're in a good position right now. Currently on 11 points. Um, Roos is on 12 points and Broncos on 14 points. So it's they've put themselves in a position where, you know, they might drop a game here or there, but they're pretty solidly in the eight right now, which is um, which is good, which is good. Now, on to Roosters, defeat the Warriors. Panthers, um, Tigers. Sorry, my bad, my bad, <laughs> my bad. I'll take this tip away from him. Yeah, we're square. You know what, that isn't, that isn't my bad. That is Matty's bad, because it's not here. How dare you, sir? I'm like uh, Will Farrell from Anchorman. I only read <laughs> what is fucking yeah. in front of me. Um, Tigers defeat the Panthers. What a win. You know, like the good thing is, yeah, bloody oh, bloody oh, bloody oh. They get off, they get off the duck egg. Um, what a fantastic win for the Tigers. Now, yeah, the, oh, it's one of those games where if you looked at the stats last week and you looked at the forward pack, the what they did, they won the meterage, they won pretty much everything. They just couldn't execute. 
you know, Luke Brooks, yeah, I think he hit two 40-20s. He was way more involved in the game. Api Corosau obviously had a fantastic game as well. But I just thought it was a really, really gritty victory by the Tigers and something that they can build off that. They can be like, they haven't been that far off for the last month or so. So it's not like the season's just completely over for them. You know, they, it's not a situation where they go, oh, well, we've had such a poor start to the year. It's all over for us. They can build into a situation where, okay, maybe they may not make the eighth this year, but those combinations that are all new this season, I think Buller was really good at last cool. night. Fantastic. Um, you know, Coruscant, he's got an extra game under his belt. Then you've got, um, you know, they're missing, like Wakeham, it's only his, what, third game, second game with Brooks in the halves, I think. So, like, there's things to build on here. I think it's a, a really good win. Like, did the Panthers play their best game of footy? No, but that doesn't matter. The Tigers still got the job done. I thought it was a great win. Win's a win. Enjoy it. As ugly as it was, gives a fuck how they come at the moment. If they come, great. And I don't think it's going to turn your season around miraculously or anything, but I think you can start to put some pride in that jersey, at least. Conditions, injuries, whatever. You came up against the Penrith Panthers side, who is one of the best in the modern era, in my opinion. You went toe-to-toe with them. You played better wet weather footy. The conditions were wet weather footy. You outplayed a minute, so credit to you. Enjoy it. I hope there's more. 90% completion rate. Confident. Yeah, 90%. In, in, that, in those conditions, that's unbelievable. That's fantastic. Like yeah. It shows you that there's a reaction there. There's a reaction to... You know, the boys that they're, they're listening to the coaching staff, they're talking to each other, it matters. They, they actually care, you know? And just the emotion you saw after from Appy, John Bateman, which was the one that stood out for me. Mm. Hopefully it can start to turn the tide for you. Yeah. I know these two. Are there any other Tigers fans in here? Three of you? Four of you? I tell you God, what. you deserve it. Love those Tigers jerseys, by yeah. the way, just quietly. Our main ones. Um, you've got a microphone there? Yeah. yeah. What's your question, brother? Um... The biggest thing for me was our effort plays. Mm. Like, we wouldn't be sitting last if we didn't give away those dumb penalties, but it was our kick chase and our repeat sets and completing at 90%, which was like night and day from the start of the year. I think it was very tough losing Dewey in that Parramatta game, but you can see from the bye and then the Manly game, we really built into something and now Look, we have the Dragons next week in Magic Ground. I'm not calling it early, but great game to build into, like, a string of wins. For sure. Mate, no, I, I totally agree. And, and the good thing, not the good thing, devastated for Dewey, but he's so dominant that sometimes maybe Brooks was a bit intimidated to, to, to overcall him and, and say, like, this is my team. Because Dewey is such a competitor that he's always on the ball. He always wants to attack, which is part of why Dewey is such a good player but maybe the the silver lining in such a bad situation with Dewey is maybe Brooksy now like for sure if he can't overcall Wakeham who is a you know he's a fringe player that you know he's doing his job then he can't overcall anyone so it, the positive from it is is you go Brooks there's no one else bro we have we have literally no one else we need you to run the show and I think it's the first time <coughs> in quite a while where I've genuinely watched the Tigers and said this is Brooks's team. This is Brooksy's team. Like I, I mentioned to you, Timmy, a, a few weeks ago, I was like, why is Adam Dewey doing all the kicking? Like, he's not a kicker of the footy. Like, he might do some decent bombs, but Brooksy is, he's a good, a decent kicker of the ball. Um, so I think you're right in regards to like, yes, it sucks doing, losing Dewey, but you know, maybe there's a world where it just really helps Brooks go, I am the guy now. It's, it's fallen on my shoulders. Um, it was the first time like, uh, the other night in a while that I thought Luke Brooks wasn't second-guessing himself. Mm. First time I've seen him feel confident in the role that he's playing. I don't know if it was the weather that simplified everything, but I'd be saying to Brooksy, what you did the other night is all you have to do. Yeah. Just be involved. All you have to do. Just be involved, touches. kick well. That's like, it. Two 40-20s in a game, like yeah. in wet weather. Like That's when you, That's what I guess would be so frustrating for Tigers fans is like I know Brooksy gets absolutely smashed all the time. And, and to be fair, like – outside of the stupidly negative comments that are attacking him as a person it's it's fair like he's on a big contract and he hasn't delivered for quite quite amount of, like a substantial amount of time but then you see games like this and you go this kid's got a bunch of talent like you know it's it's there it just needs to be brought out uh, did you have any questions mate at all mm.
Yeah. Mm. I look. I think in a team that had a good structured seven, I'd have him as a six. But I just think at the tie is just you're desperate for a guy with experience that can lead a team around, and you know he's probably the man to do it. Um, if you could find, if you could, the funny thing is, is like you had the seven. It was his name's Jackson Hastings, <laughs> <laughs> and you said, "Nah, don't want none of that." He's a yeah, yeah, he's a thirteen. <laughs> My <laughs> God, my God. Uh, so, like, I agree with Guru in the sense of, like, look, does it mean they're going to turn their season around and go out and tail every team up? Like, no, I don't think that. But I also agree with you. Dragons, when you look at the two teams on paper, go through player for player, especially in the forward pack, there's an argument to say outside of maybe Benny Hunt that the Tigers have a better forward pack than, you know, and even some of their outside backs could eat, like compare to the outside backs of the Dragons. So it's it's a winnable game. Um, got a Tigers fan there. What do you? I love that you've all got this, the same old school jerseys. <laughs> Fucking mad. Great jersey. Yeah, a lot of Bow Main getting about. Just quietly. Just quietly. So the, we, the west side of things. Just quietly. Uh, bloke jerseys. Bloke jerseys available on bloke dot shop. Just quietly. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, Do you think this changes our season at all? Because we did the same thing last season with the Eels and the Souths. And then we just went straight down shit road again. Mm. And <laughs> <laughs> right, is well, that anywhere? Is that anywhere near Shit Creek? Or <laughs> <laughs> we've been to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you got same place, uh, Raiders ring without Jackie White. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell! I thought I thought the Sunday night pop was going to be a thing of beauty. We had a few beers, had a bit of a laugh. Bloody hell. <laughs> oh, mate, I love the Raiders. I love the Raiders. I'm joking. I'm joking. It scares me if Brooks starts playing like this consistently mm. that we will re-sign him and he will go straight back. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I, I, I've loved him. He gives his heart and soul, but Tigers and his team. Yeah. He needs to move on. And if Schuster wants to come, you guys can have Brooks. A good old switchy roo. <laughs> he can try out his six, but I just don't see how it changes anything. Yeah, like, look, I think the difference though between this year and last year is Appy Corris out at nine. I think that, you know, that does, it's a, hu it's a big difference. And Appy Cor if you don't have Appy Cor Corris out last night, you just probably don't win. And I think that, like, eventually the, team, the forward pack and the team around him are going to start to click into gear around Appy and, and really get the benefit. Because what did you see Appy's first few games? I mean... What about Appy being brought off the bench at the Tigers? <laughs> and no one was there. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas as they play more footy together, they'll be there and they'll, they'll understand that this is the kind of player Appy is. So, um, I, as I said, do I think it's going to completely change everything at the Tigers? No. But you have a way better roster than you did last year. You got... Johnny Bateman, Papali'i, <coughs> Coruscant, um, you know, and Buller, I think he, he may be what you need at the back there. He's only been two games, but he's energetic. He's a natural fullback. He's quite a good, uh, strong ball runner. Uh, yeah, I, I, like, it's just you're not in the same position as you were last year because your roster is better. That's, that's what I think. Even though I still don't think he's going to make the eight or, or, or anything like that, but... The more games Happy Corsair can lead the team around, the more used to you guys are. And who knows? Alex Twelve could get over the over hey, the stripe. Over the stripe. Oh. <coughs> hey? Yeah, sorry, sorry. One of the one of the goats. One of the goats. How was, uh, so on Buller, who was outstanding, like first things first, it's one game, we don't get oh sorry, Tigers fans, you don't get too excited, but enjoy every bit of this because so well deserved, so excited for you all. Bullard was outstanding. Like the pass he threw and the confidence he had to throw in those conditions in his second game in the NRL against the dual defending premiers, the pass for Noffa, Noffa's 100th try in the NRL. So that was a bit of a full circle moment after a tumultuous time in his career, Noffa. I love that. The tackle he made on Nathan Cleary was bloody outstanding. Like, I'm still trying about how he didn't score a try from yeah. that. And Bullard just going whack, pops out. What a moment that was. And the other one I want to touch on was. I know it was, it was like tough conditions to really assess players, but Stafford Toa, like he, I feel like yeah. he's an NRL player, isn't he? 
Yeah. He's done so much good in, in a short amount of time. He just I'd, needs I'd time in a position, you yeah. know, time to build. Because um, he's just got, like, he is, <coughs> if you actually go through his highlights, even when he was at the Knights, he's had moments where he's skinned some of the best outside backs in the game. He just needs consistent rugby league in first grade. Yeah. Another bloke I want to shout out, though, David Clemmer was huge last night he was huge 23 runs 215 meters 86 post contact 25 tackles zero misses two offloads that's against the premiership winning forward pack and look yeah does the the uh did the weather suit his style of play for sure like is he the a quick play of the ball kind of guy no but i just don't think he gets um enough appreciation for the <coughs> thing, consistent amount of meterage he can get as i said is he going to get you a quick play of the ball all the time no he's not but sometimes you just need meterage um i think stefano is slowly progressing this season as well uh because he's a guy that if the tigers are going to ever make the eight um over the next you know two or three years stefano's got to be he, he's basically got to do what Payne is doing at the broncos now obviously he's not on Payne's level but Payne is that front rower that came out of no not nowhere at the broncos but let our pack from bottom of the table into the top eight hopefully this year and I think Stefano's got to have like a similar role at the Tigers um, I loved his chase down last week of Tom Trevojevic I just thought that was such a good example of a young fella that if he keeps doing efforts like that it'll come like those big games they will come so yeah Tigers fans obviously it's not like a grand final win but just enjoy it like fuck fucking don't let anyone don't let anyone fucking bring you down with it because fuck it <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe, and and also I want to give a shout out to me, boy. One, literally one of my favourite players, Alex. Twelve, fifty-five minutes off the bench, sixteen runs, one hundred and seventy-three metres, sixty-seven post contact, thirty-six tackles. And how many tackles did he miss, Timmy? I'm gonna go zero. Fucking mate. big zero. <laughs> That's all he does. It miss tackles. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic victory for the Tigers. Well done. Do we have any Panthers fans in here? Yeah, yep, we do. Panthers fan and Panthers Mate, is it um, panic stations? Is, the, is, it, is a dynasty over? What, what's happening? <laughs> Told my mates not even to talk to me for like two weeks. So I was... <laughs> How does it feel to finally, yeah, lose a game? Oh, th this season's been odd, I reckon. It's like we're four wins, four losses. Mm. I just think our attack's been shocking. Like, we had those two games against, like, Manly and um, the Raiders where we attacked really well. Yeah. But other than that, like, we're losing, we're losing, like, close games this year. Like, whereas, like, the last couple of years, like, I think, especially with the loss of, like, Appy and Kicks and that, like, they were really, like, big moment players. Mm. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really difficult for me to put into words, like, and assess it because it's, yeah, I, it's sort of, it's early days still, like, there's a lot of season left, but, um, yeah, I definitely don't think at the moment we should be premiership favourites. Do you think that they've been too conservative with Sonny Luke and they should have just put him in straight away to get as much runs on the board or no? <sighs> He's not still got 51 minutes on the weekend. There's not really that large enough of a sample size yet yeah. like he's you know he's been in and out of games like playing 20 minutes here and then another game he'll play like 40 minutes but um i don't know it's it's the hooking the hooking position is really difficult for us this year yeah so the only reason why i say two conservatives is like the more time he has on the field playing with luai and cleary the more they're going to understand each other and we see like these flashes of <clears throat> brilliance from sonny luke but we also still still see that kind of cluggy like you know a stop start kind of attack because they're not used to each other playing I think definitely time on the field's big yeah. for him because yeah. like you can see and i know you guys have touched on it before like fifth tackle options and stuff like that when you know appy would know you know ball to nathan ball to jerome we're doing this set play yeah i think sonny's just not quite used to that yet i think yeah. he just needs more time um I'd be interested to see like probably halfway through this year how he's tracking mm. um just with more time on the field and you know, just getting, uh, well, yeah, like a lot more time with Nathan Jerome. But, mm. um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to assess at the moment. Would you select, are you in New South Mosseron? Would you select Luai or, or Hines at six? Lies. Okay. I don't think Luai's been in form this year. I don't yeah. think he's been playing bad, but he's just not doing anything to, I think, warrant selection. Mm. I think Hines is just, like, <laughs> I think everyone here can attest to how well he's playing. Yeah, yeah. 
Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, would you go Luai or Hines, New South Wales? I have been um, chatting with a couple of people and I would put Luai in for the first game and I would have Nero on the bench and it may be <laughs> a controversial thing, but I just think that it's something that you we have done so many times is just constantly switching out players all the time quickly doing it and i just think that you know it's the first game you can't like the second game is always the determiner mm. like you might as well go for something you know and if even if you just plays like like you switch out early and you switch out nico that's always that opportunity i think that mm. you should start the way because you, you get that confidence mm. that you know that you've ha you've used these players before but I just like, you know, I love Nico and I think he's been playing amazingly. I, and I do agree that Luai has been having not the best of the season. But I just think that you try and just keep up with consistency. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a tough call. It's because, you know, that, that is, you're right, the knock on New South Wales is, is like the chopping and changing. As I said, if you had asked me last week, I would have said you start Luai just because he's been there, he's done it. And yes, he didn't win last year, but he was a part of the record win, mm. I think, the year before. But at this, but after watching Hines on the weekend, it's just like, just too, just too yeah, good. Yeah, I don't think it is. Yeah. He's too hot. He's too hot. I, I don't think it is that tough a call. I think you just have to get Nico in there. And it's, it's not even a huge criticism on, on Luai because he could play this year and do fine and we very well may win this series. But Nico Hines is, like, arguably the best half in the comp in, on form at the moment, not overall. Yeah. He's unbelievable. You he, could literally – there's an argument that he's in better form than Cleary right now. I think he is in better form then. Mm. It's like we've had this conversation a yeah. few times last year. He's not a better player, but mm. in, on current form yeah. – and like reigning Dalian medalist, he's been exceptional on return this year. I just think it's madness if you don't pick him at five eight. Look, as a Queenslander, are you sitting there going, "Do you want Jerome Luai coming at your Nico Hines?" Well, the only thing I would say with Hines, and, and it may not translate, and I would love to see the stats on it. Maddie, could you get the stats on errors in Origin? You can't make errors, and mm. so I just wonder whether Hines, even though it's okay in clubland to make three errors and then. Bro, in, in Origin, it's almost like a... Uh, that's being super pessimistic about Hines, whereas like Luai doesn't tend to make as many errors yeah, as um, Hines. Again, that's, I'm being super pessimistic. And here. I think one thing in Nico's favour there, like, I would be surprised if there was a player in the NRL outside of a hooker who has more touches per game mm, than Nico does. That's a good point. In attacking situations, he goes from side to side to side. Yeah, that's a good point. He kicks, he does everything. Errors are going to happen. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. What have we got there, Matty? Uh, Luai's made one more error, but Hines missed the first four weeks. So Hines is making about two a game, yep. whereas Luai's making about one a game. So not that dramatic. I, not, not I think when you take into consideration Tim's point, which I completely he agree with. He touched the ball way more. Yeah. yeah. Go, yeah that, cause if he plays both sides of the rock. He, yeah. he'd, he'd honestly, he'd probably touch the ball double what Luai does. That's how yeah. much he... I'll find um, out very shortly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough argument because you can see both sides. It's like... The, People always say, oh, New South Wales, you just chop and change. It's all you do. But it's the Dally M player that's killing it right now. I'd also say just by eyeballing Penrith, you fans might know more, but I would say that Luai's probably touching the ball less than what he has the previous years because Nath is so much more ball dominant at the moment. Too, With Hoskins. So. What, what are your thoughts on Hoskins on the edge there? On the edge there? Yeah. Um, I think we're just like injuries as well. Like we're missing, missing fish a lot. Like yeah, he's massive. really powerful through the middle. Mm. And like Liam Martin, like what's doing there? Like he came back for that mm. one game, hamstring was all right. And then he's tweaked it, but then they don't really have. Well, there's whispers he may not even be ready for Origin. Yeah. I don't think he's going to play Origin 1. It's crazy. So, so Nico averaging about 70 receipts a game, touches, drove the I 40. So, so almost nearly double. double. Yeah, wow. And good, but. Oh, I love Just Hoskins. solid, like. Good line running. I, I I actually wish Broncos kept. I at the time I felt like Hoskins was our best back row form wise, and it says a lot if Penrith are coming and signing a player with the depth that you guys had. I I think that once your hooker situation is sorted, the the number nine. I would consider you still premiership favourites. Yeah, like still optimistic. It's yeah. just like it's just real. It's just messy down. at the moment. You probably played one 80-minute Panthers game, yeah. I reckon. Outside of that, it's been a bit... I think at the moment with Penrith too, like, I think most teams, if they were missing an Australian back rower, 
in my opinion, probably the most dominant front row in the game outside of Payne Haas. Also, Isaac Tungo, I know he's not, like, playing heaps of rep games, but I think he's a top 10 centre. Mm. You know, that Eisenhoof injury does not help us. Like, yeah, either. No, like, true. That's, you know, true. that's just another one. But I feel like for a number of teams, you'd make the excuse, they're missing their best front row, they're missing their best back row. You don't really talk about it that you much. You talk with about them. it with Penrith, because yeah. you just expect they'll and deal they with lost. it. Mm. Yeah. That we've just got replacements yeah. for that, You'll and then our replacements are getting injured, and yeah. it's just like, you know. And then you add on the fact that you lost Kikau, you lost Appy. Yep. Um, yeah, look, as I said, I, I think I think you agree, or we will agree, is like once that nine role is kind of locked in, I think he's a good. I reckon I'd like to see Sonny play more. Just, like, yeah, okay. just more minutes. Mm. Um, I think that there was a lot of confidence coming into this game especially with the speculation of like Nathan not playing and stuff like that and it's kind of like you know as much as I love Penrith we're really good at doing like just like oh we're, we're going so well we're back-to-back premiers yeah you know Tigers lost or let's let's press Nathan mm. and I was like it's just you know it's something that they, they shouldn't be considering <laughs> Especially before, like Oregon, yeah. I just reckon even if it's even if you're at the bottom of the table, mm. you shouldn't. Like it's just nothing you should be considering. It's like a, a bad mindset to be going yeah, into a game. Yeah, because you should be going into a game with your full. Like if you have players that are good to play mm. and they're your 80 minute players, they should be playing yeah. and not being rested unless they have that injury or they have a sickness or something like you know. It's just like you should be playing. It's that competitiveness that, mm. like, you know, that showing up 100% yeah. of the game. Because it's just like, when I saw that, I was like, I was like, God, the Tigers are going to win. Mm. I just like, you know, I, even though we have such an amazing team and obviously we're one back to back, but the, the fact that they even considered like Nathan out, like it just like, it just brings like, everyone's like, oh, we'll be all right without mm. him. Like, it's just like. Send, sends the wrong message. It to sends the wrong message, yeah. and it sends the wrong message to the whole team. Yeah, and then and then, you know, it just it just cascades from there. So. Yeah, no, no, it's it's a really good point. It's really and it like, you have you have to ask the question: Did did the Panthers take Tigers as seriously as they would have taken the Rabbitohs? You know, probably yeah. not. And I agree and disagree to some extent. I think that, I think Ivan is well aware of the situation you're in. That you've been to three grand finals in a row. That's three Origin series in a row. That's off the back of a World Cup. He knows you've got a long way to go. It's, you know, the season's an extra week longer this year as well to add to that. And I just think he's well aware of trying to manage guys. He's got Liam Martin, who he tried to play through an injury, who's now missed X amount of time. He's got Nathan Cleary. Like, there's obviously something wrong with Nathan. He hasn't goal kicked in two weeks. Um, Your point to Sonny Luke playing more minutes. I've been sitting on this desk for 10 weeks going, what is going on? Why is he playing? Like, he's injured as well. They're just carrying a lot of guys that I think they're just trying to manage through and just survive until the last month of the season. I think you will see guys get rested here and there. See, I, I think I think that like if you have an injury, you should just not. It shouldn't be even talked about rested. It should be you either can or you can't play. Yeah. I I don't. I kind of uh, agree with you in regards to like you either can or you can't play. Like for example, Liam Martin re twinging. If there was any evidence that he could potentially re-twinge, he should have been rested. So then, like, you could – it's it's sending two messages because it's like, well, is Ivan making them play through injury when he shouldn't be? Mm. Or is he resting them because they're up against a team that they should beat? Um, yeah, I, I don't – I don't. I think that if you've got a niggly injury that is potentially um, – could go, you just – you should be rested. You shouldn't be risking it in, in any team. Like, you shouldn't be – if you've got a, a hammy or a bad injury, you shouldn't be risking playing when you know you cannot. Mm. And, like, as we saw, like, Poe with the concussion thing, he had those extra weeks off. He went and got those things on because, you know, you couldn't risk it. Mm. You know, although there was, the, like, <coughs> the dis, like, dis- like around him, like, starting off the bench, that might have been the best thing. They're playing because they're doing that because it's what's best for the player. And, you know, it might not be what – us fans want mm. but you know that that's that long term that's mm. that long term decision yeah that you have to yeah make. for sure no it's uh it, it's a good point in regards to like what message are you sending to the team and that because the panthers they should you obviously should have won that game they they clearly went into it with a with a mindset and oh, i'm sure ivan cleary said it in the post match press conference i will say if cleary is carrying a quad or whatever absolutely do not play him like no way especially with origin around the corner and also 
Yous are in the top eight. Yous are going to make the eight. Like, you're going to make the four for sure. Not well, for sure, I think that's what it's about for them. It's not about it's about locking in a top. And I think that's why they played Nathan on the weekend because they want to lock in a top four spot before Origin arrives. Because then the whole squad's going to disappear for X amount of weeks, or the important guys anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I look at it more like they're sitting currently on ten points. Yeah, we're like speaking to Yeah, and so it's like you're only one win outside the four. If I'm if Nathan Cleary has a quad injury, I am absolutely not because, playing him. Because when like if he does hurt his quad, then like what what's New South Wales? Like you know like it's it's that bigger consequence. Mm. Well, for sure. For sure. Um, now on to I guess what I'm saying. Oh, I just I wouldn't be surprised if I wouldn't be surprised if that decision was left in Nate's hands and he made the decision to play. I do, I do, especially because I think it's like the same. It's not the same as Tommy because Tommy got massive history. But I think sometimes, like as coaches, you just got to go, mate. You are way too important to be yep. risking tearing you because, like, the problem with like soft tissue is is once let's say you did a big tear. That, that can be recur- recurring for fucking, you know. A hammy tear, for example, once you do it once, fuck, it can happen again and again. So I, I wonder whether um, it will be interesting to see, like, what the Panthers do. Clearly they've got niggles. Mm. It'll be interesting to see what they do in regards to resting players because the, the, their schedule's only going to get crazier when Origin comes around. They're, what, two weeks away from a crazy schedule? And what, you had a bye three weeks ago? Yeah. Two weeks ago? Like, mm. yeah. Yeah, oh, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but Penrith, they're sweet. They'll be sweet. I would be shocked if they're not in the top four at the end of the year. Now, on to uh, Roosters, defeat the Warriors. Got any Warriors fans here? Got one. Yes, Roosters. Roosters. There we go. We've got, we go. A, uh, yep. we've got a rooster in disguise over here in his uh, Northern Eagles oh, jersey. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Someone might be Oh, wow. He got gotcha. you. Where from the back fence over there? Trust. No, I deserve that. That's good. <laughs> wow. Um, Roosters defeat the Warriors fourteen to zero. Uh, this is a bit of a strange one. I'm almost. It's going to sound weird, and you will probably all disagree. I'm almost more impressed with the Warriors than I was with the Roosters. Uh, Warriors missing quite a few players. Roosters. When you look at that roster, I know that the torrential, it was torrential rain, terrible, um, and I know they, I think they rested Hargreaves or they, you know, he was injured or whatever. They were solid, but I'm still not seeing that explosive premiership threat that I thought I would be seeing by this stage from the Roosters. Warriors, yeah, okay, they got beaten 14-0, but I was actually quite impressed with their resilience. And maybe it's because I have different expectations with the two sides, like with Roosters, they should win the comp this year if their team is full strength. Warriors, if they make the eight, that's a huge, huge win. So maybe that's why I'm, I'm kind of saying, what do you guys think? Yeah, I still have no idea where I sit on the chooks. I just, yeah, bizarre. I don't know, and you, you might be right, maybe it's because the expectations are so high. Yeah. But I just, you know, once again today, to me, they didn't look like a side that has the that best fullback today. in Holy the game. Holy shit, that was today. Yes, feels like a week ago. <laughs> that's bizarre. They just don't feel like a team to me that has... <laughs> It all blurs into one when you're podcasting all the time. <laughs> My whole life's a podcast. They just didn't feel like a spine of Teddy, Manu, Kiri, Brandon Smith. Oh. Like, I just... Can you do much better than that as four individuals, realistically? Um, and I feel like it's been the same conversation for three years now. Mm. Timmy? Yeah, I've been pretty vocal about Joey Manu at 5'8 for a while. I just... I don't necessarily think it's the right move. And I know since he moved there, they're two from two. They just beat the Dragons on Anzac Day. Rain is the great leveller when it comes to footy. Not just rain, I should say torrential rain like the game that it was today. And uh, Defensively, obviously, Joey Marnie going into the halves is a lot bigger, more solid body than Sam Walker. I get that. You just look at their attack, and we've said that they've been a little bit clunky this year. They've had moments where they've looked really slick, but it's been hot and cold. Joey Manu is a ball runner, first and foremost, and he's not a bloke who passes. So... When he's essentially your first or your second receiver, he goes to pass all the time, looks up, dummies, goes, no, nah, I'll take him on and run it. And that's fine. That's his, that's his game. Mm. But I think it just stunts every bloke outside of Joey Manu. Mm. And I, I don't think him at five... I think, he can, I think he can get the most out of Joey Manu at centre when he roams and he can run for 250 metres and knock blokes over without stunting your attack. And uh, I, don't, I just don't love him there. It's, it's a bizarre thing because 
I feel like here he's playing the best footy he's played the last two games because it's almost like it's clearly his side now, whereas I think him and Sam Walker would struggle with that because Sam Walker obviously grew up as the main guy. Kiri is the main guy. He's won multiple premierships. I don't mind Joey at six, but you're right. It's almost like if you put him at six in there now, okay, what's where does Sam Walker go? Because he can't play anywhere else in the side. No. Does that mean Sam Walker is just not going to play again this whereas season? Joey can essentially play anywhere. Yeah, and so it's like... Is this a short-term thing to fix <coughs> Sam Walker's whatever's going on there? Or is it, it – it is a bit you're, – you're right. They're like, where do they go from here? Like, T- Teddy's best footy is when he's sweeping out the back line. He gets a – even if it's a three-on-three. And he either out-muscles them or uses his speed, turns into three-on-two, gets three-on-two right every time. He never had a chance to even get close to doing that. Today. Again, I know the conditions <coughs> didn't really dictate and allow that to happen, but because the, the ball didn't come out to him out there. Mm. I'd love to – Roosters – Fans, what are your thoughts about the, the whole situation? Can, can I start in too on Sam Walker, just for a bit of context? He played New South Wales Cup today. First half, he scored the first try, two tries, and then... It was 18 four after 30 minutes when yeah, he was on the field. Yeah. He came back on and didn't look very good after that. They lost 34-22, so yeah. it was a landslide after Sammy Walker left the field. Just okay. on Sam Walker, I'd be very surprised if he's not in the team next week. Momorowski's okay. out, he's the right centre, and the right centre will be up against Val Holmes. Mm. Michael Hutchinson there. I really don't want that. <laughs> Drew Hutchinson is not a... He's a plug-and-play you can't put him up against Holmes. So I think Sam Walker comes back in next week after having two weeks in reserve grade. But I think today our defence has been shocking this season. Today we kept the team to zero. That's probably been our best defensive performance in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, just our forward pack is... It was different today. Just Tilly Tupanil came on and played in the front row. Because Egan Butcher and Nat Butcher were just tackling machines. They had 110 tackles combined with zero misses. Oh. So yeah, um, did he make 56 tackles? Yeah, Egan, uh, Nat 56, Egan 53, and they didn't miss, miss one Yeah, each. didn't miss one. So Crazy. attack wasn't really going to come today. It was more about can we stop defensively because we've had our issues defensively, mm-hmm. which has been the left edge, which has been Swatali's edge. So I still think that Robertson's trying to get his sort of back five in an order that's... Sort of resembling. I think in an ideal world, I would have Swatali on the wing in defence and then in attack in the centres, but you're not going to really get that. So he's trying to piece together a few working pieces. We always start slow. Mm. It's been a thing. I'm hoping we don't start as slow this year because last season we had to run the gauntlet, win six or seven in a row, and then we got to the finals and it just blew up. Mm. So it's we've got the Cowboys next week and they're going to be ultra desperate. So it might not be the best sort of opportunity to bring Sam Walker in, but I would be surprised if he's not at six or seven next week, given Manu will probably have to play in the centres. Do you think that you do you think that you may be overcomplicating this like you've almost got too many guns to try to fit into the game plan or so there was a point like in one set where James Sesso touched it at first receiver three times and mm. took a hit up on another play. Yeah. And that was a bit like with Teddy, he's amazing, but maybe sometimes it's less is more. Mm. He gets less plays, he's out the back sweeping, and he's just doing everything he can. But we are trying to overcomplicate it. We've got so many pieces. Uh, Cheese apparently has injured his neck now. so Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit. I hope he's okay. He went to hospital, so hopefully yeah. that's all good. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure what that'll do, but it just feels like we have way too many moving pieces. Mm. And I'm not sure how that Robbo gets that to work out. But you'd hope we're going to get it in tune before Origin. Mm. So in a couple of weeks, Tedesco's going to go. I would assume that Manu goes back to fullback. So then, who knows? Mm. We've got, obviously, Tupo out, which is a massive loss, I think, in attack. Yeah. He's our set starter. Mm. He got, runs for 150, 160 metres. We're having Corey Allen on the wing. It's not... We're just missing guys. I know you say we're not healthy. We, everyone wants to be healthy, but we just seem to lose players right when we're trying to fix something. Mm. I like the so, Suali to the wing in defence play just for the, the ball carries back, especially with Tupu out. You're missing, what, he'd run for two, 250 metres yeah. a game. Suali, perfect. It went, St George targeted Suali's wing. There was a try there where Ravalawa just shifted his hips and went straight out the outside. Suali's defence, I think, is best when he's on the wing because he's able to jam in. At centre, he's just a little bit out of position and now he's got a new winger in Allen. I think if it was a dry track today, we would have been in more trouble defensively because the Warriors would have been able to shift. Mm. They also lost with Tengiz Lesniak, had to play fullback. 
and took away from their right side, which would have mm. attacked us. So, Suli is an interesting one. He reminds me of a player that's been so dominant coming up to the grades that he has that he thinks that he needs to be that now in first grade. Mm. And I don't mean that as as a shot at Suli at all. Like he's so talented, but I just think that he needs to maybe just take a little bit of a backward step. Like for example, there are a few times where when he had a bit of space on the edges, his immediate thought was, I'm going to break the line here, rather than mm. how do I set my winger up to score a try? How do I put myself in a position where the winger gets the ball? Because he's so used to being the main guy, which is it's, it's going to be a really interesting balance over the next... Because um, he's not going next year, is he? He's going... Yeah, it's, he's got another year, yeah. Mm. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can find that balance. What are, you, what are your thoughts of the Roosters at the moment? Well, I, I do echo what you said. I feel like there's a lot of um, conjecture with our lineups. I personally feel like, and it's definitely not a shot at Hutchinson, but Mm. you're not Orbison, so we're up. (laughs) Like, and it's just, I I understand where they're coming from with that utility role, but you're not him. Mm. Like, Mm. Robbo, I would never doubt. Mm. I'll never question. Top three, in my opinion, coaches. But it's getting to a point for me where, like, I understand what you're saying with the Teddy. The Teddy thing trying to play hero ball. I wouldn't say it's hero ball. It's just maybe just touches it one too many times in a set. Like today he was first receiver a lot. And he's yeah. a fullback. So it's like... I think with Origin coming up, it might be a blessing in disguise as well. Because say Joey, like Teddy goes, Joey drops back, Walker comes in. Mm. Say that two, three weeks Walker had with um, New South Wales Cup, that instills a little bit of confidence and a little bit of the pressure gets relieved because it's Origin period. Mm. So whether AC goes or whether he's not ready, we're going to lose some plays in and around. Lindsay Collins will go Queensland. Mm. There's going to be a little of alleviation off the shoulders of this is Roosters football. This is how we play. Yeah, it's a good point. Every team has a certain standard like you were mentioning. Mm. The Roosters have their standard of here. We are a new spine in terms of adding cheese. He's coming from a completely different system to the Roosters, they may look like they're the same, but they'd be completely it's different. So different. So when you're looking at someone so influential touching the ball, he looks a bit fatigued, he looks a bit tired coming off a World Cup. Give us 10 to 15 rounds, then make an assumption. Mm. Um, but I just think that if we play Roosters football and we have players in their designed positions, then I think that will be successful. Mm. But you just can't rely on Hutchison in the centres, Corey Allen of having played two games, fame to win your game. <laughs> like you can't, you you just can't depend He's origin, on. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> He's an origin winner. No. Yeah, true, true. But it's like you just can't depend on um, these fringes, as you keep saying, to win you elite football games. Mm. And I've been so disappointed at times mm. uh, in the way that we've played, but. I just trust that Robbo's got a process and that process will fulfill itself by the end of the year. He's, mm. he's always been clinical in the fact that he can take a team of, say, misfit positions and people that are playing not their role um, and make them better by the end of the year. I think mm. it's, you, if you don't judge, don't judge us on our worst day or our best day, judge us right in the middle. Mm. And you can't tell that now. Yeah. It's, they, I mean, notorious slow starters. I, my only concern with the Roosters is it's been quite a few years now that you haven't really seen. I mean, it's been what, five years since back-to-back and since then haven't really fired a shot. I don't think you've even made a prelim since then. Yeah. I know you've had some injuries. Got the big fella over here. Yeah, look, um, both of the boys have really pretty much nailed it, hit the mm. nail on the head. Um, I'm more happy that we actually won a game with Hargrave sitting on the bench. Yeah, um, that's a good point. You know, that's like he's point. been so influential for us mm. throughout or his whole ten- tenure with us yeah. and um so it's it's pleasing to actually take on a forward pack like the warriors have and mm. um yeah get the job dominate done. get the job done mm. you know like i mean 14 nil yeah okay the conditions were horrendous and all that but um you know you still got the like you still got to go out there you got to still got to play the game both mm. sides have to play in the same conditions and yeah. we managed to put 14 points on and they didn't yeah you know um and you're in the top 4 now so yeah, it's well, like, I mean, it's like, not bad. you know look i mean that, that's the other thing like you know we're all you know being negative nancies over here about how bad they're going but they're still in the top four like, yeah you know what other team can say that yeah, yeah. three other teams <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, what, what, what more can you ask for? You know. Yeah, what I mean? no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good. Um, it's almost like the storm, kind of like the storm situation where like we expect so much of the Roosters in the storm that if we were talking about any other team, we'd be like, they're in the top four. Like this is, a, and the Roosters are in the top four, and they haven't even played close to their best footy yet. Well, look, look, look at the other teams in the top four, mm. right? Besides, like, okay, the Broncos had a really shocking game on the weekend, mm. but you know, everyone else is been playing pretty consistent football yeah. we haven't played any consistency whatsoever for sure for sure you know? the only consistency that we've had is that we've had to pr practically pe piecemeal it together a game plan yeah and still haven't even played our best footy yet so yeah. like i think we've only played one decent half of football the whole year mm. and that was it yeah it was like was that the eels the eels was that the eels game we probably second half against south actually i would say that oh, that south? was definitely yep. it yeah i was just one more question on angus Crichton. Mm. obviously he had that time off with his mental health he, he's come back in two nrl games and looked quite rusty and we talked about ponga getting that confidence back with the roosters having now tupanua back nafua white's been killing it in new south Wales cup would you think about maybe giving Angus Crichton a few more weeks in New South Wales Cup just to build up that confidence? Because mm. he started last week, played 60 minutes, was a bit rusty. This week he played 25 off the bench, made a few errors. And he's talked about being in origin camp. Maybe a few weeks in reserve grade might do him the world of good and the Roosters have the buy over origin. So he might be able to go into camp as like the 23rd man mm. and just get around that squad. Yeah. He's had such a long layoff, mm. maybe a few extra weeks just to build up the confidence in reserve grade. Uh, so I th well, I think Kalen is a little different because it's like a physical confidence with Kalen. Like he's, he's concerned about contact. Whereas like with Crichton, I think that, first of all, I think you should start him off the bench for sure. Like I don't think he should be starting. Um, I think that he's also played so long so consistently for the Roosters that you can almost trust a little bit more that he'll be able to get back into that form a little bit quicker. Um, and I just, yeah, I just really rate Crichton. I, I think that it's going to only take a few games before he's back to where he needs to be. Um, but you're right in regards to, I don't think you should just boom, put him in the starting edge back row. I'd even just like bring him on in the middle there and just try to get him physically in the game. Like, mate, 20 minutes... I need fifth. Oh, I need 12 hit-ups in 20 minutes just to get physicality, like the physical contact, into his body. Fitness. He'll be back to his best. He's, he is one of the most consistent back rowers, if not the most consistent back rower of the last maybe six to seven years. Um, I struggle to think of any other back rower outside of maybe like what Boyd Corner that's been. Yep. Like he's right up there. Also say on Nat Butcher, if Crichton is to totally to a back fit, Nat Butcher needs to keep his spot on the edge. He is. The defensive workhorse. When mm. we won premierships, Jake Friend was defensive workhorse. Mm. Now Snap Butcher. He just tackles and tackles and tackles. And I would say he's the future captain of the Roosters. You reckon that actually, Butcher? Yeah, easy. Yeah, he was okay. the captain in the 20s for the SG ball. Mm. He just, he's an on-field leader. He just leads the pack. Yeah. He doesn't make stupid mistakes. He's just a workhorse. Yeah, okay. He does the simple things. He's, I, I he's really a, like Satili and Crichton as starting back rowers. Like, I really, really like that. But you're right in regards to if you want one of your back rowers to just be a tackling machine, then Nat Butcher is well, we bloody... We Tilly at prop today, so maybe that's something... Yeah, that moving him in the middle explore. there. Yeah, we got Spencer coming. Yeah. Jared apparently hasn't re-signed, so I don't... There's a lot of... I mean, look, things are looking good at the Roosters. <laughs> oh, yeah, playing us. <laughs> Bye, Turbo. <laughs> yeah. Pongy, I, I to personally come. thought last year when Tilly got injured, I personally thought that probably saved him from getting replaced by Nat last year. I think that was about to happen, then the injury happened and it forced their hand. Yep, mm. did well, yeah. Yeah, Ro look, Roos is, <laughs> we've, as, as you've said, like we're, we're being negative here, but I think it's because we have standards for the Roosters that are similar to the Storm, where it's like, we're, they're in the premiership business. So before we go, I just want to say, I know the, we'll harp on about the refs, the Roosters got a lot of decisions to go away today. <laughs> Tedesco dropped one about 20 metres out. Oh man. Blind Freddy could have seen that, was it? <laughs> man, I don't know what it is with the Warriors, but they get smashed yeah. with bad calls. Uh, they, I'm going to say it now, the Warriors are going to beat Penrith next week. You reckon? Yeah, the Warriors look good. Yeah, they look no. good. Don't try and steal my glory, bro. Plus, I'm a rich <laughs> <laughs> I picked the Tigers. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Picked the Tigers and almost snubbed them on the review. <laughs> <laughs> so you're picking Warriors to beat Panthers? Yeah, well, the back to back curse. The Roosters know we sucked on 2020 after going back to back. You just okay. can't be up for that long. All right. It's not All possible. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Plus, I'd like to say that Victor Radley is targeted. 
and that he's the cleanest <laughs> player. Yeah. Like, he's just always targeted. <laughs> He got a pin named after him. Yeah. Did you see that picture of the dude yeah, with the pin? So good. So good. And at one stage, he put up a zero, and I thought, oh, beauty, you're saying how many sin bins you've got. Lovely. <laughs> um, hopefully, that can get sorted out. But yeah, uh, Warriors, let's talk about the Warriors. What do you think about the Warriors, mate? I'm going to come out and play the optimist, but I'm not sure I'm optimistic enough to say we'll beat Penrith. <laughs> um, look, it's, it's a hard game to get a read on. The, the conditions were torrid, and we are down a lot of troops. But you can't blame troops. Everybody's down troops at the moment. Um, I think what it did show is how much Chance actually affects our attack. Like, I love Dallin as much as the next bloke. And I love his, his metres out of out of our end. Mm. And he's a fantastic finisher. But he just doesn't have that passing game. And while people can say Chance isn't the greatest passer, he certainly has a bit more in his in his game. And he can worry the fence a bit more with the ball in hand. But it, it is hard to to get a read on with the conditions. You could see Sean Johnson would just, the entire game would just turn players under because, you know, sliding defence, it's going to be hard to to cover that back up. But Roosters just kept kept that up all game. Mm. So I'm optimistic. I'm not too upset with, with the loss. Our defence was really strong, only letting in 14 points. And one was off a, off a kick to Satili, if I'm not mistaken. So... I'm, I'm quite happy with the performance and overall with the performance this year. I think I've only been let down once, which is probably the Knights um, game, <laughs> mm. which is a far cry from other seasons. I'm used yeah. to being let down as a Warriors fan, so... Yeah. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, I, what I loved about the Warriors' performance is like, Purina, you like that best. one? <laughs> Thanks, bro. Um, I already apologised to him earlier on behalf. But that's fine. Um, so, what I loved about the Warriors game, and it sounds bizarre, they lost fourteen nil, but like even under pressure, even chasing points, even after the Roosters, they stuck to their game plan. Usually, the Warriors just go AWOL. They just start throwing cutout balls, looking for points wherever they can find them. They stuck to their processes no matter what, even when you could make the argument it wasn't working and they weren't getting points and they had all the field position. They continue to stick to their systems. And I just, I just can't remember a Warriors team. I, I just can't remember a Warriors team that would do that. Usually they'd get stressed out and start going crazy. And before you know it, they're down by 30 or something. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly it, Campy. I think that's what Webster's brought our team is that structure. And yeah, while it might not have worked against the Roosters, they are a top team in the NRL mm. and totally leak 14 points is fine. And, the fact that we didn't get overwhelmed in the moment, we kept coming to the very end to make those points. A um, few decisions definitely, you know, didn't go our way. And I'm, I'm glad that everyone can sort of see those. But, um, like, Ford could have crossed a, a couple of times mm. if he holds onto the ball. Like, yeah. we weren't far off it. And, you know, scoring zero points is, is never a good thing. But if you watch the game... It, it, we were no ne nowhere near that bad, and the conditions certainly didn't help. And and we are out there without our entire forward and pack. So Tohu Harris injured. Yeah, it's a one there. Um, Jazz. Jazz. Um, Jazz Tavanga, uh, Tomate Martin, Charles Nuka Klukstad. Um, you've got um, Metcalf. He looks like he'll be back <coughs> next week or the week yeah. after. So that'll be interesting. Um, I love that call out saying you got held to nil, but weren't too disappointed with the performance because spot on, like. Probably the first fan to ever say that about their club after getting held to zero. Like, I feel the same, mate. Like, it was nothing too bad to take out of it, was there? Gee, you missed Toru Harris. Like, such a subtle little aspect of his game, but his tip on at the line generates so much ruck speed and so much attack for you as well. And I think every game he's missed this season, there's been a few there, you miss him so much. He, he is so underappreciated. And, like, New Zealand, because they're not in Australia, they don't get the same media, obviously, as... And they do get rough as anything calls, but I just love the patience. That if if they keep sticking to that, and then they can bring some big recruits in, like RTS, for example, like they are building something special there. They re I really really excited for them. And again, if they were an Australian club right now with a new assistant coach, all the rave would be, look at this, you know, this assistant coach Webster. Look what he's done. And yeah, we've seen a little bit of it, but you know, I, we say it each week on the podcast. Even right now, Dally M coach so far for me of the year is Webster. Now, it's a long season, plenty more to go. 
But when you look at the roster and the recruits that were made, they really weren't that impressive. In on paper, they weren't that impressive. But he's he's recruited the right type of person. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword though, because as much as I'd love the media to get around him and see how impressive we're doing, mm. maybe having not having that pressure and that expectation is doing us wonders. And mm. I think Webby's really rallying the boys, you know, tremendously for a team that will favourites for Spoon probably outside the Dragons this year on Dolphins, but for until now, and this loss puts us down to about seventh, but mm. I think we're still equal, maybe second. No one was talking about it, and I still think form-wise this year, consistently, we've been one of the better teams, and mm. having this game, yeah, zero points, torrential weather, we're without our entire team practically. Another thing is Dylan Walker at six. I love him. I think his impact off the bench is sorely missed, yeah. and having him at six is – it's a – plug and play at the moment but if we can get him back off that bench as well as much as he's still playing for us mm. his impact off the bench is just it's well, tremendous for think us think about this you've got you've got cowboys who've got the team they've got sitting at 16th tigers tim sheens benji marshall robbie farrah recruited crazy it's dalian back rower origin hooker johnny bateman dalian back rower as well then you've got the bulldogs also recruited crazily uh assistant new coach everything like that it's the warriors that are in the top eight like it is phenomenal what you guys are achieving so and it's the way you're going about it i don't think this is a flash in the pan i don't think like i genuinely think there has been a complete change in standards and expectations and i don't see you guys finishing in the eight this year but building towards the future like i mean we haven't even mentioned volkman i mean you've got volkman who's a young half coming through as well it is it's exciting times it really is at the warriors uh yeah one thing i was uh going to strung by you guys is johnson before this year i probably would have said this would be his last but he's playing so well and especially with rts back next year i'm almost certain johnson gets at least one more year with the warriors but after that I'm not sure we have many halfbacks in the building. In the building, I don't think Volkman is a future halfback. I think he's more of a five-eighth. But I don't mind Tomato Martin. Really, there, boy. Yeah, I, I, I honestly think he might be able to develop into one. I think he's got a lot of class about him that doesn't get appreciated. People forget 2017 when they went on that run. You know, he was a big part of that. Yes, Michael Morgan was the main guy. But I, I do think Tomite Martin might be someone who could step in. Or you go into the market, you've got guys like Peru, uh, the Sharkies. Um, oh, who's the other guy at the... Um, Trindle. Anyway, the, sorry? Trindle. You got, you got Trindle like as well? Trindle. No, no, you got, you got Trindle Trindle's as well. Good. Because these, these are players that are going to struggle. Now, Trindle may... If Trindle gets impatient now, he may go, well, I'm not going to wait two years because Trindle's ready to play first grade right now. Is a number seven. You're going to have coin to do it. So I really like the prospects, man. I honestly think the Warriors are in the best position probably since 2011. I also think <clears throat> Volkman eventually, he'll find his way. I, I, like, I'm obviously a big fan of him. When he's coming to first grade, it's been well below bar, though. There's no denying that whatsoever. Uh, I don't know. Do if you, you see Demario Martin? Do you see, do you see him as I a seven? I love him. Or no? I think he's so underrated. But do you so sorry, do you see him as a seven or not six? I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Okay. I'm not convinced either way. I wouldn't push back on what you're saying though mm. at the moment. But I think Volkman will be a seven. Do you, do you, do you watch your cup side all that much? Uh, when I can. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's no guru. No he's guru. No guru. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, he's too good looking to be a guru. Um, he uh, like he's been absolutely carving it in reserve grade. And granted, when he's coming to first grade, it hasn't been impressive. But I just think with time. Volkman could be that guy that you're looking for. I really do. What, is he like 20? He's young. He's young. Very young. Yeah, and very also, young. signed by the Roosters. If the Roosters are signing <laughs> you and wanting to keep you, there's something to, you got something special about yeah, you. Well, for sure. Decided to have him at the club. I just thought his future was a bit more at 5'8". Yeah. Um, mm, it's fair. But yeah, I lo love him as a player. And mm. yeah, as, as Guru just said, I echo it. I haven't been as impressed in his NRL performances, but every time I see any sort of cup game, he, he is just killing it. And um, I love the fact that he has come to our club. Because well, when the Brewsters at, are throwing big money, it's hard to knock that back. Look at like people just like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you are saying this, but just with halves, it takes so long for them to get comfortable in, in their position. Like even Katoa, like at the Dolphins, 
he is was touted as like the game's next superstar you know look everything that he did in reserve grade he's he's gonna be he's joey johns he's this he's that he's, he's everything he hasn't done much in first grade like he's just done his job to a degree so even guys that are supposed to be generational freaks it's six or seven you know it takes some time nathan cleary like people were calling for Cleary to be dropped three or four years ago like P panthers fans will remember like <laughs> people were literally saying that he like he's terrible you know shouldn't be playing his father coming back worst decision ever um and so i agree with like kind of what guru's saying like and as i said i'm not saying you're saying this but you know volkman give him time i think he can i'll tell you the other one that i mean you've still got metcalf there he's now metcalf exciting. to me i think he's a fullback <clears throat> right the guy that I look at when I think about Metcalf is Nico Hines, who I was sitting here a year ago going, fullback, not a halfback. Mm -hmm. I know that Metcalf thinks he's a halfback, and potentially it could work out. You look at the like even their journeys. Like he was at Manly a few years ago, completely unwanted. Metcalf left, killed it at the nines comp. Remember that killed nines it at comp? the nines, yeah. yeah. And I think I think what the Warriors have done with Metcalf over the last few weeks is says like he's been sent to San Francisco as well to deal with his him. No one's spoken about it because he hasn't had videos made about him and all that sort of shit. But the Warriors have identified that he's got a big future. And I, I think your coach, whatever people want to say, I think he knows what he's doing. And I think he's identified that Metcalf could be your answer over the next few years. Yeah, well, we did play him at halfback in our first trial, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, last thing I want to run by is before I pass it off to the Dragons and Doggies fans, is RTS, fullback or centre next year? Uh, I've got quite good mail from... Pretty good source that he'll he's signed as a center, Ooh. Uh, because I mean for for a million reasons. But you know you want longevity with him. You want him to be playing. And I just think that in today's game with the speed of it, I don't want him taking twenty five hit ups. You know let Chance do that, or even Metcalf eventually if he does become fullback. Chance loves that kind of stuff. It's almost his bread and butter. Whereas like RTS, a fresh RTS with a bit of space on the edges, almost probably the best one on one ball runner in the comp. So uh, he has to play if he does that the roaming role, yes. like the, the yeah. Joey Martin, Joey Martin. mate, scan over the field, plays yep. a second fullback, and just jump in. Just, just you don't have to do any of the shit carries. Yeah, just keep his body. And also, I think RTS is still only 29, 30, maybe. So he's not like he's actually not like he he could be coming into his prime. Yeah, which is crazy, yeah. like crazy thing. And also at 29, 30, he's a little bit bigger, so he doesn't have to cover as much ground in regards to like. You know, usually fullbacks, if I recall correctly, is like around an eight to nine K mark, kilometer mark in running. Whereas center, you're looking at around the four to six K mark running. So like RTS is a strike center for the Warriors with a full strength. Like tell me the last time you had Volkman, Tomate Martin, uh, Metcalf, Sean Johnson, Charles Nigel Klockstad, RTS all around that spine fighting for it. And then you got Egan, who's getting better and better. You got Freddie Lussick, Anyway, exciting times for the Warriors. Let's get to the Dragons v the Doggies. Dragons fans, bomb. Yep, just two here. Three, three is all together, sticking together. And then <laughs> we've got Doggies fans. Doggies. Um, what an incredible win by the Bulldogs. Sorry, Dragons fans. Um, but down massively on troops. We're talking about a team a couple of years ago that were just every week getting pounded into the core of the earth. Um, and now they they put that together with a debutant. Like, for example, they just beat the Dragons, who last year were only two wins out of side the eight, with Josh Reynolds playing six. And it's like, no, no disrespect for Josh Reynolds in regards to him as a player. Like, he's, a, he's had an incredible career. He's a great bloke. But when it comes to, like, you know, ability now and at his age, like, he's, he's quite substantially past his best. Um, also, he's still as angry as anything. Has he got any angry or what? <laughs> Holy, he was lucky not to get sent when he was going at the ref. Anyway. Um, when he went at the ref too and the ref was like, oh, I thought you elbowed him in the head. It's like, you did elbow him in the head. Yeah. <laughs> you blatantly elbowed him in the head. Um, they don't call him grub for no reason. The great grub. And so you bring Oluwapo off the bench. Did he set the world light? No. But did he look out of place? No. Didn't look out of place at all. He handled the physicality of it. 15 tackles, only three misses, so not a disaster. Reed Marnie, good. Like, another guy I want to talk about, Averillo. Oh. Mm. How good has he been playing finally? And uh, how long have you been listening to the podcast? Uh, two years. Two years? Yeah. So you've been hearing That's it. That's enough. 
bang on every You're week. We talk about the Bulldogs. We'll be going, Avrilo is not a seven. He's not a fullback. <laughs> Finally, we found Avrilo's position. And he has been outstanding at centre. Like, absolutely outstanding. I, I'm not sure about Burden at seven, but I, what I will say is, is that they're playing better with him at seven than they were with Flannel at seven at the moment. Um, I just like him around the ball more. I just like him. And he. I think uh, Burton even said that before the game, that Seraldo basically said, like, we just want you touching the ball more. Uh, I think this is a, a cl- like a really, really good win for the Bulldogs. What do you think, Gurino? Yeah, I think with, you know, obviously Kyle Flanagan's left the side now. and We've been saying for a while, I think Canterbury can be successful with Kyle Flanagan. But he has to do those little things that he can do well. He has to do them well consistently. He wasn't. That's the reality of it. Mm. Um, I think Josh Reynolds... <laughs> I, I think there's an argument that Josh Reynolds got more holes in his game than what Kyle Flanagan does, but he brings energy. Mm. And he just brings what Canterbury is all about. I mean, we, uh, I said it on the podcast a few weeks ago, we were at the Canterbury game the other day. He sprinted off the sideline. He missed two tackles, <laughs> gave away a penalty, and all the Canterbury <laughs> fans went, that's Josh. <laughs> and it was just bizarre. But it, he's that sort of a guy. He is just that sort of a footballer that he's going to bring that energy. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to do stupid things, but he's worth having on the field because he mm. brings energy. And I think that Carl coming off the bench for the next few weeks, I think that's going to be the play. And I think within five or six weeks, Carl will beat you seven. I, w- I will say, um, you know, I've been quite strong about my opinion on Flano in regards to feeling like he can be the guy to get the job done. Um, but I, I probably have to admit I'm wrong in regards to got that got that wrong he's been given ample opportunity you know i feel sorry for kyle he's had so much pressure on him um but unfortunately he hasn't delivered so got that call wrong at the start of the year i thought by this stage I, that he would have made that role his own and unfortunately he hasn't uh, i think it takes a lot of guts for seraldo to go you know what let's make the call now move burton into seven get the rookie oluapu into six eventually i think as soon as we saw flano move to six the writing was on the wall if i'm flano I would go to Super League. I know it's used as a joke or whatever, but there's plenty of there's plenty of NRL players that go over there and have great lives and enjoy rugby league, sign good contracts, get to travel Europe. It's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but I think that look, <coughs> if you're gonna like, if Burton is potentially gonna be because basically what happened was, and this is the mail that we got. I think maybe you got to me that Bulldogs actually had a chance to get Moses and chose not to get him because they thought Oluwapu was a future. Is that the correct mail? That yeah, well, essentially they didn't want... They saw him as like a... They don't see their premiership window being this year, being next year. It's a classic Gus Gould five-year plan. Mm. We laugh about it, but it worked at the Panthers, didn't it? Mm. Excessively well. And it was the same with Moses. Thought, oh, we can get Moses now on a lot of money or at the peak of his career, or we can get someone like Carl Oluwapu, who we think can be the future of the club in five years' time mm. for a lot cheaper money and build around that and they've done that yeah and so if the so basically with that decision it looks like they've looked at Oluwapu in reserve grade and said look maybe he's not a seven and maybe so if the decision is is like oh well burden is the guy that's going to be our seven from you may as well get him in there straight away and just start building with him and look i am even though i'm still unsure as to whether burton can be a seven i'm closer to being hopeful that he can than i was a few if you had asked me a few weeks ago, I would have said, no way. How, I don't know how a Dally M centre can become a seven. But, you know, Nico, which is ironic, because I was probably the only one of the only people saying that Nico Hines can be a seven for the Sharkies. So, yeah, I don't mind it. Burden, Oluwapu in your halves, like big, strong halves. The game of this, the style of footy has changed uh, quite a bit over the, over the last couple of years. So you can be up front foot footy. Um, Great win. Uh, any questions, boys? Doggies, boys? Then we'll get to the Dragons. I think the big thing is they're playing good footy for a long period of time over there. Mm. Last few years, they've had a massive wake up after them. Yeah. They're playing and hanging on a lot more um, this year. Particularly last year, they've been particularly Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Nah, it's have you caught someone scissoring? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the microphone? Yeah, Mike died. Mike died. So basically, you just say your question and then I'll repeat it into the mic. 
um, yeah, you're basically playing 80 minutes rather than 40 minutes. And a lot more of the just putting their hands up and having more of a practice. Oh, mate, I totally agree. And I, what I also love is like, uh, I think Billy Slater said it on the Nine Now commentary stream, live and free on Nine Now. Um, <laughs> not an ad, not an ad, not an ad, guys. Jeez. Um, but basically, he said like, you know, there's different forms of courage. And sometimes it's the courage is to play footy. And I thought, what I'm loving about the Bulldogs, they even did it against um, was it the Panthers maybe or the Storm? Anyway, one of the big dog sides where I think it was a Storm because you beat the Storm, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And and you were just spinning it like pumped them. Like, basically, just fearless rugby league. And I think Serraldo has instilled it. Because even today, all these troops out, every reason to just go, oh, let's just play high percentage players. Not like, what, the Avarillo first try was out of their own end with Braden Burns fending, then a great pass, yeah. in a way. And then, oh, when Braden Burns... Burns looked, twice in twice, a row. Long, like, that's, so what, two 80-metre tries... And that's, that's brave footy to do that coming out of your own end. It's also a nightmare to defend because what happens is, is if, if, you, if you have to defend a team that is willing to do that, you have to increase your spacing because your winger... Because what happened when the second Avarillo try was the wing was too far in, he couldn't catch mm. um, Avarillo. And so it's a nightmare to defend, in, especially in today's game, because then you have to increase the spacing between you and the next defender. Then so what, so what do the, the Bulldogs do in return? Then they go, all right, well, then we'll just start hitting it up through the ruck because now you've got to make one-on-one -on -one tackles around the ruck. We get quick play the balls. So it shows you Seraldo's genius and why he has so much raps about him because this, this isn't just a good roster. This is tactics. This is like tactics that he's telling his, his team. Name you said a few times there, Braden Burns. Shout out to him. Five offloads today. Six tackle breaks, three line break assists. Mate, he stays injury-free. He's oh, a he's gun. So good. That's and, his biggest worry. He's a yeah. gun. Yeah. And, and Avrid, I'll get all the raps, and rightly so, if there's two outstanding tries he did, schooled Sloan twice in a row. But Braden Burns, second game for the year at the Doggies in the back line, trying to cement a position and throws them two speculators that if they went wrong, he would have been crucified for them. They're both yeah. peaches, both two runaway tries. Fun little fact... That actually stands for Braden Burns. <laughs> little, little BB. Anyway, didn't have to pay for it though. No royalties, Braden. No royalties. Um, no, I, I agree, mate. Like he would have been crucified. But as we were saying, like that's like instilling Seraldo instilling courage mm. in a young side that you know usually you go nah, take the tackle because it's almost like you know I don't mean disrespectfully, but it's almost like. The Bulldogs have no right to be this confident. Like, they're, they're a team that were struggling for the last few years. Got any questions, mate? You told me it was Brisbane Broncos last week. <laughs> <laughs> Big Buddha. <laughs> uh, the Doggies, you know, how we love to recruit a lot of players. Um, but as you're saying before, we've got, um, you'd say, Burton, Oluwapu, um, Marnie, and then you would assume Critter would next year would come in and lock in that spine. Do you feel like then, like, they're lacking in the forward department? I know. None of them have really played together because we've rattled with injuries. You know, TBJ comes back, Mick King goes out. We haven't had Thompson. Do you feel like there's a kind of a lacking a bit in that forward pack considering the, the plan, that five-year plan of a young spine locked them in? Do you see that there's any gaps there? Well, I think – I actually think Tevita Pangai Jr. will free up a lot of cash when he comes off contract. Um, you've got Pele. Um, he's due back next week. He's due back next Maybe. week. And he is – playing really well when he's playing and also you know the more footy he gets in NRL the more minutes he'll be able to play so uh, Luke Thompson Pele uh, Faitella Mariner Waddell we'll oh, oh, put it King. this way uh, kick out Max King, King Preston, he's got one of the better Preston. forward packs on paper mm. to be it's, honest it's with not you. bad and as I said like yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, they've yeah, just all been out injured like yeah. like you got Luke Thompson to come back Max King Sutton kick out like Joe, Jacob Preston's jumped out of the ground. So that's the other thing. You know, he swapped sides. Didn't mm. miss a beat. So good. I, and I, as I said, I, I really think that I, unless he signs for unders, I don't see Tevita Pangai Jr. re-signing with the club just due to the fact that he's on a massive contract, which is exciting for the Bulldogs because you can go aggressively into the market for a, a, a forward. And, like, for example, if, if Payne has, doesn't re-sign at the Broncos or, or whatever, like Gus Gould could work his magic. Who knows? You just you just don't know. Like then you've got guys like uh, Stefano. Um, he's off contract in two years. Um, 
there's another oh, young player as well that's coming through. Anyway, so there's, there's a, quite a few young big forwards because this is obviously a five-year plan. So you can begin targeting them now and build squads around them, which is exciting for the Bulldogs. And that's where as well you look at Carl Oluwapa at the start of this year when they signed him for 500k. I'm sitting here going... 500k it's teenager mm. if in a year's time he's an established first grade seven you're paying him 500k it's a steal mm. and all of a sudden you can build around him well see it's, it's even like the Raiders situation what we we're talking about earlier is like you know if you can somehow land that young guy coming through and he does nico Hines, for example <laughs> brisbane broncos we offered him reportedly 300k because he was coming off the bench for the storm he goes to the sharkies for reportedly a 600k that's like the biggest unders in history, you know what I mean? And so if the do- if the dogs can be really smart in the market, which they have been, it's exciting. It's super exciting. And you're winning matches away from home with like, who, Josh, as I said, Renault at six, Hayes Perham, good, solid first grader, but is he as good as Critter? Like, you know, I, I don't think so. Declan Casey, um, Alamotti in his rookie year. Then you've got Harrison Edwards, like, <laughs> I, no, I'm not being disrespectful, but I don't even... Guru, do you know Harrison Edwards? Not well. If he doesn't know him, then fucking no one... <laughs> um, not no. well for Guru, though, is like seen him play 10 to 20 Harold Match games <laughs> five years ago. Um, but, like, you know, Har- um, Harrison, come on and did a job. like, And that's signs of really good coaching when you've got players that you're getting the best. It's like what Wayne does so well seen more confidence in Canterbury this year especially like that um clutch play against the that Cowboys game like Mm. Burton in that golden point to try kick it and just go for glory and I think earlier in the year against the Warriors he's tried a similar thing when they were um to Avarillo to try you know like that's confidence just to like go yeah let's do it and (laughs) I I definitely think that a a Serato thing that they're definitely more confident they're backing themselves they're Mm. throwing the ball around a little bit more so Mm. it's it's great signs and it's like what I love about the Serato game plan is like sometimes when you come up for example I I thought it was beautiful when they played the Storm because it's like we're not going to beat the Storm everyone tries to play the Storm the way the Storm play and it's like you're not going to beat the Storm the way they play that's where they live and breathe rugby league so let's be the team that goes you know what we're going to spin the ball to the edges and play our style of footy and be the best at what we do. So, yeah, I'm loving what's happening in the Bulldogs. You know, I say it as well. The Laundy group is behind them. They're a massive group with a lot of influence. Um, Yeah, exciting times. Any other questions, Doggies fans? Where does Skelton fit into the spine over the next two years? What do you reckon, Gurino? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> no, I just I, I was surprised he hadn't played by this stage. Like they've had every opportunity to play him, and they're sort of big. Yeah, that's what I mean at the moment. Like they've had all these injuries to the back outside backs, and he thought he would have played by now. So uh, to me, it says a little bit that they're probably not happy with some facet of his game. Maybe he's got defensive lapses. We know he can run the ball. I didn't check his stats this week, but I know the week before, it was something like 250 metres, 12 tackle bars. So uh, probably something he has to work on there, but he's obviously pretty far down the pecking order. I think you'd be safe to assume defense. He's got, he's got all, all that he can he? in attack. Uh, yeah. He'd be 23, I'd say. He's young. Like He's come over from um, rugby sevens and stuff. He's very talented, but I yeah, think with his... Be defensively it would have yeah. to be defensive with how good he is in If attack. it was 18 or 19, you could... St- it's sometimes message sending like you're just trying to send a message to the kid like no no you don't just waltz on and you get a, a crack straight away but if you're 23 years old and you're you know 12 tackle breaks and whatever it's probably defensive lapses and even maybe positioning as well mm. sometimes um but yeah exciting times now dragons oh shit <laughs> <laughs> no no oh, I <laughs> dragons are it like oh man where do I start? <laughs> uh, we can start there. We can start there. Look, it's they're a bit of a strange side to talk about because last year, even though it was a very disappointing year for you guys, we say it every week on the podcast, you were two wins out of the, you know, out of the eight. And so I think people forget that. They just assume that you were like 15th or something like that when you, you just weren't. Whereas, you know, Unfortunately, on today, it just was a really disappointing performance. And I just can't... If a Bulldog side with as many players out as they had come to your home ground and get the, the win like that, 
I just don't know if the direction that they're heading in is the right direction right now. Recruitment hasn't been great. You know, Ben Hunt has been doing everything he can to play out of his skin. Some of your younger players just haven't seemed to hit the potential that trajectory that they were on. And, you know, when you look at the Bulldogs and you see these young players and even older players playing the best they possibly can play, and then you look at the Dragons, you go, are these guys really playing the best they can play? You ha I guess you do have to look at who's in charge of, of getting these players to play well, and it's, it's up top. What do you boys reckon? <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I go well, look, last week's game against the Roosters. After 10 minutes, I could have turned the TV off and walk away because we just let in two real soft tries through the middle and the next, you know, next 60-odd minutes, we were right back in it. Mm. And we've been going through the middle so well. And then I watched, was down the pub watching it today before I come here and we had just looked like we had nothing. Mm. Like no, no effort, no, no real want to like be out there at all. It's Compared to like the Bulldogs that had... Like you said, you've named, you pretty much named a side that they can't name because they're all injured. Mm. Yeah, so. it's, and it's something that we discussed, like even just watching them in the trials, it's like, there just doesn't seem to be like that zest and like energy to play sometimes. Like every now and then the Dragons may come out and you watch them for, you know, against the Broncos for 20 minutes and you go, oh yeah, there we go. Like fucking aggressive, like typical hook style of rugby league. Then some weeks they roll out and you're like, there's just no energy or hot, like similar to the nights of, of last year where you go like, where's the line speed? Uh, like, why aren't you trying to dominate the opposition? Um, what do you reckon, boys, about the Dragons? Yeah, they're an interesting one. I, I think that, like, I think over the last two weeks, um, Jack DeBellin's been fantastic mm. for you since coming back. He's been unreal. Playing 80 through the middle. Insane. Big shift. Yeah. But I, yeah, I also think... Don't forget how good he... Yeah, he's was. very, yeah, underappreciated for the Dragons, Jack DeBellin. But Jack Bird, he's the one to me that just... He looks like he's got a bit of spark about him at the moment. I've always said that I think Jack Bird's a 13, but I think DeBellin's better fit at 13 for this side. I'm starting to wonder if you do just play Jack DeBellin as a middle forward, maybe move Jack Bird into the 13, because you just... I don't know, something's just lacking there, isn't it? Like, I... And it can't just all be Benny Hunt. I mean, you got two hookers that I think they're both solid, but neither's overly inspiring. Really, so I think. Um, I think I think Little be, Little's been okay this year. I reckon he's been good, but he's not. Yeah. He's not. He's not breaking games apart. Yeah. Like yeah, like that, that. That was a game that was begging for someone to break it apart today, and just no one ever took it. By the I way, just can't understand why. And you guys would probably know this better, but like, why do you think Little's not starting? Like, I think he's been a good, like he's a genuine hooker. That has probably been one of your better players when he does play. Am I, or am I fucking... Yeah, I'd, I'd rather start Little over Mbai. Play him for 80 and have Mbai come on in other positions where he can cover. Mm. So, yeah, some of the decisions like Moses Mbai trying to turn him into a nine to start. I just... Playing too safe. Yeah. He knows Mbai's obviously a better... Just Playing it too safe. Like, he knows Mbai is a veteran. Um... Yeah, I'd probably start little too. Even like Sullivan, before he got injured, he if he doesn't get injured, I don't know if Amon comes in the side mm. because he didn't really play that poorly <laughs> to get dropped for Amon. Yeah. Um, so that forced that. And then Sullivan, yeah, I think he's back healthy now. So whether they, they think to put Sullivan back at 14 as well, mm. but he's not really nine. So who who do you expect to play? the 80 at hooker mm. then so um yeah but i think that big loss is aaron woods personally mm. Mm. Um, i think it was a <laughs> <laughs> um, he plays that game we win today so, um, <laughs> um, my, yeah. my, my favorite nrl video of all time just about is still aaron Shit. woods defending his line and he just runs up <laughs> Head down, not knowing where he's going. The dummy half looks like he goes, uh, what's going on to see you? <laughs> Mine's where that you guys scored, New South Wales score, and he just goes, over the top. <laughs> oh, right. Look, we missed that, but, um. <laughs> 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 I like, I also love the, the brief moment. Everyone in the room's going, is he serious or taking the piss? <laughs> I thought you were serious. I was like, oh, <laughs> we don't want to laugh at him and like take the piss if he's being serious. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. yeah, I was. Um, <laughs> no, nah, but like I'm not not jumping straight at the coach either. Like, like he's touched on. Like I think it's just a real culture thing there at the moment. Um, and it was shown like at the awards night. Obviously, that's been covered. Like, um, and even that little scuffle Ravalau and someone else had. Like I know. I mean, there'd be scuffles all the time in NRL, but just <coughs> getting out and becoming a big thing. I think the culture there is just a bit, no, it's definitely not where it should be right now. And I think the, the players need to take a bit of ownership themselves and just mm. don't blame the coach. Mm. I know the coach, we could probably look for other options. I don't know who. But I don't mind the idea of like the old 2010 boys um, seeing what they can do and see if they can bring back that. Well, what I like about... What I like about the, the 2010 kind of crew is you look at the, the Broncos and, you know, they brought Kevy Walters in and look, is Kevy Walters, does he look like, a, you know, an X's and O's guy, kind of like a Sorrell though, <coughs> you know, or, or even a Webster, you know, maybe not, maybe not. But what, what he does know is he knows Broncos culture, like he knows what it is to be a Bronco. And so sometimes you just need to put in a person that can make them play for something bigger than themselves. and. What I like about the idea of bringing some of the, you know, whether it's Dean Young or Ben Hornby or whatever. First of all, Dean Young and Ben Hornby have been in coaching systems now, so they, they would have learned quite a bit. Um, but at the very least, you'll give yourself an identity. And at, and at the very least, when those players like Ben Hornby or Dean Young speak to those forwards and say, boys, these are, this is the fucking standards now, they, not to say that they don't respect Hook, because I'm sure they do, but it is different coming from club legends than it is from a, a, a full-time kind of coach that's it's moved up to the grades. And so like you can build the, the analytical side of it. You can build the, the minds of rugby league around those kind of cultural bigger heads to a degree. And I think that's what it seems like the Broncos have done. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not convinced on the Broncos yet. I think that we should probably finish top eight, but at least we've gone from, you know, bottom of the table to finals potential. And like when Seabold came to the Broncos, that was one thing that was really missing was like that cultural aspect. And so I, I don't mind the idea of, um, you know, that 2010 kind of um, Dragons guys coming back in. Cause like my, my problem is, is that, so Amon, Sullivan, uh, Sloan, Lomax, Feni twin, Feni twins, like, my concern with the Dragons is, is you had some of the best young talent in the comp. Like genuinely, those five boys or six boys or whatever rivaled Penrith's youth. Like this is how good, I think they even won the, didn't they win the- Yeah, they won the SG ball a couple of years ago. They won yeah. the SG ball together. Like we're talking about the cream of the crop coming through. And my concern is, is that they're nowhere near, if those same five boys were at Penrith, Roosters, Storm, and it's very easy to say because they're, you know, they've got all these resources. That, but I just don't think they're anywhere near where they should be on their trajectory. And yes, you can 100% say a lot of it is their fault because, you know, they're grown men, they make their choices. But when it's happening across the board, I think you do have to look above. Yeah. And I think for me, part of it, I think one of you described hookers being too safe. I completely agree with that. And I agree with what you said before. I think if um, Bud Sullivan wouldn't have got injured, I think he'd still be the 5'8 right now. Mm. Yeah, look, like he's gone back and played three games of Reggie's. He's got nine try assists or something. Like he's yeah, This idea, if we're struggling and not, well, we could do it now, but he's a safe coach. But if like you have Sullivan at 14 and then he comes on and then you give Ben Hunt the nine. Mm. Obviously, like one of the best nines of the comp on his day. I think Guru like in origin. Like that, eh? I like um, and then you give the keys to the the young halves <coughs> and Sloan at the back. They've played together. Mm. Um, I would not mind it. It sounds very exciting. I just if don't we're think Benny Hunt wants to do it. Yeah, he would not want to do yeah. it. I know, but it's just like I don't, I don't mind it either, to be honest. Just cause... giving the young boys like a, a chance as well. But in saying that, another thing about the coach as well, I'm very scared. Um, ben Hunt's got a, such a as we know, a big connection with Hook. The last time we sacked our coach, well, not, yeah, Mary, our captain went with him, mm. with Cam McGuinness. Man, we can't lose Ben Hunt. Like, yeah. and like, he'd be look, looking around like the awards night, he wasn't happy with the boys. 
I don't know. I don't don't want to risk losing him. Why yeah. well, is Ben Hunt so against playing nine? Oh, I'm not sure whether like he wouldn't do it. I think he would do it if he was told to by the coach. As a team man, he would if he had yeah, to. Yeah, but I, as, I think as you so. mentioned, you don't want to upset him. You don't I, want I just lose think him. Like. He has come out and said I'd prefer to play seven. Yeah. I I like it because even if look, he's not going to win a comp in the next year or two. Like that's just. Just the way it is. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, I mean, I don't, at the moment, the Broncos aren't going to win the comp this year either, like, it, at the moment. So it's not being, you know, it's it's reality. I don't think, I think the Raiders are outside the window. Right now, the people that can win the comp, I think, are probably like Ra- uh, Rad- uh, Rabbitohs, Panthers, Roosters, oh, no. Sharkies, maybe Eels. And that's probably it right now. Um, then on the fringes, you've got like probably like the Broncos. Couple, oh, sorry, Storm as well. Storm as well can win the comp. Yeah, outside of that, you know, not many others. Anyway, so if, if the Benny Hunt to nine, why I don't mind it is because at least you're building towards the future then. Mm. Like at least you're going, okay, with with <coughs> Sullivan and Amon and Sloan, this is who we've identified to be the guys that lead us for the next 10 years. If we can just slowly ease into that and we put Benny Hunt at nine for 20 minutes a game and see how we go, because like at the moment, what are you sitting? You're sitting 15th. And so I, what I would do is, this, this is what I would do. I would probably keep it as is for the next three or four games. If you're still sitting around the 15th or so mark, you've got nothing to lose. That's when I would go, Benny, we'll start you at seven. Sullivan, you come off the bench, blah, 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 put you in the hooking role for 20 and start seeing how that goes. If it goes well, how good? If not, at least we're building towards the future. Because I also think as much as you say, oh, you know, I want to keep Ben Hunt happy, we want to keep him here, he's 33. This guy's not going to mm. play forever. Mm. Like in two years' time, you're going to have to go, <clears throat> fuck, no Ben Hunt. What are we going to do? Mm. So you need to start preparing for that. And, and also, like, you know, <clears throat> if you're not going to be playing finals footy anyway, Sometimes you just got to go, fuck, like, let's, let's at least, like, that's, for example, what I loved about the Bulldogs uh, situation was they actively said, like, we could get Mitchell Moses, and by all reports, it was a potential, like, it actually could have happened. But they were like, no, we aren't going to win the comp in the next couple of years. So let's be patient. Let's be smart and look towards five years, because that's what the Penrith Panthers did as well. And Sullivan and Amon, they have really big futures. Like, <clears throat> even today, I think Amon had some really good touches. Mm. The try he threw to Fenai, that ball was an absolute peach. Yeah. Like, I really like him. I think he can turn into a real complete half, mm. half player. So him, we know Sullivan's got the talent, killing in, in New South Wales Cup. They're both still young. I think he can have a long and successful future off the back of those two. So if, if they can get Benny Hunt tonight, I like your call, Kempi, of stick to the plan for now, give Benny Hunt another month at seven and, and just do what they're doing with those combinations. But if they're still at 15th and they win one game in the next month, try it. Yeah. Because they, they need to start being realistic, as you said, about a premiership window and building for the future. Mm. And as you mentioned, like, the last thing you want is to lose Ben Hunt. You want him to finish his career at the Dragons. And he's so vital to this team. But he's also a real clubman, a real team player. And maybe yep. we'll take the role at nine. Mm. Um, now, lastly, the Storm. Uh, obviously, they got the job done on the weekend. <laughs> uh, good win. Good win. Uh, <laughs> the Storm oh, Storm They're just in such a, An interesting spot Because they came out A few weeks ago And you go on Bloody hell Here we go again The Storm prove us all wrong They come out And they kill it And then they had A bit of a lacklustre Performance after that I, I think there's still A premiership threat For sure um, I think that they're their forwards have shown promise in regards to growing into their roles. Obviously, Nelson and Asafa Solomona is a key, key fact. So, Storm fans, is there any other Storm fans here? Any other Storm fans here? Or yeah. just you two? Just you two? Three. Three. Sorry, apologies. Apologies, Dark One. Um, so, like, it's, I don't think it's spoken about it as much as it should be. Like, Pappenhausen is a massive, massive loss, and we just don't know whether he's ever going to, like, like, is he coming back? We, we just don't know. And if he isn't, then... He spoke on the Matty John show tonight. Did everyone see that? Yeah, yeah. Didn't breathe confidence to me. Mm. No. So I guess it's, it's a, a, they're, t- they're in a tough situation because Pappenhausen, uh, Clive Churchill, medalist, he almost like, he is like, if their spine is a, a puzzle, he is like just such a perfect fit. He just completes it. 
Meany's been fantastic, but obviously Pappenhausen's a different level. How do you guys feel about the Storm right now? Well, I just think with Paps, I think people forget he was out for the end of last year as well. Mm. And I think Meany's killing it at the moment, but the longer Paps is out, I think Craig has to decide whether he actually does rush him in mm. if he does come later on because it's going to take a while for them to gel. I think Meany, I don't know what you do with him. I don't know what you guys would do with Meany at the back or put him <coughs> on the wing. I think Warbrick's a better way. winger mm. because he's that bigger body um, in D and off those kick returns. But I think the longer we're waiting for Paps, I mean, Vossi in the call in the Bulldogs game was saying, Paps' debut at Magic Round, he was electric. Mm. It was giving me that vibe. I was getting flashbacks. Mm. Like, he's incredible. <laughs> like, I love Pappenhausen. It was so but good. But I think the longer we wait, it's just going to rush back and it could just, we may as well just be better with Manny. What do you guys think? Mm. It's just it's such a tough call because I want to see Pappenhausen back. He, he completes that spine to perfect. It's almost like <coughs> it's the closest thing to, obviously they'll never get as good as the 2017 spine. That, that, that's arguably the greatest spine all time. But geez, it's close in regards to like the next best thing. Uh, but you have to start asking yourself the question, okay, is Meany the long-term fullback? Probably not. Probably not the long-term, even though he's had an incredible year and maybe he builds into... Look, if he keeps playing the way he's playing, then who knows? Then you have to say, okay, well, let's say Papanazan isn't going to come back. Do we make a very big play for a guy like Jaden Campbell? Because I think Jaden Campbell would be outstanding in that spine. I think even with Meany, like, it's clear the <coughs> effect Slater has on all the fullbacks. Mm. I think as well, Manny, you just see that um, in true form. Yeah, he's getting so. better and better each week, Manny. Um, what, what about um, your hopes this year, you guys? What, have you, any questions? Any questions at all? Questions? Yeah. Going into this year, I sort of always looked at it as like a, a building type year. Mm. Losing almost a thousand games of NRL experience mm. at last year, it's, it's never going to be easy. And we've seen that round two and three, we came out, lost to the Bulldogs, lost to the Titans. So it was always going to be a bit up and down, but we've got a lot of young talent in the squad. Jack Howarth to still debut, yep. Pap hopefully to come back. So I've always sort of looked at it as 2024, 2025 is when we can become that real premiership force again, hopefully with Pappy back and fit. If not, whether we go into the market, whether Meany's the guy, I guess we sort of wait and see, but... It's tough. I, I think forwards as well. I, I do think they probably they just re-signed Nass, which is a huge, huge. re-signing. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I'm so I'm so excited. <laughs> Made my week, mate. I'm feeling you because look look what he did on the weekend. Look what he did on the weekend. Oh, it was mate. crazy. No, last weekend, sorry, last weekend. Um, what do you boys reckon with the storm? Yeah, I, I just think with the puppy thing, like I don't know when he's going to return, but I think you have got time on your side. Well, let's say if he returns in 10 weeks' time, round 20. you still got two months before the final start, which I personally think if you guys are going to win a comp this year, like, like every other team, you just need to time it for that four-week period. So I, I think the, the puppy thing, as much as it doesn't sound great at the moment, you have got time on your side at the moment. If we're having the same conversation in round 18, mm. then we're in some Barney. And Meany's doing a job too. Meany's doing a job, yeah. for sure. I, I would find a spot for Meany in my team 100%. I'd yeah, put him on I'm the sting. I'd, yeah. oh, I'd, I'd, I'd keep him there. He's been yeah. so good. He's, yeah. he's got to be in that side somewhere. Um, yeah, I, I've i got you right on the edge of that can win a premiership this year. You're probably the the last team I have in that category. Of it's just that call. Munster, Hughes, Grant, yep. like when they click, far out. It is so good. But, but you need every forward available. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's the key, isn't it? Like they yep. can't afford to lose any, any middles in particular just because despite how good the spine is, the best in the NRL – if they get to a grand final or a prelim against someone like Penrith, who we've just seen them last year, come out of the blocks and blow teams off the park, they get dominated through the middle. It doesn't matter who your spine is, they won't get an opportunity. They won't have a platform to play off. So with their full strength middles, they can match teams. I don't think they're going to blow teams away with their middles, mm. but they can match them. And that's enough to bring in Munster and Hughes and Harry Grant. But one or two injuries to like, Nass is obviously the big one. You lose Nass, I don't think you can win the comp. Yeah. Mm. Any other questions? I just think with Pappenhausen, like any half sniff we get, whether it's <coughs> Munster with a little break, Nass with a big carry, he so often just turns it into six points yeah. almost every time. And there's pretty much no other fullback in the comp that can do that for the Storm side, I don't think. He's, he's just, yeah. so he's, he's perfect for it. Well, he's just because he's such a small frame, so, so quick, 
that he's just there every single time. Like even like Teddy is probably the one of the better support players in the competition, but he doesn't have the same explosiveness off the mark as Pappy has. And so like you're right in regards to around the ruck, even though Meany's quick, he's not that quick. So you miss that half a step. I think that's the thing about Pappy, like his awareness is off the charts, but just, just how courageous he is mm. to be the size he is and put himself in those positions. It would be interesting to see how much how much time it takes till he's willing to do that. Just on the note with um, Tedesco and Pappy. Mm. So I obviously love Pappy. He's like my favourite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> slight little crush on him. Love the mullet. Um, Me too. But <laughs> <laughs> well, no, my question is like, so he's obviously a really good player and I think that he does have the potential to play in origin, obviously maybe not this year, but do you think that he would be someone that does replace Tedesco? If not, who do you think would at some point? Because he's not going to be around forever. I think right now Dylan Edwards is, is the man to replace Tedesco. Um, just because he's got a similar play style. Obviously Tom Travojevic, injury-wise, it's, you know, it's up in the air at the moment. I think Trell, especially in origin, probably more suited for centre. Um, I'm not sure how he would go. Um, I mean, he'd, he'd kill it anywhere he is, but I just love him at centre. He's just sick. Because you've got such high quality players around him, you can get him that space that he needs. Uh, but at the moment, I would have Dylan Edwards as the... I think uh, whichever one doesn't, whichever one doesn't debut first out of Pappy and Dill could go down as the unluckiest to never play origin. Another shout would be Nico Hines at fullback. Yep. Potentially. For sure. You saw how good he was. Who would you have next in line, Tedesco? Uh, a fully fit Tom Trebojevic for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's my man. And then we just don't know how Pappy's going to come back, do we? No, Edwards. Why do you hate Edwards so much? Bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's not Edwards. It's the Panthers. <laughs> um, no, I just think Tommy's almost second to none when oh, he's no, fully I, fit. I, fully I think back, yeah. everyone agree. Like Tommy, fully fit, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Right now, with with where Tommy's at, yeah, I'm with you. I like. I think I prefer Latrell at centre in Origin. Right now, yeah, probably probably Edwards. Probably Edwards. That look like it hurt to say, mate. <laughs> well, is it because is it because he's got a strong gut? No, no. It's just because I think. Like 12 months ago, and we're sitting there and looking at the fullbacks, and this is no disrespect to Dylan Edwards, this is a credit to our fullback stocks. Mm -hmm. When you've got at full strength the potential of James Tedesco, Ryan Pappenhausen when he was going nuts, Tom Trebojevic, I didn't have Edwards up there. So mm -hmm. now I'm like, probably is Edwards because there's question marks around everyone else. Yeah. Oh, if you've got Pappenhausen in the form that he was in last year, mm -hmm. then, you def then you go Pappenhausen for sure. Like he was electric last year well he was it's actually ironic because he was being talked about for the 14 role that nico is now being talked about i mean it shows you how good the storm bloody are um another smoky is scotty Drinkwater. anyway um <laughs> yeah got gutho gutho i oh, mean i don't think other would go that bad at no, no, <laughs> <laughs> um that's us oh we're gonna do our tips gotta do our ticks quickly and then we're done and doosted uh okay Bulldogs v the Raiders. This is magic round. And don't forget, everyone, we will be at the Caxon 1 p.m. Saturday. Myself, Guru, Timmy, Maddie, Tommy, Eddie. Uh, make sure to come down, say hi. Uh, it's a fantastic week. I'll, I'll actually put a post up. I've got quite a few different things I'll be doing uh, over the magic round weekend. Doggies vs Raiders. Where are we going, boys? Raiders. Raiders. <laughs> uh, Raiders. Raiders. I am going to go doggies. Uh, <laughs> Boys. Is that, is that a joke tip like the Tigers one? Oh. <laughs> trying to rob my glory. Trying to rob my glory. Manly Broncos. 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 That hurt to say, didn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, Broncos. Are, but Manly, I think 310. The, oh, that was brought to you by Sports, but obviously 310 is not bad value. Manly versus Broncos. I think all the outsiders are going to be good value in Magic Round. Mm, yeah. uh, Warriors v Panthers. Uh, Penrith bounce back. Panthers. 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 Uh, Sharkies, Dolphins. Sharks. 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 Sharkies. Uh, Storm, Rabbitohs, both paying a dollar ninety. Sorry. Barry. I'm going to take the bunnies. I love teams off a of buy this year, but bunnies. Yeah, rabbits. 
Oh, this is so tough. I'm going Storm. I'm going Storm. Uh, Tigers v Dragons. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to actually back the Tigers in here. Oh, now we want to jump on board. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go, yeah. <laughs> Neil all draws at a dollar yeah. one, so. Oh, I'm going to go the Tigers as well, who are big outsiders. Yeah, Tigers, for sure. What the hell is going on here? No, he's just tipping what I'm tipping. I was oh. going to go, I honestly was going to go Tigers, but because I'm going for glory. That's what I'm doing from now on. I'm going dragons. <laughs> going dragons. Well, I'd be going for glory. That hurts. <laughs> Roosters, Cowboys. Chooks. Roosters. Cowboys. Oh. Jesus. Righty, eh, Matty? Jesus. <laughs> um, Roosters. Titans, Eels to finish her off. I'm going to go an upset here, too. This feels like a game the Eels would lose to me. Doesn't it ever? Doesn't it ever? It's got it written all over yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go the Eels. Power. I'm going to go the Eels. That is brought to you by uh, Sportsbet. Make sure to gamble responsibly, guys. You win some, but you lose more. Uh, bloke jerseys, they are available. And also, Mother's Day, not today, but next uh, Monday, 6 p.m. Super mum, boss mum, best mum, footy mum, shirts, hats dropping on bloke.shop. Limited amount. They'll be ready and sent out to you for Mother's Day. And as usual, I'll go and fuck myself. Thank you. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au.